officially streaming here now at 1.15, so welcome to another Pocket Mission Adventure League good time. We're going to be in Port 9 Zaru. The code is DDAL07-01, so we're at the very start of Season 7, so I appreciate you guys uh, kicking this off with me. I'll be trying to keep this going uh, throughout the year until we finish it, really, it's a long one. And towards the end, I think it's like 17, 18 and stuff. Uh, it gets to be tier three and tier four, so we should have a lot of fun when we get there. Um, anyways, the adventure name is The City on the Edge. So just if you need that stuff. And just a brief uh, little background for the area. For the past nine years, it looks like seven merchant princes have ruled over Port Nyanzaru. This is in Cholt, way down south of the Sword Coast, uh, a jungle-like area. Recently, however, a new threat has arisen that has the people in panic. An affliction the locals have come to know as the Death Curse is uh, starting to spread. And, of course, the five major factions operating throughout Faerun have started to take note of this and have started to put calls out uh, for adventurers to help them. Most specifically, they have a representative from each faction in Port Nyanzaru uh, waiting to meet would-be... Um, adventurers come into the call and so of course that would be you guys uh, you may be interested in a different faction or maybe not even interested in any factions at all and uh, we'll have a, a chance to to have an introduction and background and things like that in just a moment um, but yeah just just for your your call to action it really could be uh, that you've heard a specific call from a faction and, and you're interested in that or it may be that you've heard about this death curse um, starting to gain some traction and I don't want to call it popularity, but, uh, you know, widespread knowledge of this, this curse in the area. Um, and of course, there's always opportunities for rewards uh, and maybe even advancement with the factions and things. So you all have your different reasons for, for coming here, but you all come in a boat, which makes sense. Uh, and a westerly wind starts to pick up as you approach the inner mouth of the Bay of Cholt. To the west, mountains of dark gray stone lead to jagged peaks, jutting out from an endless canopy of trees so thick it seems as if the sunlight could only dare beat its way in. Ahead, the tall stone-cast walls of Port Nyanzaru form a stockade barrier between the bay and the city proper. Your ship passes through the gates, revealing the harbor and land rising, marking the city districts. Rows of buildings made of multi-hued patched stonework are decorated by colorful roo rooftops and murals. Um, you're startled to see little small winged lizards start to flitter past the ship's bow, heading off into the trees as you pull into the harbor. You realize you finally arrived in the great land of Cholt, and it's time to get a clear lay of the land. You begin to disembark the boat into the, the busy dock, and you're immediately hit with this sweltering humidity of the place. Especially if you're wearing some armor and things like that, it's just instant sweat starting to pop up. And uh, Or if you're furred and things like that, I mean, this heat, it, it's a little more impressive. And you find yourself instantly reaching for your, your flagon or your flask to, to quaff down some, some water. Uh, you realize this would be a pretty interesting place if you've never been here. And there seems to be someone already waiting for you. It's, it looks like a gold half dragon. And... He comes up and says, Well, hello! You must be the latest adventurers here. I am Zindar. I'm the harbor master of the city, and it's my job to welcome and see any uh, new arrivals to where they need to go. Hello. Uh, thank you for the welcome. Uh, my name is Yasua Hibiki. Nice to meet you. Ah, likewise. There have been a few adventuring groups uh, coming through, but I must admit, none quite as interesting as you. Mm. Well, I can direct you to the inn nearby where you can find some pretty cheap lodgings. It's called the Thundering Lizard. Um, well, you may also want to do a little bit of discovering of the city. That's, that's up to you. There's plenty to see and plenty to do. But I know if you're here for a job, it, it may be keen to uh, to see those those folks. Uh, speaking of, um, how familiar are you folks with the, the factions? Familiar to an extent. 
For me, at least. I don't know about the rest. It is pretty... <laughs> I'm just here looking to spread the joy of music and to help people in need. Oh, well, you've come to a wonderful place for that. There are plenty of people in need as of lately, unfortunately. Um, which does lead us to the, the factions. They put out some requests. Um, I have a bit of information if you need it, but uh, there are five of them total. You may have, may have heard of them, of course, but there are some that go by the name of the Lord's Alliance. Lordly types, as you can imagine. Um, pretty influential people there. Uh, not, a, not as much as known at surface value about this next group, but they're called the Zentarum. Um, seem to like to keep to themselves in a lot of ways, uh, from what I hear. Uh, there's also the Emerald Enclave. Kind of the more nature-oriented people I've met in my life. Uh, they seem to be a part of the Emerald Enclave. And my goodness, the, the passive neutrality of those people. It can be... Uh, just a bit uneasy sometimes, but they mean well, of course, as, as long as you're not trying to chop a tree down or something. Uh, you do have the uh, Order of the Gauntlet as well, and, you know, I guess if you've ever heard the term rule with an iron fist, uh, I think they kind of fit in with that. But all in all, you know, these factions all seem to have the, the best interests of Faerun probably mixed in with their own uh, at heart. Uh, but last, uh, last, but certainly not least, uh, probably the most commonly known... Uh, are the Harpers. Um, and like I've said, uh, we have a, an individual representing each one of these, these factions. They're, they're kind of looking for some help at the moment. Um, I could point you to, uh, to, to where they might be. You could take some lodgings first if you like, or you might just poke around a bit. It's really up to you folks what you want to do from here, but uh, you just let me know and I can answer any questions you have. Where would the uh, representative of the Lord's Alliance be? Ah, oh, I, I believe he goes by uh, Clevin. Clevin Van Sheeran. And he, he runs a shop in the Merchant's Ward, actually. Um, that's over in the western half of the city. It houses the Grand Souk. Uh, you, you can't miss it. It's the, the city's marketplace, as well as the residences of the Merchant Princes. So it's a pretty busy, pretty popular part of town. And where's uh, the inn or tavern? He kind of gives you just some brief instructions uh, through the through a few roads, and and he reminds you again that it's uh, it's called the Thundering Lizard. Uh, rooms are pretty ah. cheap there, and it's in it's in the market ward as well, actually. So there you have it. Wonderful. And so I did mention the Merchant Princes. If you're curious, uh, you know there there's seven of them. They each seem to have an economic stake in our city here, and you know that you'll probably learn more about them in your time here. They they kind of are a bit of an authoritarian force here. Anyone with money has power, they say. Of course. Uh, one last question: There have been mentions of something called the Death Curse. Is there anything more you could tell me about that? I yes, I I can speak of this. It's a uh, a pretty foul thing um taking a lot of our people lately and and certainly putting fear in everyone else and you see this the scales of uh this this golden half dragon kind of like shudder almost as as he kind of closes his eyes and says well ah, the death curse it's, it's mysterious and it seems to have afflicted us all whether we want it or not i fear i even have it myself but what it seems to truly do is if, uh, if fate befalls you to where you must perish, there's nothing that can bring you back. Or nothing... As soon as your lifeblood begins to flow, it's usually the end for you. And uh, it just in mechanical terms, basically, which I'm pretty sure in Adventurers League this isn't all going to count anymore how it should, but the Death Curse, as it were, uh, if your hit points are, are reduced to zero, you don't have a uh, death save. You just die. Uh, also, mm -hmm. permanently reduced hit points can never be restored, like a ghost ghost thing, like horf, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, no resurrection, no raised dead, and it also seems like anybody that had already been previously resurrected in the past has started to begin to like wither and waste away. And so he kind of recants a little bit, a bit of that, and then eventually says, "Well," um, and then he kind of opens his eyes, and you know, the the bright sun is is streaming down, and he says. So, you know, on, on to brighter things, though. Um, 
we must all be careful. But uh, At, an important point of order: um, How would it be contracted? Is it a curse? Is it a disease? Is it what, how? How does that work? Uh, you know, I'm. That's not really my expertise. You ask me numbers, mm-hmm. how to how to get a ship out of here. You know, the logistics of running a dock, and I got you. I'm I'm not sure, but. It honestly seems like everyone has it, and I think just by being here, I'm sorry to tell you folks, but you probably are, are getting it right this very second. Do you feel any different? <laughs> do, do we? No, it's kind of like an imperceptible thing. It it seems to be almost like a zombie thing, like from The Walking Dead or whatever. It's like you got it, but you don't really know until you die, I guess. Um, Fair enough. I, I could be wrong on that, but that's my perception of it from what I've read so far. Uh, but he says, well, um, and yeah, you know, the death curse, it's, it's put us on edge and, you know, that and some other recent events, uh, some attacks we've had and things, there's been an increase in patrols from both the city guard and the citizens brigade, brigade, excuse me, but the, the brigade, I can't even say the word, but the citizens brigade, they, they're very important in some parts of the, the city here where it's i'll be honest it's a little less wealthy and they don't kind of get the attention from the guards that they should and the brigade is all they have uh so there's there's been a lot more of those about and like i said um there's been a lot more of you fellows coming through to to help us out although i'll admit it seems like some people are bringing more hindrance than help uh and that seems why the the faction's finally calling out for some help Okay, uh, what sort of hindrances and who should we see about fixing it? You know, um, I'm hearing all kinds of odd rumors about and stuff lately, but I could, I would probably just point you to one of the, one of the faction representatives. They're the ones paying the coin. I'm not going to waste your time, uh, with, with here. I'm, I, I don't have any okay. gold for you. That works. There's a total of what, uh, four factions? Five. Five. Yeah, About. five factions, and they, they each they each have a representative, and, you know, I can tell you more about different parts of the uh, the town, if you like. Uh, How well, long it's... was our journey here? Uh, shoot. Uh, there's probably a number for that, honestly. I'd have to check, but I think it, from that close... It would close, have been a number of days. Probably least, more, uh... probably like a, yeah. weeks, I would say. Weeks, if mm-hmm. not like a couple months. Or I guess in D&D time, let's say like some 10 days, you know, <laughs> three yeah. or four 10 days worth maybe. But cause you, it's like a voyage across, you know, a body of water, depending on where well, you came from. Let's put it like that. Cause yeah, there's some land that's not Lord there. Lines first. What was that? Why did you Lord the Lines first? Yes. Well, it, it's been a long journey. I was wondering if we stopped by the, uh, tavern first and then get works. some rest before heading out perhaps in the morning True. well that's just there to the market ward and and you seem a bit interested in the lord's alliance and seems his shop is uh in the merchant's ward which probably you know those are pretty nearby each other um yes. okay. well, sounds like a plan all righty well you guys head to the thundering lizard and it seems a, a pretty raucous inn and of course the the rooms are pretty cheap about five silver a night so you get you guys you know you pay your your due um subtract that from your gold later oh is that five silver it's terrible oh not five silver i know it i'm getting y'all how will i how will i ever manage <laughs> but you guys come in and, and make yourself can easily uh, remake that uh i'm gonna try performance to avoid paying money <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> and so they say if you if you play a song later in the night after your business is concluded nice. for the day, uh, oh, they'll yeah. let you stay for free for the night. What what time is it? Is it morning? Yep. Uh, so you guys can... are arriving pretty bright and early in the day. Uh, full day days long to to get some stuff done. So you come in and you may get your rooms and deposit you know your your travel belongings and things and and then just take out what you need. Um, and just uh, this is more just like a, a stop off point where as you guys mm-hmm. start to put your things away, you realize that over these few weeks, you started to kind of get to know each other a little bit. 
and we'll go down the line, uh, starting with Shadow. If you just want to tell us briefly just who you are, what you're about, and uh, maybe your first impression here for for Port Nyanzaru or Cholt. Shadow. You there, uh, Jacob? Yeah. You're muted right now. I uh, did not want to say anything. Oh, you okay? So, uh, you're keeping your past secret, is what you mean, right? Right. I'm sorry because I was okay. trying to do something with this laptop, but I think it's hopeless. What are we doing again? Uh, like, it was like just right now. It was just in it's player intro. Character. It uh, okay, I can I can do it. So shadow is a literally walking shadow, humanoid in shape. If you squeeze your eyes a little, you'll make some elvish features. But otherwise, he is. It is. Well, he's clearly not a regular elf. Let's put it like that. <laughs> and. If you were to ask him about what can he say about himself, he would just go like, who I was no longer matters, for I am but a shadow of my former self, who lost everything. And yeah, I think you get the gist. Yes. He is a custom lineage fighter, and that's all he brings to the table for now. Okay, awesome. And uh, and you might have missed some of that there as you're you're doing your stuff. But uh, what would his, what would his impression be on uh, on Cholt or like the jungle lands? Oh, mm. not necessarily about the terrain, but that death curse that he heard about. He could think that it has something to do with an event from his past. So that's why he arrived here. Nice. Okay, cool. And so that'll give you uh, inspiration, and if anybody wants to, to answer that extra question at the end of their intro, they can gain that as well. Just kind of your impression of the of the area and stuff. And so we'll go to Lala. <clears throat> Layla. Layla, my bad. Um, Layla is a uh, Eladrin elf who is a rogue, uh, level four. Uh, she is assassin by trade. Um, and she's literally in it for the money. She, she doesn't care. Um, she does masquerade. One of her, co- her, her main cover is um, she is an escort uh, to the public eye. But her real money is in doing the dastardly deeds. Ooh. And uh, this place is really hot and humid and seems to be uh, prime for the pickings. So you feel the, the summer part of yourself just calling out. Oh, it's sweltering. But yeah, you're not even afraid of any curse or anything. You, the money calls you, and you know where there's danger, there's definitely coin to be earned. Exactly. And especially in a bustling market here, only no, there's probably several things that need to be uh, freed from captivity. We'll put it that way. <laughs> That's funny. All sorts of things. Some of them may be you know, 20 foot tall dinosaurs that are uh, being saddled with things, and other of them might be gold, you know. Yeah, never know. All right, how about Deverall? Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, Deverall is a Herondon, a bard. He plays a violin that's almost as large as he is, um, but he manages to lift it just the same. Uh, he's here just to try and spread the joy of music to his dreary land and help out people where possible. Okay. Um, oh, and about the... Yeah. Or is he's there a... a bit worried about Jolt, but with the situation going on, but he hopes he can help the locals as much as possible and to improve their lives either through action or through music. Awesome. <laughs> okay. 
And let's go with uh, Squeeble. All right, Squeeble is very short. He's got kind of greenish skin. You can't tell if he's like a gnome or goblin, maybe a gremlin, something or a mix of something in there. Uh, he's riding along on a what looks to be a very young warg, but not so young that it's not capable of providing a, or acting as a mount for him. Um, he seems very disinterested in a lot of stuff, and he's in his own head about who knows what he's he's, he's contemplating or trying to figure out. Um, and he thinks the whole curse thing is a bunch of poppycock and, and nonsense, and he thinks everybody's being ridiculous. He's just here to try and find some treasure. That's awesome. And you're going to find out how real it may be. But yeah, <laughs> as you pass through um, this very interesting area, just the architecture and some of the buildings and stuff definitely evokes that sense of wonder and how much treasure might be uh, hidden in the depths below as... Uh, sometimes off in the distance you'll even see these great big weathered ziggurats that are uh, started some of them started to crumble and wither and others have been built upon and and used for other things and stuff but uh let's hey. go how about you yasua uh yasua is a um a a basically entirely human except for Two large horns that come off the side. Two large ram horns. Um, he's got a, a mop of brown hair and um, tired-looking eyes. Um, he, similar to Shadow, also believes that um, the death curse may be related to something in his past. Um, and he hopes he can get to the bottom of it. Nice. So y'all may have even uh, shared some some of those wanderings along the way, or maybe even just the occasional glance from across the room wandering. And that should about wrap it up for now. So you guys kind of uh, make a little bit oh, more. Uh, oh, go on. He, he's he's also um, a, a cloak of the Lord's Alliance. Nice. So it's already affiliated with them. Perfect. Yeah. So you've already uh, you've already gotten the. Uh, the call to come and you may you know you were told to to meet with clevin at his shop and you may not know too much more than that but you know he's uh got a report that there could be some some smuggling going on or some things like that um what was your class level and race uh my class is uh ranger i am a winter aladrin and then level Oh, uh, one. Okay, cool. I know we're going to change that as we go, of course, but still need to know it. And all right, so we kind of gotten through the intro now, and we're going to jump into... Uh, so it's funny, you guys can take these missions in any order um, as we go, and you, we just happen to be starting with the first one, so that's kind of convenient. Um, but before you go, you kind of get to learn a little bit more about the area just from the talk among, around you, or perhaps the maps laid out and things. You may take a... Just not quite a full short break, but the time to drop off your things, you know, get a few drinks, fill up your flagon, get a little snack and things. And uh, and you hear some, some places you already heard of, but there's the Harbor Ward where uh, trade vessels use these docks, crew and passengers make their way through here. Um, That's pretty much where you just came from. You have the Market Ward uh, in the east part of the city. Trades folk, middle class folk live there and work there. The Merchant's Ward on the western half of the city. That's where you have the, the Grand Souk, the marketplace. And then you have a, a, an area known as Old City, where it's kind of built around the ruins of ancient ziggurats. And it's unfortunately where a lot of the underprivileged reside in kind of bamboo huts and things like that. Um, there's two more, one called uh, Malar's Throat. And if I said underprivileged before, uh, this is even worse because these people are just downright poor. And they live in uh, rows of old shacks at the edge of a giant ravine. Um, there's a bunch of ropes and uh, bridges and things like that that connect across it. Uh, and then certainly last but not least, there's on the, kind of on the outside of the city to the east, there's really inexpensive housing, usually for visitors or adventurers and things. Um, there's a set of unregulated docks there, too, that get a lot of attention, as you can imagine. Uh, it's not as you know patrolled there as it should be and things. Um, and that's just a little to the east of the city. Yep. So this time, though, you guys are taken off into the Merchant's Ward. 
Yes. Uh, heading into the Merchant's Ward, I would be keeping my eye out for anything interesting to buy and then additionally looking for uh, Clevin. Okay. We will be shopping for the uh, material components so we can cast Familiar. And so as you guys pass through, there's plenty of uh, people hawking things to you. Most of them seem to be a little bit darker complected humans, um, and their accents kind of stand out to you slightly. Um, as they yell their wares in common and prices and things. And if there's anything in particular you want to buy, that's, of course, uh, you know, in the player's handbook and stuff, you can do that now. Um, uh, as you come in to... What the... if we don't want to buy? <laughs> Ooh, I mean, uh, we, I could probably give you a trinket or something. Well, as long as it's a value. Okay, go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> what do you want to do? Try to... Stealth over to something. I can. Okay. Yeah, there's the vast. And if array I of... stealth, I'll just flirt with the vendor. Nice. The stands, then the tents and small shops. They're in rows of walking paths around a grand square. So it may take you a little time to find exactly what you want, but you're each kind of uh, able to to walk around and if you're trying to purchase something you can certainly do so uh layla on the other hand drops into stealth mode and easily falls into crowds um nondescriptly and yeah you can i mean you, you can kind of tell me what you might be looking for i suppose literally anything that i can catch a price for okay so you see a stall that has some jewelry um and some of the you can tell a lot of the jewels have been pulled from from deep in the jungle and and a few of them uh take a hefty price but you see off to the edge of the table there's a row of golden bracelets and if you just sidled up easy enough um you could just whisk one of those off to the side and no one would even know uh the stealth roll is superb so if you just want to give me a slide of hand check and we'll see if you can get it off the table um wait a sec excuse me for a moment as i need to make a full no okay uh so you you try to uh (laughs) <laughs> to whisk it off the table and then all of a sudden you feel this smack against your the top of your hand as uh, kind of a creaky old man with a long beard and, and hardly any clothes on it seems uh, in the sweltering heat he kind of cackles out something that's almost indecipherable to you as he yells a warning out and uh, you hear a heavy footfall as you realize um, this place you know will be patrolled and guarded and there's uh, giant dinosaurs and things in service to people. Some of them are small and simple as, you know, little pack mules and other ones, as you can see by the giant Tyrannosaurus looming over you. Uh, I just wanted to see it better in the light, that's all. <laughs> ah, it's that's 15 pretty. gold! 15 gold! No exceptions! Ah. I wasn't going to haggle, I was just inspecting, that's all. And then uh, he's like, you can flat with me if you want! <laughs> <laughs> his teeth are missing and stuff and one of his uh who knows what's pops out from the from the edge like old grandpa you're like oh <laughs> <whoa."> <laughs> <laughs> seen worse <sighs> but you know I just just carefully put the bracelet back and wink and move along he's like i'll be seeing you again i know it <laughs> but you guys was walking away squeeble will come over and kind of narrow his eyes at her and go just make sure you don't implicate any of us when you're doing those things. Then don't stand right. next to me. You hear the rumble of uh, the dinosaur growl as it kind of boom, 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 chomps off through the distance. And uh, you're like, man, what kind of Jurassic Park world are we in? And uh, uh, go on. I was, I was just going to ask if there were any magic items or consumables. I assume there aren't. You would have told us if there were, but... Yeah, no, nothing like that quite. Just uh, mostly just garments and trade goods um, of different varieties, uh, some tools and different things like that, perhaps. Uh, like, you know, if it's kind of just, if it was something you wanted to buy from like uh, like Player's Handbook or something, we could totally do that. It could be here for sure. I know someone said like spell components or something, if you, if you wanted to do Oh yeah, that. I need to cast Find Familiar to get my own, so I need to get some components for that. Yeah, so for sure, just mark it on your sheet with the gold and everything. Right, um, offhand, can we see if whoever the we're meeting first? I'm sorry, the Lord's Alliance or the Harper? Yes, uh, Clevin of the Lord's Alliance, yes. Okay. If whenever shopping's done, let's try and do that. 
Right. And so uh, you guys kind of wrap it up and you head to the western end um, where it's less stalls and more grand villas and the decorative banners about and, and stonework. Um, there's actually a pretty great palace there, which houses the city seat of power as well. But you come across a large uh, storefront. This one's more like an actual building rather than a, a make makeshift teardown stall. And there's a sign written in both common and the native Cholton tongue. Uh, you're able to read it, of course, and it says, uh, well, I hope you can, but it says the weave of life. Uh, you push your way in and, and see just kind of the more stuff around it that had been in the stalls, but of better quality, it seems. Finer garments, um, you know more and better trade goods and stuff uh but also there's a whole bunch of self-published pamphlets and things like that they seem to be about um, kind of local customs and traditions just off face value uh the only person in the shop in the moment is a young human male with dark hair and green eyes he's behind the main counter um as you approach him you get the sense that this is someone not from here but kind of wants to be or is a bit of a poser if you will um but as you come in he kind of with a flourish and you can see that he speaks and acts in almost the same way as a lot of the people that you just passed by but there's just something a little off from him you know that he's he's not from here but he's ah oh, and just this skin tone and things like that are clear indications but ah oh, welcome welcome you must be here. Have you tried some of these? Uh, you'll love them. And he kind of holds forward like uh, some sh- some different shirts and things that are uh, very light and loose for the weather. Uh, we're looking for Clevin. And you found him. That's me, Clevin Van Sheeran. Oh. No one knows Cholt better than me. How can I help? Nice to meet you. I'm Yasu Hibiki, cloak. And oh. we're at here to help you. Ah, you must be some adventures. I thought yes. by your uh, your clothes there, you were in here to, to to get some some new some new uh, some new looks. But well, there has been some rumors of of illegal and stolen merchandise being smuggled through the harbor district, and as part of the Lord's Alliance, it's my job to uh, to make sure things like this don't happen. You you understand? Plus, it's bad for business. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And how's that going for you? Ah, uh, well, actually, you know, sometimes uh, the locals, I can hear them snicker behind my back and things, but I have no. tons and tons of connections here. Uh, you poor thing. Nah, it's it's no big deal. They're just a little jealous that I know more about their their area than they do. <laughs> oh, well, it's great to have knowledge. I love it. I love the knowledge, and I'll do anything to uh, to further our operations here. So, well, you came here, and if if you want, I can tell you some more information. And you hear him like kind of rummage underneath the counter, and he pulls out a little sack of gold. Tink! I got fifty gold for accomplishing the task. Um, would you like to know more? Yes, yes, of course. that would be appreciated. All righty then. And if you wanted to purchase anything while you're here, just let me know. This stuff is mwah, prime. Uh, there's, there's nothing finer here in uh, Port Nine Zaru. But that, <clears throat> that being said, the more important business, of course. Uh, well, there's been some thefts. And those black market goods are increasing, uh, popping up over the place. Uh, how am I supposed to sell my fine, fine, luxurious wares when you can get a knockoff copy down the road? Um, it's ridiculous. But, anywho, it's affecting the prosperity of uh, many other tradesfolk. Not just me, of course. And, well, it gets a little bit trickier, as we've heard. One of my contacts with the, the Alliance has let me know of a dangerous artifact being smuggled here into the city. And, well, hey, <laughs> we know of a secret passage, actually. Um, it leads from the docks here to uh, Tiriiki Anchorage, outside of town. We've got the location of where the passage exits on the smuggler side, and maybe a, a good idea to see if you can get in there and, and well, maybe discover the nature of this artifact coming into town and, and possibly even shut down the smuggling operation. You think you're up hmm. for that? I believe so. Sure. All right. 
Well, I'm sure you've heard of the Tiriki Anchorage, but <laughs> just in case, let me give you some quick directions and I'll send you on your way. Uh, come back and see me if you, if you figure it out. I got this gold for you. And don't forget, um, you know, greatest wares. <clears throat> All the port nines are. Come by. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like a little overselling on his own stuff. You're like, who are you? What, do you want us to work for you or buy stuff? But yeah. he, uh, uh, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, as we approach, I, I just wanted to gauge whether there was um, a large crowd similar to the marketplace nearby the uh, our, our destination, or if it was a little more sparse. So he, he kind of fills in a little more. He's like, so to get there, it's looking like... Hey, we're getting a really bad echo or something. Sounds like traffic. <laughs> yeah. mm, sorry. Well, yeah, it's going to Okay. And so he says, well, uh, I think it'd be best to, to kind of infiltrate from their side of things. They, they probably never see it coming. And uh, the Tiriki Anchorage, it's just outside the city walls. Got it. And um, with a little bit of his direction, you're able to follow some narrow dirt paths. They kind of gather around some of the buildings made from weather-worn stone and wood on the outside of town. Uh, unlike the main harbor, though, uh, there's no lighthouse here, and there's no guard patrols or anything like that. Uh, it takes a little time, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and jump you guys over a map. And I think we have someone else with us. Yep, I'm here to join at the next adventure. No rush. Okay, I mean, we we you could just jump in on this one if you're ready. Um, if you're not, no worries. I'm good. I just don't want to interrupt. That's why I was being quiet. Okay, no problem. We're about to uh, change maps, so this might be the the perfect time. Uh, but I know we'll have to just get you on with your character real quick. I see you have him. Let me assign him directly to you. And just to fill you in, um, everybody's arrived at Port Nine Zaru and been introduced, of course. Uh, you can get your own introduction. Uh, well, maybe just on the next uh, adventure, we'll, we can start with one for you. But um, other than that, there's been some some trouble here. Each one of the f- five factions has kind of has a representative here calling out for some help with a, a different task, and it all seems to be kind of focused around uh, some similar things going on in town. Um, You've also heard about this death curse, which is pretty much makes it where if you die, you're dead. And there's a couple other stipulations that probably won't be too big of a deal with us playing Adventurers League, but um, it's there, I guess. Uh, and as far as the first mission, they have met with the Lord's Alliance representative, Clevin, and he's <coughs> a, a merchant hound. <laughs> and he, but he sent them off to uh, to investigate a smuggling ring. <coughs> By the way, I'm going to be casting Detect Magic as I walk. As a ritual. Okay, so I got you... Is it Zen? Yep, Zen. Nice. Okay, so let me get everybody... And so you guys are at the end of this alleyway that you've been indicated... Did I cut somebody off? Uh, don't see Squeeble. Nope. Okay, everybody's there, right? Okay, so you guys can, of course, uh, you see what's at the end there because it's not hidden. Uh, and you guys can uh, arrange yourself as you approach, of course. But you you come to a dark alley at the west end of the docks near the city walls. You see a grate, and it's guarded by three brigand-like folk. Uh, and that's pretty much all you see right now. So if you would like to form a plan up, or however you guys want to figure that out together, let me know. Uh, would, I have had, would I have had sufficient time to get up familiar yet? Uh, yeah, you can do whatever. Uh, as you approach the situation, you could do what you need to do. Okay, I'd like to have an owl familiar if I could. Shadow just wants to go in like he owns the place. Uh, why don't we uh huddle up? 
make a plan. Do you want a gray owl or a white owl? Uh, it's not a big deal. Whatever. That's a big owl. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me see. I should be able to give uh, give you control. No, yeah. <clears throat> he's been he's been eating steroids. Can you can you move him around? Yep, I was just waiting for you to be done with it. I didn't want to interrupt you. Alrighty, thank you. Alright, cool. So yeah, um, you got one person saying they kind of just want to stride on in. I don't know if that was a, a battle call or a, a you know maybe he wanted to go and just walk up and talk to him like he owned the place. Either one, but. You guys, yeah. uh, of course, everybody got to be in agreement. Yep. I will right, uh, support you guys and whatever it is you guys want to approach it. Let's huddle up. I say you can kill we, them. Yes. However, generally, that's not a good first first option. They'll yeah, never stay. Yeah, let's murder them. <laughs> so we're not wild beyond the witch light. So murder is definitely an option, of course. <laughs> <laughs> But like we don't know much about we don't know anything about these guys, right? Or uh, so you've been told that they are smugglers, um, you know, just generally. But then there's also been a mention of them trying to smuggle in a, an artifact of some sort, perhaps uh, that's drawn okay. some attention. So baddies, but not necessarily deserving of death. No, oh, that's always up for y'all's interpretation, of course. Right. That was my <laughs> only point: is that we <laughs> evaluate that aspect first. Listen, I I say. I say we knock them out and tie them up. All right, sounds good. We are trying to intimidate them into stopping. That's also an option if you'd like to try that first. I'm always down for that. And just to clarify, I'm all for combat. I love combat. Yeah. Uh-uh. Just thought it was wise to consider the diplomatic approach. Also, uh, yeah. if we're gonna do the combat route. I'm gonna hold uh, an action to telekinetically shove the first guy there. As soon as one of our melee guys is in range, um, I am an assassin. So. Um, yeah, Layla, you should get the first first drop on all of them. I'll be ready to follow close behind. Lala, yeah, yeah, Lala, you hide. When things go south, just shoot. There's nowhere to hide. <laughs> Isn't there? Like one just, of our tokens. Uh, Hide around the corner um, about where I am and uh, take the first okay. shot. Is there any we'll personality with follow us? Follow in after you. Plates or ladders or draperies or doors that are open. Or... One more time. I'm sorry. I was looking uh, looking at our APL real quick. Is there anything going on in the alleyway in terms of clutter? Like, is it crates or open doors or things hanging from walls? or? It's pretty bare. From? No, in the end, it's pretty bare uh, along the way there. And you guys can try to, to sneak up to them, of course, if you would like. Uh, otherwise, yeah. they'll uh, see you walking up. I'm going to stealth and stay close to the wall, probably right behind Layla. Yeah, we should probably hop into initiative so we know what's happening when. What time is it again? Is it like evening? So it would be pretty early. Uh, maybe it's just starting to be be at the beginning of afternoon. And then, uh, sorry, um, I'm step by step. I was getting there. Oh, sorry. From the looks of it, we will just don't care for politics today. Shadow was fine with it. Fair enough. We can just fight then. That works. Okay. Yeah, he just goes in like he owns the place, probably provoking them. Alright, so rolling for initiative, huh? Okay, that's fine. Right. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give... Uh, before combat, I guess, if I may. I'm going to give Shadow part of inspiration in case he needs to make. Um, he has an inspiration die. What race are you playing again? And done. Thank you, I, little rabbit. I rolled a natural one on my initiative, so I'm going to use that inspiration I got from the oh, we can do that. description. To yeah, yeah. Control. If you want to, you can. You can always. Uh, they do inspiration differently. Some people. You, oh my goodness, my bad. Some. Uh, some people you have to call it before, and then you use it to like give you advantage okay. on the roll. But I'm. I usually do it for an after the fact, as long as I haven't said anything uh, about your roll. Um, 
then you could use yeah, it. Yeah, oh, I did it for my initiative as well. I was like, oh, an actual one. And I'm like, oh, no. All right. Not a lot better, but still better. Anything better works. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay. Sorry, baby, it's grabbed me, but everybody's on the, uh, on the board? Mm, no. Yeah. No. So what you can do, Layla, is if you, even if you don't have anything on your character sheet, you can open it and you can hit edit and you can just put in your decks. And then if you click on the sheet or on your token, I mean, and then hit the initiative, it'll just auto fill it in. Uh, so you don't have to do anything else on your token whatsoever, but uh, that way you don't have to like depend on me for it. Uh, but I got you this time. And what was the, the initiative? 22. 22, nice. Okay, cool. So we got everybody. And all right. Layla, you're up first. Excuse me. Um, da, da, da. All right, gonna. Let's see. They Let's haven't gone yet, so I get advantage. Hell yeah. Attack roll. On uh, the the one closest to the corner. Yeah, that one. Okay. Hmm, Seventeen to hit. That's gonna hit him. And then, let's see what is that? That's considered a critical hit because of assassin. They are surprised. If they were surprised, which I don't think they were. No, you guys didn't attempt any stealth upon entry. So you guys would have walk up and they would kind of turn towards you and be like, oh, and one of them says, don't let them get it. Don't let them get the key. And then uh, they kind of grab their arms ready to go. Oh, I was attempting to be stealthy at least. I mean, we, the DM said that there's nowhere really to hide. Oh, uh, y'all guys, you, you could have crept up from the from the alleyway but it would have had to have been a group thing and i do see got it, got it, got it. a couple yeah but y'all would have to have decided that as a unit okay we'll, we'll keep that in mind for the next time yes next time okay this looks like close combat so we don't have oh, squares well, here but you could kind of imagine so i would say like he would be within five feet so if you like for sneak attack or whatever uh like to me yeah, it's, we'll just have to kind of roundabout, and you could even be slightly closer, I guess. But. Yeah, well, I rolled a, I, I rolled a hit with my short bows. Okay, so that's a hit, and yeah. you should get the sneak attack as well. They do. All right, so that is actually going to be a one-hit KO on this this bandit, if you want to describe that. No. Um, he turns and catches an arrow right between the eyes. So this is the guy who, like, turned to one of his friends and was like, don't let him get the key. And as soon as he turned his face back, he like never turned the full way as it was just snatched with the arrow and, and he falls over. <laughs> Any uh, movement or anything for you? Bonus um, action? Yeah, just move here to get line of sight on him. And that'll be the end of my move. Okay, Shadow, you're up. Out of my way, scum. And, uh, yeah. Let's... That's, uh, time to use my Bardic Inspiration. What is it? A d6? Matt? I believe it was. Sorry, d6. I was reading my apologies. 1d6. So a 14 to hit? Um, after seeing his uh, fall, fallen fro, his, his fallen fro, his fallen friend, uh, he kind of grabs his weapons and you feel like he is almost uh, about to dodge out of your way whenever you feel that, that tune your friend had played for you earlier invigorate you and, and gave you what you needed to hit. So yeah. Base. So that'll be... Eight piercing damage. Damn! And so, yeah, with the, the invigoration of, uh, of your friend kind of guiding uh, your rapier, uh, you send it home perfectly. Um, 
I'll just be honest. He he out of ten, he's got two left. So that was quite an amazing hit as uh, his blood just starts to Ow. to pour through his jerk and profusely, and he's like, "Oh, what? Uh, we're just hired." Uh. And uh, but despite the oh, do you have anything left? I'm sorry. Um. Yes, I do. I Remember that oh, yeah. drawing I had the other that, that I made the other day. Nice. That's a twenty-one to hit. That'll hit him. So and uh, yeah, he's dead. Uh, and that's is the the whip is no, but I have the feet, so oh, okay. I don't care. Perfect, perfect. All right, yeah, he's definitely dead. <laughs> yeah, so I'll wrap my chain blade around. Uh, okay, let's not get so brutal. His leg and pull, and he just falls <laughs> down. Maybe bashes his head on the ground. And as his head bashes, it like snaps his neck off at a weird angle, and his eyes still flutter for a moment as he realizes the the life slowly leaves him, and he's wah, 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 it's gurgling for air. Uh, not too brutal or anything. But <laughs> his, well, I tried. His friend uh, stands that, forward. Uh, that'll be it for you, I guess, or no? I will just turn and look at this one menacingly, and that's my turn. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, he just kind of like stops for a moment as his, both of his friends were pretty much instantly killed. And, uh, he, he kind of looks up into like the shifting form of, of shadow and kind of looks to his left and sees a blank wall and looks to his right and sees a blank wall. He looks down at the grate and you see him mutter something like, if only it weren't fucking locked. And then he just mu- runs towards you with, uh, with no escape in sight. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll do the best he can. Let's see, uh, just gonna come at you with a short sword raised. We're looking at a 14. I will parry his blow. Alright, and so it just... Um, you point it off to where, like, he has to stop it right before it, like, stabs into the body of his friend. And with, like, a cry that's, like, more fear than, uh, than anger. Uh, we'll see what Zen can do to him. So Zen moves up unsheathing his uh, great sword as he does and will strike down upon this gentleman yeah put him out of his misery although i that hits i believe with the great cleave uh, you almost you almost tip over with the the weight of the great sword but you drive it home with even more force and his leather armor is no match that's going to be a good hit yeah! All right, I will uh, call upon my psionic abilities and make this a psionic strike. So that'll be a grand total of 14. And that's going to be another one-hit kill on these guys. They didn't. Thankfully, this is the only encounter for this, this mission, but you guys uh, pretty much uh, one to chop these guys to death. Do you I will have... knock him unconscious. Okay. Okay. Uh, just make sure you tell me beforehand. You, yeah, you got to say it as you're doing the strike. You can't. It can't be like a follow up thing. But yeah. Uh, so oh, I guess not. it's okay. So, but I guess just for the work. sake of moving forward, uh, you try to pull your blow, but it's you one shot hit him. So it's like you realize that even with like the blunt side of it, his neck is just off to a weird angle, kind of, and he's totally dead. Uh, but he's evil. Are so. We- are we out of initiative? So yeah, we'll bump out of the initiative real quick, and uh, of course, I'm sure you guys are. Have... Are any of them a- able to be saved? No, or they're all they they're all dead. Y'all, you guys just came in there, and <laughs> this is all within six seconds, and not even everyone got a shot in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll walk up to uh, Layla and Shadow uh, and be like, you know, I thought we agreed on. Knocking them unconscious. Well, I can't not my I fault he didn't fly. duck. I I will start to try and heal someone, and I'll realize they're dead, and then be sad. <laughs> I just put my my hand in my in my face in my hand, and, so, and I'll 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 start searching them for the key. Uh, you definitely find the key, and perhaps uh, you know you you learn what strength you truly possess and, uh, and how you may have to, to curb that a little bit sometimes. <laughs> I find a locket with the picture of 
one of their wife and kids in it. But it turns out it was like someone else's wife and kid that he was like stalking or something. So you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, well, I guess this is all right, all right. one for one. I don't want y'all to feel too bad. These guys, it's okay. Uh, but it, other than that, you find a, a total of like 10 gold on them as well. And uh, and of course, you find that, that key. Um, you you can open the grate fairly easily. Um, you can see that without the key, it would have taken a little effort to get in, but it, it would have been possible. Uh, but you guys push down a, the grate, and it's a, a ladder kind of descending about 20 feet into a dimly lit passage. Uh, there's a, a platform attached to a rope pulley that kind of runs next to the ladder. And the air down here is very stale and, and cooler than from where you were at up above in the, the steamy jungle. And the walls are, are crafted of pretty rough stone and dirt and the ground's a little uneven as you go through uh, but as long as you're careful you can kind of navigate the slight dips and slopes without without falling or anything um, you can see this place right. is only used by few if uh, if you know if any really it's, it's pretty very rarely traveled and if you guys don't mind you can uh, just direct your attention over to the right where I'm going to move you over Sorry if you got a little trap there, Dev. And so you guys kind of uh, finally push into the, the Smuggler's Passage. Nice. So you can kind of rearrange your order there if you uh, see fit, and then we can... So is, is this the entrance? Yep, this will be the entrance. All right, so it goes this way or goes this way? Uh, This way. <laughs> That the, the I will be at the back. Sorry. Oh, I'm realizing I can't ping. My bad. Here it is. Right. Yeah, you'll be going this way. So however you, whoever wants okay, to be in the front okay. and things. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I'm like, wait. So the ground is pretty damp, and there's little puddles and things as you go. Uh, and, you know, there's makeshift sconces kind of lining the walls. So the light here is dim. Um, anyone that doesn't have dark vision can see for a, a good 30 feet still without any, like, torches or anything like that. Uh, Zen. Zen? Are, are you asking for a response or just saying my name? Uh, I'm saying, uh, oh, I was just saying your name, seeing it. Well, I was seeing it. <laughs> yes, I'm asking for a response, I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, you and Shadow seem to be the most geared towards melee fighting. Perhaps you should go in the front, unless ranged fighters further in the back. That is no problem. I can also uh, investigate things rather efficiently. I will move myself behind Zim. Okay, and so, you know, just keeping a general idea of the order as you move your tokens ahead would probably uh, just kind of help you as, you as you form lines and stuff. And you may want to change it as you go too, of course. But uh, the first room you see here, labeled A is uh, mostly just a storage room. Oh, um, this is still black. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Squeeble uses Mage Hand to kind of poke at things as we go out in front of everybody, checking for traps manually. Okay, very smart. And so far, so good, as you kind of just take this short trip into uh, what seems to be the storage room, and it's kind of littered with various crates and boxes and barrels. Uh, there's a little small Before desk... Before see. we go any further, we should probably start stealthing. True. Okay. So Zen says he's always going to keep an eye out for the traps, and then uh, and then you guys may want to stealth yep. as you go ahead. So group stealth check, just uh, and we'll keep that going, and then we may roll at certain times. We'll. I'll just. Do you it. want checks from my companion and my familiar, or just me? the dice gods are not with me today? Um, I, if you're riding your companion, I suppose you. You could just do one or the other, but honestly, probably with advantage. If you if you just want to roll one with advantage, we can go with that since you could kind of. Okay. If I could take my warg stealth, I'd prefer that. <laughs> He's got a plus plus six. Okay, so it looks like everybody did really good. Yeah, so pretty good stealth. Of course, we'll have to see if uh, what the passive perception may be, but I would assume uh, those are really good stealth rolls. So you uh, you go into a the room there. It seems a temporary storage uh, transfer to different places in here, different passages, maybe in and out of the area. 
Um, not really much in here other than the few crates. So you, can, you as your mage hand kind of pokes through them and stuff, it it really it'll pull up something for you to see every once in a while. And it just seems to be mostly like clothes and and some food stuffs and things. Of course, there's the desk in the side of the room, and that's yeah, that's pretty much it that you can see really. Mm, anything of value? Uh, not off face value. You'd probably have to check a little deeper into into something there. Uh, and then if anybody wants to that enters the room, you could make just a general investigation check. More than one can do it, too, if you want. Sure. I uh, noticed there's a book on the desk that could just be set dressing. But if, if there is anything on the desk, I would like to investigate it. Okay, very nice. That's Yasua, right? <laughs> Yo, triple seven. We won the jackpot. Hey, hey, hey! That's gotta count for something, right? So it looks like really just uh, Layla and Squeeble. Just um, it. It seemed as you're kind of poking through the area for Layla and Squeeble and Yasua. Um, it seems pretty clear that a large number of goods were recently taken from this room, probably transferred to the Harbor District. Like this is most definitely the the smugglers' passage that you saw it. Um, and as you, Yasua, you start to take a peek at the, the desk, you find a couple documents there. One's a ledger of the smuggled goods confirming uh, what you just saw there as well. And it, a closer peek seems to identify a lot of the, the stuff as illegal weapons, illegal poisons, and uh, dangerous flora and things that are collected here and sent off to other parts of Faerun. Um, of course, as you notice, there is a little note there. And you can pull it out and read it, and it says... Sanuya, it has come to my attention that our operation may have been discovered. If the princes or the Itepka learn of our existence, destroy everything. Leave no trace. Signed, Nahu. Okay, so Nahu's a bad guy. And let's okay. see, let's see, the ones that ex uh, succeeded on the, the investigation earlier, go ahead and give me a perception. So Yasua, Layla, <coughs> oh, actually, just, oh, I got lost. Able? Yes. Hold on, uh, who is, who is a better perception between you two? Mine's only a plus two. So you can all three roll. Let's go Yasua, four. Layla, and, uh, and Squeeble. Layla is plus four, is that what you said? And Squeeble. Yeah, look uh, at Yasua is plus four. Yep, Yasua. Okay. I'll give you inspiration. Yasua, okay. Layla, and Squeeble. Can so I can add a d6 I... to your, to your roll. <laughs> Can this I help the, the, one, the person who has inspiration with theirs? This will just advantage? be to see if you kind of notice something off to the side while oh. while you were you were in here. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and uh, luckily, or Yasua less. though he's he's in here and he's being invested. He kind of may read out the note to you guys or or refer some of that if you decide. Uh, and then as he does so, he may turn his eyes up from the from the note and immediately sees uh, on the opposite side of the room. There's a little key hanging off of a hook can't really uh, see what it goes to or anything yet but hey it's a key i will take the uh i'll, I'll take the notes for evidence and okay. i will take the key okay and with that uh, it's, if you uh, want me to take the key i've got mage hand which i can use to yeah if you'd like to grab the key, anyone can grab the key yeah. i'll take the i'll key. point it out and but i will take the notes all right yeah. so okay. they made this uh this map like winding as hell for some reason but uh that's that's pretty much all there is to discover in this room uh, as you move much further down this tunnel so you guys can kind of take that form you had earlier if you want or or however and you hit a bit yeah. of a, a weird section there let me see um, as you guys kind of come across this section here at the very end you can kind of see where the wall dips away a little bit um it's a bit smoother and decorated with patterns of wavy lines carved into the surface and then the tunnel just seems to keep on going further down uh this there's way. wavy lines carved into something yeah that seems to be kind of focused on this part of the wall as you pass by you see that they've carved these wavy lines uh in into the wall. The wall, it's a bit smoother and decorated with the, the patterns of wavy lines. I'd like to take a closer look at that. Okay, give me a... a just... Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, does it just look like decoration or is it possibly something more? So, um, oh. how... Who was that that first said something? Zen, right? Uh, Squeeble. Oh, Squeeble, I'm sorry. 
my bad. I'm sorry. I don't uh, I don't always have the chat pulled up on Discord, but if uh, if Squeeble since you said something first, how about you just give me a perception check real quick, and we'll see how you do. Oh, wow. perfectly, perfectly. <laughs> I can conceal nothing from you as you uh, you kind of start to Take trace. That dirty DM. It's beautiful. So you you kind of uh, you notice the lines seem to meet up in a circular pattern, um, a little more purposefully than what it seemed at the start and let's see yeah the, that roll was awesome so you you get the sense that it, you feel like you should just trace it or for some reason and you start to push your finger across the line of the the, the wall and you feel something kind of click and shift in the wall and it opens up and uh, and there's like a hidden tunnel there Oh, I will send in the mage hand. In color. Nice. I'll have the mage hand, uh, you know, pressing on the wall and the floors and looking for traps. Okay, so um, then, go on. Before we go through, I would like to look around the corner because I can just to like see what's around this corner. Okay, sure. Uh, you take a quick peek on that corner, and it seems to wind further. Um, you can't really see too much past this point as the the tunnel kind of curves off. However, on this side, I um, could open it up just a bit more. As you kind of see the extent of this little tunnel, and it leads off further in. Um, your mage hand doesn't seem to activate any traps or anything like that. And if you poke your head in, you see it's a little bit different from the rest of the area that you've been in. Uh, also, there's dust and cobwebs kind of lining the walls and floor. Uh, and the floors and walls, so to speak, are decorated in strange, indecipherable glyphs. And while the, the air was pretty stale on the outside of this tunnel, you know, in general, in here it's like ever more so, where you can tell, you know, no one's, no one's breathed to this air in probably quite a long time. So, um, yeah, you got a couple different directions y'all could go. I'm, uh, I see everybody filing into the secret chamber, so it's up to you guys. Let's check out the secret chamber first, and then we can go to the main chamber. I would like to uh, keep watch outside. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, assist. Okay, so you kind of hang back, uh, <laughs> waiting to hear a call, a call out to, to assist in any way, or if maybe someone yeah. comes sneaking up behind you. Who's going to be at the front right now? Not me. <laughs> Zen taking the lead? Yep, I'll be looking for traps. Oh, and oh my goodness, you got it on mind, and it just wouldn't be right if there wasn't a trap. So why don't you go ahead and give me a perception <laughs> check? All right, oh, nothing's getting past you. As uh, you see a pressure nice. plate on the floor... Um, as far as Yasua and Layla, you see the backs of your companions kind of disappear as they turn that last corner. And where that red box is, there was totally a trap, bro. But you are, uh, you're able to uh, just step over it, more or less, or around it, as it's a, a pressure plate there. And, um, you know, if you're curious about what it would do, you can always figure it out. Or you can just, uh, just move on past it. Do you point it out to the rest of us? Uh, I would do so if they waited. All right. I will hang out, and as people pass me, I will point it out to them. I'll take out some chalk and trace around it. Sure, that works. Somehow it's a perfect red rectangle with an X in the middle. I will bunny hop over it. <laughs> yeah, i got to be careful on how much I reveal on these maps, but so far so good. Uh, yeah, you guys, with the with the, with with Zin's uh, call out, you guys are able to kind of definitely... Um, dodge around it and as far as Yasuo and Layla that's kind of the last thing you hear from them is kind of like a little like hop, hop, ho, hop, and they all you know then you, the sounds kind of disappear from view or, or you know <laughs> not view it's kind of ominous the last thing you ever heard from them yeah hopefully not the last thing uh, yeah. and while you guys are in there why don't you all roll me a perception check real quick okay. uh, and just we'll look at... that's a pretty one damn, damn. As you guys can move into this last little bit of the chamber, you see some uh, some rubble kind of off to the side. Uh, most specifically, Shadow and Zen uh, would kind of see it at the start there. Uh, it's a, a golden little bracelet, kind of like what you saw um, at the shop earlier. 
with Layla. It kind of sparks off them in your mind, like, hey, that's the same thing we saw earlier. Uh, except for this one, no one's going to smack your hand away from getting it. Uh, but you could, you get the sense that you could probably sell it, maybe even back to that same old foo, for like uh, 15 gold or so. I'll send the mage hand over to pick it up, and uh, as long as nothing happens, I will pass it on to whoever was kind of drooling over it. Aww. Perhaps we should send word back to the ones that were waiting. This passage continues for a distance. Yeah, I will run back and tell them. Or I can send my Sounds owl. like a wise decision. That works too. Does the owl speak? Okay. I mean, no, but he can tug on their collar. And <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, just, they're like, are they, they, they in danger? They must be in danger. What is it, Lassie? <laughs> right? They fell in the well. <laughs> okay, so What's I went that? back and I told them. Come on. All right. I will head in, um, being wary of the pressure plate and the, the yep and i was hey, watch out. all right so you guys uh find the other Before. side of the the uh the tunnel there it's kind of another little secret entrance but since you're on the other side of it you're able to kind of just you know push through you can come out on the other side of the wall uh you see before we move on i'd be interested in investigating the pressure plate to see if i can discern what it does without activating it Okay, sure. You can give me an investigation check. Right. Yeah, just one second. It reveals more of the map, apparently. Yes. <laughs> uh, not great. Uh, you... The only thing you can really see is that... There's like some markings on the ground where perhaps the trap had been triggered in the past, and it, they seem to be like large uh, gratings of like stone on stone, or maybe where some stone has fallen from you know heavily, and uh, that's kind of all you're able to discern uh, just from from that. All right. And, uh, and so yeah, you guys you guys push through, and I would say. Go ahead and roll me a quick investigation check, uh, Zen. Or survival would work too. Okay, investigation's probably better. Uh, you're able to to from the layout of how you came and and you're able to pretty reasonably guess that this way, you know these. I'll just reveal this here. Um, basically, if you go north, it would lead you back the way you came. You can kind of see, uh, but and then you also could tell that if you just went to the left here, though, it'd kind of go deeper into uh, the final little twist before you'd be back near the harbor dock. Okay, let's go west then. We need to go north on the way out. So, what do y'all? What does the party think? You want to just? Yeah, I imagine north would lead us up and around um, to the other passage. I can send my owl to scout real quick. Okay. Sure, have the owl scout real quick for us. All right, let me see one part then. <laughs> I assume the owl is stealthing as well. Oh yeah. So no, go ahead and make me a, a, a passive perception check with your uh... passive perception. Me a perception. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Make me a perception check. My bad. With the owl. Sorry, I was. Okay. Yeah, with the owl. That's, yep. That's owl got seventeen. And so as your owl, a... your owl flies around the tunnel and almost flies directly into another trap, but is able to kind of stop short and navigate through the strands. Um, it's basically these like light strands uh, connecting in a crisscross pattern between the walls, and but you're, right when your owl is about to fall, fly right into it like a web, it, it kind of stops and is able to like dip and duck and dive through them to to get to the other side, and uh, and yeah, you see it just goes on around as it does, and that's pretty much all there is to that. So, looks like we chose the easier trap to avoid. All right, and so with that, without further ado, you go to the the last little twisting, the final twist. How's it going? It's got its own map and everything. And so, oops, let me copy and paste all that. It's actually easier. called the final twist. <laughs> <laughs> yep. One second, I'll... Uh, 
Oops. Okay, and so you guys, uh, of course, once again, can can put yourself in the order that you see fit, and move on up into the get ready to move on up into the next passage, as it were. So a lot of these maps, I'll just kind of have them shaded just off of initial view, and then uh, and then I'll you know as, as, I, as soon as y'all are kind of in formation, then. Then I'll start revealing the, the next part. And that's what we'll go ahead and do now, is you guys are getting that formed. All right. So you come across uh, a final little chamber here. And off to the far side is a set of double doors, which could only lead to the final uh, chamber that would kind of exit out into the the dock dock area of uh, Port Nine Zaru. And of course, you guys are to uh, approach as you see fit. There's not really too much to see in the room. Uh, it's pretty nondescript, honestly. It's just it's just a tunnel, really, that happened to get a little bit wider before it opened up into more of a chamber. I'm gonna wait till everyone's in position, and I'm gonna, and if people wanna wait till they have stuff prepared, and I'm gonna mage hand the door open. Or if you ever need the key, I will then grab the key and then mage hand the door with the key, if that's okay. Yeah, I believe we have the key. Okay, then yeah. Perhaps oh, yes. it would be best to investigate before we just open? Yeah. Good point. I will wait. Um. I think I have pretty good investigation, so I'll go forward and check it out. I, I only have plus five. I'll give you an assist. Oh, I have I only have plus four. So if you have plus five, you'd be doing better. Oh, it's all good, man. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, if you like, <laughs> sure. I'm just going to give one of you my last inspiration. All right, so uh, yeah, I guess he, he, he wants you to take it there, Yasuo. It's not, it doesn't always have to be who's best, you know. If it's the role play mm -hmm. the situation, then sometimes it's. Well, if you're you're giving me the help action. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So oh, well, you... I rolled the same thing, and they're both low rolls. So. Jeez. Oh, hey, right. we tried. <laughs> so just what you can tell off of the uh, off the beginning. Uh, you can see that. It's not a simple door that opens and closes. Um, it's you can't really tell how it would open off of off of that check, but um, it's definitely not just like you turn a knob and open the door. Um, it, it seems to almost be through a different kind of uh, setup, I guess, um, without giving away too much. Uh, let me see the other thing. Like it's just. Would like, I notice the keyhole anywhere, or there's no key, no investigation, no keyhole at all. Uh, so how about uh, once the only thing that you can see is like a lever next to it everybody step right. back so there's no keyhole there's no uh, there's no like hinges that show that the door would like open inward or outward um, and then there's like a a bit of uh, a, like a sorry I can't think of the word but yeah there's a little lever there that you could you could only assume that would open the door. I mean, there's nothing else to see, really. Uh, with that role, I must say. Um, yeah. Mage hand the lever, I suppose, while we all step Hold back. On. Maybe you can try and look for a bit. Um, uh, can we try and investigate the lever, make sure it So it is does? anyone proficient in insight? Insight? Yep. Nope. No, no impression in insight. Okay. Um, I guess just whoever whoever wants to could give me a quick insight check. I'm proficient in tinker's tools with that. Who's ever eyes an insight with high wisdom? Nope. <laughs> 
A lever. So y'all have no <laughs> idea how this door opens. I mean, it just I mean, you see a lever there, and that's it. I mean, you can't really make any heads or tails of the situation other than that. Um, so yeah, so there's a lever. How about I just go up there and pull the lever and yeah, go put that. Uh, like maybe not go up there. Why don't we have um, Derval uh, mage hand it, but we all stand back. Because we're not very insightful. <laughs> I've been watching for traps on every step. Surely, this is also a situation where we would take care. How about we ready ourselves in case we something might be up with it? Already the dodge action. Yeah, I will. Uh, for fun fact. You can only ready actions in combat. <clears throat> yeah. So what we can oh, yeah. can we say that we will cautiously open yeah, the door, guard. being yeah. prepared yeah. for there to be something to jump out at us when we do, or a danger to be on this other side. So we're being cautious. Yeah. About it yeah. You guys, you're uh, you're definitely on edge, and uh, and so you're gonna mage mage hand the door. I will mage hand the door since yeah. Okay. So lever, you're lever. all of a sudden uh, realizing that this door latch of sorts is more linked to like a pulley system um and of course it's trapped uh, as you as it cranks down uh, you realize that there was something else that needed to happen there probably to to prevent the trap i guess easiest way to say it uh that wasn't done and you hear like two things happen one is a great crash as this giant boulder seals off the exit behind you boom and then you hear oh. a chink chink as these two little things open up on either side of the tunnel like little grates and water starts to just flood in furiously. Uh, and as it does, I mean, it, it comes in fast and hard. So as it does, I'm going to need everybody in here to make a deck save as you're pushed back up against the wall behind you. So uh, it's a DC 12 deck save and that'll be from ev everybody. Oh, I have, hold on. Uh, let's see. I assume I so I feel it. I will try lucky for work. Actually, wait. That wouldn't matter. I still feel it. Shoot. He's Never mind. Rolled poorly. Looks like only me and Layla got it. Okay, it's not. This isn't. Well, shoot. For level one, this might hurt a little bit. Uh, but you'll take five bludgeoning damage for whoever did not hit a twelve or higher. So yeah, it looks Ooh. like. Deverall. That's at my health. Yeah, Yasua, Squeeble, and yeah, and Squeeble's pup. Yeah, all of y'all. They're gonna take five bludgeoning damage as you're pushed back. Uh, and you get the sense that if you don't do something soon, this whole area of the tunnel will be filled with water with you guys still in there. Are we in initiative now or No, you can just act as you see fit. Can I look around, see if there's any you know, other levers or anything hidden in the walls or something. Roll me an investigation check. Both the door. Yeah, roll me an investigation with advantage for uh, Deverall. And then, yeah, you can try and force the door, of course. 14. Uh, that actually is high enough. Uh, you see what was missed earlier, that there actually is a little small switch concealed near the lever on the door. Um, yeah, you definitely or, get the sense that if that was pressed, I will they make hand to switch or press it or whatever. Uh... Let me see. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, so your your mage hand is able to to clink it, uh, and it takes a moment, but eventually the the water kind of drains out in the tunnel, and uh, and, and the doors, uh, the door kind of loosens up, and you can and now that you're kind of there in front of it in the dangerous past, you can see that it has more like rivets uh, and like bearings kind of that would slide it to okay. the side like a sliding door rather than. Um, a of our, oh, sorry. So, Our frontliners who got hit with the, the water damage. I'm a backliner. Okay, is anyone frontliner injured or no? I have your wounds. No. Okay. Then I'll just heal myself. Well, my, uh, my pup is at about half health, but that's not a huge deal. Oh, oh you're... Sorry, uh, health, ha half health, but I tend to keep my distance, so... Okay, I'll just, uh... Sure, I might as well, uh... Uh, Archer person, I'll give you... Get my second two wounds. 
And then you said you were the one that was hit as well. So yeah, 10 and 11. Okay. Is that to me? Yeah, uh, okay. whoever said they were at health, uh, the archer person, I guess, if she did that, they're at half. Okay, sorry, my Hello. phone rang. Um, what did I miss? Uh, nothing, just forming up a plan. I think a little bit of healing, maybe, too, before y'all penetrate the last uh, chamber there. Yeah. Right. Did I get hurt? I am back no. up to... Uh, uh, no, full. I think you passed okay. earlier. So okay. there, there was the the trap was like it was starting to fill with water. Uh, however, they had seen the uh, how to fix it basically, and uh, you would have had to roll to fight past the water, but he used mage hand, so that did not even be a thing. So all was good. Okay, so uh, everybody, you're ready to proceed into there now. Yes, sir. All right, so yep. let's just go ahead and. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna step back a bit. Yeah. Everybody, roll me. A perception check. Oh, jeez. Just roll high, I guess. Three. I guess 20 takes it. Yeah, unfortunately, with that loud commotion, not only is, is hiding out of the question, but it's also kind of the yeah. opposite. Like, you may be in for a bit of a surprise as you push into the last chamber. Looks like... Uh, anybody that was less than uh, 11, like a 12 or higher passes. So Yasua, you'll have to, you'll be surprised on the first round. Deverall, you'll be surprised on the first round. And I think that's it, right? Squeeble, can we get one for your, uh, for your companion there? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I know. I should mention if it applies. My bad. Okay, so they're good. So it just looks like Deverall and Yasua. You'll be surprised on the first round. Mm-hmm. Just, just keep okay. that in mind. And then we can all roll initiative, and I'm going to reveal the last chamber and roll their initiative and, you know, all that good stuff. So you guys uh, crank the switch down the rest of the way and the doors slide open to reveal uh, a couple brigands as earlier, a little bit tougher looking uh, bandit sort of uh, individual and then kind of halfway hiding in this little chamber off to the side. You see more of a mage type of uh, of individual and uh, they were definitely ready for you guys after hearing that large crash and commotion and things. And uh, yeah, so of course, uh, we'll just, oh, where'd the turn order? Oh, there it is. My bad. Sorry, I moved it. Let me get theirs on real quick, and then we'll get started. I can roll for initiative, but I can't roll for anything else. That's what assassins care for the most, right? So does surprised mean it skips our first round, or is it just a status condition? So the way surprised works is that makes you skip your first round. Yeah, you can't take your action on your turn, and I think you don't get your reaction until your turn has happened. Okay. Just wondering. All right, so Layla, Uh, you're a little far back, but you're definitely aware of the situation. How would you like to proceed? Um, who's the guy by the stairs? Uh, he's a bit tougher, stouter looking, uh, maybe a bit more command in these, uh, these smuggler forces. Kind of the same as his, uh, brigand, but a little stronger. Okay, well. Do I have line of sight on him? Probably not because shadows and, well, he's a shadow, right? Uh, you could move over like in between Zen right here and get him easy, and then you could always just move back to wherever you want or however you want to do that. Okay, so line of sight. Um, Looks good. They haven't gone yet, so I get the advantage on the attack roll. Because of that, sneak attack is automatic. Nice. 
Um, yeah. Assassin. Assassin skills activate. Da, 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 da. Come on, baby. Twenty-four to hit. Yep, that's a that's a hitter. All right, and these poor fools are they going to even get to do anything? <laughs> so he Twelve actually, um, you hear a fierce cry uh, of pain though as. Um, is this guy's automatically dropped to death's door and he screams, ah, and, uh, he's like, I thought we, we had to jump on you. It's yeah, but you didn't see me coming. No. All right. Not. So I'm going to move to here and attempt hide. Okay. I will pass. And that I... one, that is some uh -oh. bullshit. <laughs> so you go to like crouch down by the uh, the wall and you accidentally just like bonk into it. It's like they just hear this thud from this side. They're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at least they don't have line of sight on me. <laughs> nope. You got some good cover. What you got, Deborah? I'm surprised so I skip my turn. That is the truth. Yes. So now we're going to go to this mage like individual. And she will stride forward. Uh, really only seeing shadow there. Let's see, what, what do I want to do here? Um, okay, so just to mix it up, I'm, I was thinking magic missile, but you know, come on, that's that's pretty cruel, right? But let's have, instead, let's have a little more fun with it. And uh, she's going to walk forward, and she sees shadow there. Uh, she kind of crinkles her, her brow a bit as... She's trying to make heads or tails of the the shadowy figure there, but uh, she just calls out, "You won't, you won't stop us. We're gonna get our pay." And then uh, she's gonna cast hold person on you. So I'm gonna look up just the specifics for that real quick. Wisdom saving throw, if I remember correctly. And I will use my inspiration to give myself advantage. Okay. So hold person. Uh... Well, didn't need it, but still, better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so... And then nothing happens. You feel this kind of uh, energy wash over you uh, as you realize she was trying to, to gain some kind of control over you, uh, but was to no avail. Uh, so that'll be... she. After that, she kind of just like, drat, and, uh, and ducks back in back here to get that half cover uh, where she can, of course. And then we'll go to Shadow Yourself. What are you going to do to retaliate to that? So, oh. mm. yeah. Hello. Somebody that's almost dead, just saying. 25. You may have to count the squares. We'll be able to reach him with my whip. Yep. Five movement left. See, I tried to get the map as close as I could, but it might be slightly off. Looks like I'm barely. Under, just barely cannot hit this one and then hit another one. <laughs> Which is fine. Gonna get closer to this one and hit him with both my blades. All right. So, that's a 22 with 11 damage maximum. Thank you. So he's still kicking. And uh, round two with a 13 to hit. That's going to hit him. Oh. Uh, take four slashing. All right. So uh, you can flavor it a little more if you like, but your rapier uh, just digs in, sinks in. The point of it just sinks in like very far, and he cries out. He even kind of grabs the end of it and tries to like push it away. Um, and then you, you rip it free, and blood just starts coming pouring out. And then you whip around and, and hit him with the whip. And it's like a direct hit to his leather armor, but it just isn't enough to, to protect him. And it shreds through it, and uh, that's enough to kill him. Oh, can you have it like this? I wrap my chain blade around him, pull him closer, and to skewer him on my rapier. Blood sprays the, uh, the wall behind him and some of it at the feet of uh, the mage there. So, uh, yeah. Hello there. Oh! 
You can see a bit of shimmering around her um, that gives way to realize that she had cast mage armor earlier when uh, whenever she realized y'all were coming. Mm-hmm. That's my turn. Okay. Zen. Zen will move confidently in, hearing that there is some type of mage creature. Uh, he will... Uh, uh, bring down his great sword, and Zin will will always move to knock out if uh, that is the killing blow. Okay. And he will uh, take a swipe, saying, "It is foolhardy that you would resist us." But that will miss. And then Zin, seeing that his companion Shadow can see him, will reach down and ha- ask for a surge of action calling upon his psionic nature, and make a second strike. That's Will a 17 connect? Oh, it does. So the first one, she tries to dodge out of the way and, like, scrabbles up against the desk there and and barely avoids it. Uh, And then when you come through the second one, she's confident her mage armor will defend her, and even yet, uh, you you pass through and, and get a hit. And I will again call upon my psionic nature to make this a psionic strike. So 14 points of force and uh, slashing. So she's blown back against the desk even further where she's like half prone across it almost. But uh, she kind of like pulls herself back up and she's battered. Some blood's dripping down from one corner of her mouth. But she's, ah, we're, we're going to get paid and you won't stop us. And with that, I will end my turn. All right. That was... Hopefully, uh, we'll have some beefier opponents soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Y'all are probably about to pass from average to, to strong with, with a couple levels anyway, so no worries. <laughs> Hope y'all are getting warmed up. And yeah, so this brigand, uh, he kind of turns over. Uh, he looks down at his fallen friend, and he's like, Ah, he got me the job. Man, I was going to... I was going to pay him back one day, but no, well, now I guess I don't have to. Uh, and then he just sees Zen there in front of him, and without further ado, he's going to try to hit with that blade. Uh, let's see, for a 14 with the short sword. And that's going to miss you. Uh, and that will be it for fear. Uh, so, Squeeble, what you got? Uh, what's the floor made out of in here? One more time. What is the floor made out of in here? Uh, it's like stone and dirt. Okay. And what's this guy in the back here look like? <laughs> Half dead. <laughs> uh, uh, just you like health-wise, yeah, he's on death door. Appearance-wise, yeah, he's 5'7", tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> I didn't realize he had been struck already. I'm not going to waste a high spell slot, I guess, then. Uh, like 5'7", tall. Eh. <laughs> Gandalf looks like Mr. D. Uh, I guess I will come in. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, it's not in the range there. This guy. Can I see this guy just barely? Uh, she was. She's going to get, with you being there, at least half cover, maybe more. I'm trying to do a telekinetic shove within 30 feet as a bonus action. So you just need to be, a, a, to, yeah, with the scrap of sight. Okay. Yeah, trying to shove her prone DC 14. All right, what's the save? 14. Oh, uh, it's versus, versus uh, strength or acrobatics for choice. Oh, okay, I did pretty good. Uh, 19 without mod, so. Okay, so she survived that, and then I'll, I guess I'll do a Toll the Dead on her. Dong! <laughs> All right, wisdom save those two. Jeez. Uh, probably failed it at least. Yeah, I failed, so she'll take the one damage. Is there an extra? Th- oh, it's if she's hurt, she takes more, right? Well, it's a larger dice. I still rolled terribly oh, okay. on the gotcha. dice. Oh, okay, gotcha, Okay. <laughs> All right, end of turn. Oh, I'll have the... Uh, I will swoop in and uh, do a help action. Help. Bird poop. Okay. Uh, so this uh, brigand kind of just runs forward, and with the cry, he's like... You know, he's hobbling over there, nearly trips and falls, but um, he knows that if you know if the mage falls then everyone else will probably fall too it's just come on you, you attack the mercy on overwatch everybody knows this but 
Uh, he'll come forward, and, and Zen, you're the, the tougher-looking target there, if we're being honest. Uh, for now, we'll see you about later, but he's going to make a couple attacks at you uh, with the short sword as well. And so we got a 17 and a, a 20. What's up? So this just the 17 will hit, and then the 20, yeah, obviously. So let's see. This is like the one thing that they're going to be able to do this whole adventure. So, all right, for the, for the crit, you'll take nine piercing and then just for the regular hit you'll take four more so 13 piercing to zen as uh as this guy just like sprays you with spittle and blood as he's like Aah! and you can tell he's like this was his last thing he could do uh with the crit i will expend my reaction to in place the protective field around myself okay so i will take a little of stage. nice nice okay so nice. I'm, I'm sorry, Yasuo, because this is still the first round, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, uh, you know, I, I start, ring, I ring out the water from my cloak and hair. And you're like, what's going like, on huh? in there? Call me if you need yeah, anything. Yeah, call me if you need anything. I, I'll just be here. You, you guys are fine. All right, and we'll see if it, uh, if it manages to get back around. I'm, I'm not so sure. As uh, Layla, what you got? gonna pop out and finish that guy off all right got that advantage well he's within five feet so i don't need to roll for it with advantage are you fucking kidding me so you wouldn't roll with advantage though uh not uh the uh, oh, because oh. that or that. I think I had this come up before. My bad. Sorry, that was a misconception I had. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, I I, I miss completely because after that bump in the head, I kind of stumble as I release the arrow and it just goes and clanks against the wall. Really, to yourself, you're thinking like, let's let's give these guys a chance, or or maybe I'll give one of my friends a, a chance to shine. I I don't have to kill them all or anything. And then I will just. Move here in my turn. Okay, Deverall, uh, you you spring into action. Here. Yep. Um, Ridden looks almost dead, I believe. Uh yes, yeah, he's woozy. Let's see. Yeah, I will do light crossbow. Twelve. And uh, he's a little more dexterous than his fellows, uh, and where that would have failed his friend, he's able to kind of, like, he hears the twang of the, the bow behind him, and he's able to uh, to drop bow drop down and miss the bolt. Fair enough. I will then use my bonus action to grab a dodge at two here, I can. Okay, and so with this, the, the mage kind of steps forward. Um... And she kind of looks at Zen and then kind of like is glancing at Shadow, but his, you know, he's so mysterious that it's hard to, hard for her to, uh, to address. But she kind of looks at both of you guys, and she says, "Look, we've hurt you a little, and and you've hurt us, and you've you've killed one of my men. We're only paid to do this, and if you'll let us go, I can I can give you this, this little trinket that we were hired, to to take into town." Um, it's it's rumored to be connected that to that works. to that death curse. Uh, I can I can also give you a little bit of money if you spare us. I I'm not sure we'll see our see ourselves out of this alive, and, and no job is worth that. And then she kind of grabs her her like staff and she says, "But if you don't, I'll be enforced. I'll be forced to unleash my my full power on you right now. What's your decision?" I'd say sure. If they promise to leave. I could go either way. You are in no position to make demands. What's going on in there? Or perish. I can tell you what I know of, uh, about this strange business. If you'll spare us, but you'll never get those answers if we're dead. And then with that, she's kind of like readying herself to cast a spell. Um, what, what's your answer? I, I mean, we, tie her up. Yeah, if they leave and look at Zen or like a high eye, high raised eyebrow. 
what's our move here? Um, I'm all for if she wants to surrender, we can tie them up, take everything that they have, and milk them for information. Yeah, that's what Weeble's going with. Sure. She, she says, "Look, you, there's no need to tie us up. We'll leave, and we won't. We're not going to be welcome back here, anyways. After we." Who said we wanted you to leave? We we want to leave. Our our employer. He goes by the name Nahu Rali. I've never met this. It could be a man, woman, beast. I don't know. We've never met, but they hired us. Uh, this trinket. I don't. I don't know what it is, but the Atepka Society seems to to be looking into it. That's all we've heard, and we're. We're paid to deliver it through, but we're gonna have to leave now. If you'll only let okay. us go, and if you do, I'll, I'll tell you everything about this place and what we have hidden here. And that works. It saves us the trouble of trying to find. And empty your pockets on the way out. Of course, I'll, I'll, I'll give you what they paid us. Um, Weapons, everything. So they kind of drop what they have, and uh, of course, for weapons, there's like a short sword, a couple short swords, a couple light crossbows. Uh, for her, she just has like a quarter staff, and that's pretty much it. Um, is, is she a wizard? One copper, still one copper more. She's a she's a mage, so kind of. <laughs> I was say she's a wizard. Yeah. Uh, I guess does she have a spell book? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. No spell book. Okay. Uh, she. She, they drop what they have, and uh, and the the ruffians that are alive, they kind of pull out what gold they have, and maybe take a couple pieces out of their friend's pocket. And uh, Sanuya, her, she introduces herself. I'm Sanuya. I'm, I'm just, we just take the jobs we can get, but we'll move on from here. Um, we're, we're sorry. It's hard to make ends meet sometimes, and we're all a little bit afraid now of this death curse. But here, here's what I have, and she gives you ten gold. Uh, her friends give you five. She hands you a small box too, and you open it up to see what seems to be a little snakehead trinket, um, but it's visibly broken off at the end. Um, she's just like, I don't really know anything about that. We're just paid to to move it. Um, but if you if you take a look over there, we we have some interesting stuff too. Um, I'm only telling you because I'd feel bad if I left these there and and something happened to them. But there's there's some eggs over there, probably enough uh, one for each of you, I'd imagine. Uh, they're they're little velociraptor eggs, um, you know. Ooh, the way we it. handle these things in in Port Nianzaru, if you if you if you handle them right and treat them with love, then they'll never leave your side. Um, uh, yay! She says, okay. "Here, I'll even do this." And she kind of pulls out like a secret little uh, like part of the desk, and uh, and you can see that she had to un uh, unlock it with a key pretty identical to the ones you, the one you found earlier. But she pops out like a little tiger eye gem and a potion of healing. She says, here, it looks like one of you could probably use this. Uh, let's just put this behind us and, and no more bloodshed. All right, I'm all dried off. What the hell is going on in here? <laughs> Come here, bunny Wunny. Just stand next to me and smile. Uh, okay. And uh, with that, they kind of, with your permission, they'll they'll try to depart and uh, and exit from these stairs. And she's like, "Don't worry, you'll you'll never hear from us again." I... Out of my sight. <laughs> what the hell did you all do? And, we had uh, fun. What we do best. Just to keep us on rolling uh, into the next one, you guys are able to exit this, and you can see the sun has kind of moved up in the sky only slightly, as you guys really weren't down here for very long. Uh, but of course, that strong humidity uh, assails you immediately, and uh, once again, you find yourself taking a big old pool off of your your uh, flagon or, or your flask, as it were, as you realize you're so busy down there that uh, you've worked up quite a thirst. Uh, you can work your way back into. Uh, to Clevin's shop, and of course uh, he will thank you very much. He says, well, um, well, I should have known that they were up to something extra there. Uh, the smuggling's been quite a problem, but you said something, uh, you found an artifact there, and is there anything else you'd like to report? Uh, uh you broke the yes, bandits we, off. We found these documents, and I'll, I'll show them the documents. Ah, they're very interesting. This may tell us more about the, the leadership there, and perhaps we can get to the bottom of this. Um, so that's worth a little extra gold, right? 
Ah, as promised. Here you, here you are. And he gives you the fifty gold. And uh, he says, and in addition, I'm, I may be able to uh, to have a little bit more for you. Um, I think this. What is that you have there? Um, may I, may I see that? And he's kind of motioning towards the the snake head. Looks valuable, doesn't it? I think to certain people, but you must know that that's maybe part of a a cursed artifact that's being brought into town. Um, I know the Harpers are are leading an investigation on this. However, and he says, do do you mind if I... I don't even need to hold it. Oh, I'll sell it to the Harpers? Uh, I'm sure they would be very interested to see it, but may I just take a quick look? hand it over. And he just really wants to see it just for a second. And he's ah, as I thought, I thought. He hands it back. It looks to me as if the broken there, or as if the bottom of there is broken. And you can see for sure that it's been snapped. Oh, uh, boy, I think it's by you. This this must for sure be piece of a greater whole. Um, as I said, the Harpers are leading our investigation here. The, it would be wise to see them. However, it, it may be useful to to find all the pieces before you go um it seems as if each one of us representatives of the the factions have had uh, a little bit of dealings with this um i don't need to hold that or anything as long as you you'll bring it onto the harpers at some point later you can keep it with you uh but oh you said that document let me see that and uh, he kind of you see he's got an eye for pouring over documents and things and running numbers and stuff as he is the business leader here uh, and he says, ah, Nahurali. Uh, that's that's an interesting name. Um, you may not know this, but do any of you speak to Boxy? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, not many from outside Cholt probably do, but it's Nahurali is an ancient Tabaxi word for the number four. And I've had a bit of a theory with the smuggling operation that there's a mysterious group called the Twelve. Um, I'm thinking number four is probably part of this group. But anyways, we'll keep that in mind, and, and I'll let you know if, uh, if the Lord's Alliance needs anything further from you. And then he says, now which which one of you was uh, was beginning in the ranks of the Lord's Alliance? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm a cloak. Um, just recently joined before I traveled here. Okay, let me take down your name, and I'm going to make sure to, to put in a good word for you here, and... Uh, perhaps there might be a place for you here in Cholt too, helping me with uh, with our business. Perhaps. And so he he thanks you guys again. You got the the fifty gold there, and uh, and that'll wrap up our our first mission here. And how I would label, you could label them on your sheet uh, like all under one block, or you could do separate ones for separate missions. And it's kind of up to you um, on how you want to record that. But just to go over real quick, of course, uh, it's 3.07, so we'll come back, in my time at least, so we'll come back at uh, about 8 minutes or so at 3.15 in a second. So if anyone needs to level up, now would be the time to do so, and we'll give that like 8, 9 oh, minutes. If I level up, I tear out. Right, so you'll just, uh, oh. for those who, the, the level's optional, of course, so if you don't want to take it now and want to keep playing, then yes. very cool. But you will still get the 10 oh. downtime. What were the exact rewards? Right. Will you paste it somewhere? Yeah, I'm going to, uh, if I can get time after each one before we start the next one, I may just post it then, or I may just post them all at the end. We'll see. But uh, for this one, we got one level, 10 downtime, and looks like for the, you got 50, 75. So you got the full 100 for this, and then there's six of you. So if anyone wants to do that math real quick. Uh, like 17 something on play. Okay, so we'll do 16 gold each. So I got one level, 10 downtime, 16 gold. And then uh, on this one, you just got the potion of healing. But the cool thing that you got, and this is something I'll, uh, I'll post more specifically later on. Uh, let me see if I have the document saved and if I do I'll go ahead and copy and paste it so you can see it right quick because it's pretty cool yep I do alright so one second and uh, as it's loading up you found a velociraptor egg with proper care it hatches uh, but since it's away from its natural habitat its growth is stunted it may not attack defend or provide aid in combat however through patience and practice it can be taught simple tricks and name recognition if trained and fed for 
a minimum of 20 downtime days. So essentially, you got to spend the uh, the 20 downtime on your sheet. You'd have to mark that and subtract it and everything. But in turn, it's not like a companion to help you in battle, clearly. Or it can't really... it's a pet. Yeah, it's just a pet. Yeah, just a pet. That's awesome. I know. Isn't that so freaking cool? <laughs> um, did I gain any renown? So it's it is it doesn't say that uh, here, and I'm not a hundred percent on how that works modern with the modern rules and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we can we can talk more about that after the fact. Um, okay. Because yeah, I'm not sure if they do the renown thing anymore. They don't. Okay, so yeah. I guess th- yeah, that's probably your answer right there. Is I don't think, I think as far as you being part of a a faction these days is just more so for like r- role play scenario. or role play and possible story awards. But as far as like renown, uh, AL doesn't do renown anymore. Alrighty, okay. cool. Thank you for that. Yep. All right, so uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. So if y'all want to copy and paste that, there it is. And if and I'll try to include that in the uh, in the rule. The session logs later too. It's gonna be a nice long one. Thank you. And yep. Okay. I'm, I'll be today. back in. I'll probably drop after this next adventure, just so you know. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, about four or five more minutes, and then uh, and we'll get started on the next one. Yeah. All right. See you soon. Be like hopefully like five like. If it ends up being like five thirty. You know, like Eastern. That's a hard limit for me. I will have to drop. Okay. Yeah, I would say uh, that one actually was a little more of a chonkier one out of the five. Um, so, okay. So uh, hope, yeah, is there one that's a bit less? You know. Not I don't, not necessarily. I think they're all probably oh, okay. pretty much I'm the sure same. One is a bit, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, I could probably look and maybe determine something, but you never. It's it, you never know. And of course, we're on role play and the notes, no worries, I understand. Yeah. Are so, there any dinos that are able to be purchased as mounts down here? I think it would just have to fall in with the uh, the player's handbook stuff. So, <laughs> well, I know you really has. something that you tech There's something you can get, but it has to technically be bought in this region. I know TOA has its own merchant stuff. I know you can buy uh, Triceratopses. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I, are you allowed? Oh, oh ask. Well, yeah, it doesn't include anything for that in in this adventure. I'm not sure if that would come later on, or if maybe that's oh, just ask. something that's kind of specific to the adventure. This is season seven, right? Yep, this is season seven. All right, so I'm gonna type real quick. We got we did the Lord's Alliance one, but you have Zentarum, you have the Harpers, the Iron Gauntlet people. All right, Appendix C will have information on what you can buy and how much it'll cost. It's just a question of whether or not it's allowed in AL at this point. Uh, I'm asking the Discord. I'm asking yeah. the AL Discord just to see. Uh. Yeah, I think my I think my guess on that would be that it's uh, it has to be in the player's handbook for you to buy it. Well, I mean, did you say that we got a healing potion? Sure. Yep, you got a healing potion from that. Um. So I'll just be honest. The the Harper mission is set to be the last one, and you're not like that's just it. You're not that's just supposed to be the last one in line. So you've done right. one of them. So we have the Zentarum, uh, the Order of the Gauntlet, and the Emerald Enclave to choose from for the. What's the Gauntlet? Whoa. So those are the three choices for the next one. I'm gonna go take a quick whiz, and then uh, you guys can start discussing whichever direction you want to go next. <laughs>
If y'all want to drop an X in the chat when you're ready, then we'll move on. Okay. Whoops. Oh, it's okay. I just now tapped it. So, heck yeah. I appreciate you guys for playing today, especially those that kind of jumped in uh, last minute. I know we always end up having like... Yeah, because I have real life play at like 6. So I need to leave by 5.30. Okay. Yeah, you <laughs> should be good. Oh. I only imagine it all, you know, happen for a few and never yeah. up a dude. Yeah, I appreciate that. Get a couple of them done. That's awesome. So, uh, Mike, just to keep it on moving then, it looks like we have most of everybody. Uh, what do y'all want to do? You yeah. have the Zentarum, the Order of the Gauntlet, or the Emerald Enclave? Uh, we'll just uh, take it to a vote. You could type it in chat or discuss it, you know, out loud, whatever y'all want to do. Uh, I hear the whatever the group wants. Are pretty. I rolled my choice and it got Zentarum. <laughs> we're looking for gold. They might be the best bet. <laughs> True, Zentarum might be yeah. So two cent, one on clave. Uh, Squeeble, Yasuba, yeah, Layla, any Indians? I'll go with the majority. Okay. Just a lowly assassin along for the ride. Straight killer. Uh, oh. Season 9 AOCC has guidance on TOA downtime activities and when those are available. Oh, look at that. Okay. So I think it would have to be during the hardcover adventure, though. Probably not for these modules. Uh, That'd be my... All, all, the, all the information you need is in the ALCC version 9.02 like I put in the text. When you, ask. you happen to have a page number? Yeah, I have a copy of that. I'll just have to look it over. Um... Oh, look now. Of your uh, it is page number 47. Okay. So anyways, though, uh, we'll go ahead and move on. Sorry, I just have my grass. I might want to buy one, too. <laughs> oh, no worries. Uh, so let's see. Squeeble, uh, what do you think about... Uh, which one to go to next? Oh, wherever the party would like to go. I'm not going to be fussy about it. Uh, Zentarum, I guess. Yeah, Zentarum it is, without further ado. So, uh, as you guys kind of discuss where to go next, um, Clevin speaks up and he's like, Ah, well, don't forget to uh, make a quick purchase here if you want. That This scarf would look great on you, uh, Squeebled. Um, you know, maybe a little uh, toy or treat for, for your mount there. Uh, well, well, maybe if you have time later. But I see uh, if you're looking for the Zentarum or... The local representative, uh, he's hes a bit of a person to take in, but he goes by the name of Poe. Um, you can find him uh, out on the in the old city. Uh, he kind of likes to stay out there. Um, I'm sure he has his reasons, um, but I prefer a bit more opulence, if you can't tell. Uh, <laughs> and he kind of motions at all his wares and things. He's like, be sure to stop by and buy something. And uh, so now you guys Thank know you. where to you know we'll, where to we'll go. We'll see you later, Clevin. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'll I'll call you with the next job there too, Yasuo. But of course, you guys uh, make your way out to the old city, and unlike the prominent districts within the city walls, the old city is more a haphazard sprawl of bamboo huts dotted with a few makeshift tents. The entire area is built around these crumbling remains of three ziggurats. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's I'm sure we all are, I guess, but it's kind of like a, kind of like a, I would say like a pyramid, you know, like an Egyptian pyramid, but it's a little more like yeah. beehive shaped in ways, like layered, like terraces kind of. But um, these terraces for these have been mostly reworked into platforms, housing numerous tents and bamboo huts and things. You see many residents dotted around, uh, dressed in pretty weathered garments that have seen better days. Um, however, though, there's pretty festive banner signs on bamboo posts marking several local crafts or laborers or, you know, the names of the people who live in the houses and things. Um, eventually, though, you reach the southernmost area in the hut of pockmarked Poe. Ooh. It's pretty disheveled from the outside, but you uh, you push yourselves in and it's surprisingly decorated uh, with glittering trinkets and tapestries and also smells of fine oils. You see pockmarked Poe there himself. Uh, he's a, a human, probably about mid-30s, with dusky skin and black hair. But you can see that sometime in his life, clearly his body has been ravaged by an illness. 
Uh, he's heavily scarred, and you can see one eye is pretty milky. That where you could he's pretty much blind in it. And he is he stands up and motions off many uh, female servants that tend to him. Uh, he kind of s- walks over to you guys with a, a painful stooped gait. Um, he extends a, a gnarled hand uh, that's twisted, and you can see he probably struggles with mo- with even just regular things but he has all these young women around to kind of tend to him and help him with his writing and things but despite his uh, physical deformities he starts speaking to you guys with a a sharp silver tongue and uh says well thank you thank you for coming and and joining me here in my lavish lavish palace here um you you there fetch them some water and and let's see uh to the business and so you see pretty young Cholton women all around and, uh, you know, various ages, but mostly just like young Cholton women. They kind of, uh, they start to do things around and set up a little area for you guys to sit and talk with them. He says, now, tell me, tell me, what secrets do you hold dear? Wager that I know what they are. What brings you to my estate? Uh, I believe that we are inquiring about this uh, device that is apparently being smuggled into the city that has some interest in the death curse. Ah, I'm aware of these strange trinkets, although I fear I can't offer much further than that. However, you must be the here to help the, the Zintarum. Uh, we've been put this call out, and this one should be... Uh, pretty interesting and fun for you guys I have a bit of a proposition if it were and this will help you get into the uh, let's say practices of the local community (laughs) you may or may not know but we have these events here some of them weekly some of them you know more uh, rare but some there's a couple happening today I've managed to procure some places one of them is a race of dinosaurs. <laughs> Don't look too excited, but yes, I would like you, each of you, to mount up and, and ride to victory. There's also another competition today that I'd like you to take part in. It's a bit of a one-on-one competition of combat. Whoever is the victor of both of these, first you must win in the race to be able to participate in the fight. But if you win both, you walk away with Looks like some pretty lavish gifts. A couple that I myself am interested. Ah, uh, don't worry. You probably won't care too much. It's just perfumes, poultices, and the things. There's a gem, though, known as the Oracle's Eye, that will be given out that I feel would be a fine addition to my collection. And I'm sure you're wondering where your piece of the pie comes in. Of course, of course. He's got a little gleam- glimmer in his eye. Uh, 60 gold pieces looks to be the prize as well. I have enough gold here in my coffers. You could take that full 60. Looks kind of count you up. That would make a good 10 gold apiece. That's a, that's a fair prize. Me. <laughs> well, hey, sounds good to me. Uh, I specialize in both one-on-one fighting and... Uh, I, I suppose I've never mounted dinosaurs before, but I'm fairly adept at other sorts of mounts well i know i could hire this out to some of my contracts but i feel you would be better suited for the task if i if i may make a quick judgment Mm. so what do you think do you want to compete and uh i would say not only would you gain this gold prize but you know these are very important games for our community here and uh there will be many betters and if you make some people happy I'm sure your fame will, will only continue to grow. I will not turn down this challenge. <sighs> All right, and with that, he kind of hands off a couple like little uh, vouchers for each of you to participate. Your name will be the Blade Fangs for the team, <laughs> and you'll be working for a local merchant named Terran Burrell. And does any of you do any of you speak uh, Elven by chance? Uh, yes. Oh, oh sure I do. So when he speaks, uh, or when he says the word Terran Beryl, you uh, you can translate that 
to uh, an ancient elven phrase meaning hideous prince. So you'll be working for Terran, Beryl. Mm. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and I'm right. if there's anything. Oh, and I must say, like um... oh, go on. I'm sorry. Shadow is experiencing quite the irony right here, because that could um, apply to him as well, and it would still make sense. Let's put it like this. He's like, man, that's kind of a cool name. But uh, oh, lastly, no, no. Um, if you do Whatever. manage to to fight your way to victory, you will be presented the award by Quayothe. She is one of the city merchant. Oh, well, I guess the prince probably. I don't know, screw it. Let's break, break the genders here. Uh, she is one of the, the city merchant princes. Um, I guess princess, if it, as it were, but, you know, they all hold to the titles they're given. Uh, so it would be quite an honor for you to, to meet her and receive that gift. And like I said, that could probably spread some fame for you around uh, the port. Well, where do we start? All right, Ed. I bet the opening ceremony is probably starting now, so it's uh, probably best we get going. Um, off to the market ward. That's where the Coliseum will be, and I'll be right behind you and, and cheering you on in, in the crowds. <laughs> Just look for the many, right. many women around me. Farewell. And so he kind of settles back into his chair with like a groan uh, and like sighs, you know, as he settles his beaten, broken body down and, and the the girls and, and women kind of come back to tend to him and stuff. And uh, you, you exit the tent out of the, the lavish surroundings there to the kind of grim, foreboding old town, you know. And you're like, wow, what a night. You could stick your head in and it's like you're back in the middle of the town. But out here it's just drab. And other than the colorful banners and the occasional, you know, dinosaur pet wandering around, it's you could see that they're hurting here. Um and in a way, you, you get a very stark contrast as you make your way to the market ward. And you see large clusters of modest homes and shops spread out. There's a public bathhouse along the northern Bay Ridge. And a large elevated path runs through the center of the area, housing the golden-roofed Temple of Joaquin and the okay. Grand Coliseum. Sorry about that. My internet was died for a minute. I had to mess around. Okay, no worries. I think, I think you're all good. They're at the Coliseum now? Okay. Yep. So you met Pockmarked Poe, and he sent you here. Um, yep, and to win the gym or whatever. You start to find your uh, way fighting through some huge crowds that are gathered for today's events, and no one really casts an eye towards y'all or recognizes you. Uh, you know, as they're, they're all excited, and you feel the fervor of the event. Uh, long lines of excited patrons have formed around the massive structure, and you eventually make your way in through a rear entrance and register for the competition. Uh, you see that there's actually signups for all sorts of different things, um, but you kind of narrow it down to the two specific events that, that Poe wanted you to participate in to win the prize. And uh, the main thing you see, though, is you're kind of signing off and all this. There's an attendant, and she says, Ah, well, hey, um, due to recent events, though, with the, the, the death curse and all, um, fighting to the death is strictly forbidden. Um, it used to be all the rage, but but now it's like it's a little unfair, you know, because if you die, mm. you kind of just die, and no one wants that. So uh, I must say, no elemental or spell damage is allowed either, and reducing anyone to, you know, to that point may solely be done with the purpose of knocking them out. A refusal to follow these guidelines results in immediate disqualification. Please uh, adhere to the rules. Thank you. Um, would, would, um... Oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> Would surrender also uh, consider us the winner? <laughs> I like the cut of your jib there, but uh, I mean, uh, I don't know how the crowd will take that, but there must be one clear winner and one clear loser, one way or another, I suppose. All right. And now for the first event. And you guys kind of get motioned off to uh, to like a little side room where they put on these funny little like jockey outfits for you. And, uh, and kind of, like, teach you the basics of, like, here, you know, you'll kind of get all bow-legged and, and hold on for dear life. That's pretty much it. Uh, but they introduce I, you. Go on. I missed part of what you're talking about. Something about no attacks and we're doing dino racing, it sounds like. I had to step away for a second. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. So, basically, no, no lethal damage, no elemental or spell damage, um, no, uh, you have to knock them out or else uh, you'll be disqualified. 
And then they do motion you towards the dinosaur race where you're mounted up and fitted with the appropriate gear. They kind of ask you to, to put your regular stuff in these lockers and things. And um, and in turn, they give you the, the funny little jockey outfits that are each one kind of has its own color associated with, uh, with a, a dinosaur. And uh, they give you a harness and a saddle too, of course. And they give you a, a little rider pole. That's kind of like a quarter staff uh, for other purposes, I suppose. And, right. and yeah, they motion you out. And so you go out into this uh, heated arena and around uh, what seems to be kind of like a boxing ring in the middle, there's been uh, a, like a starting point for a race. And they want you uh, to do so many laps around the arena. And uh, whoever, of course, gets their first wins. So we'll bounce you over to the arena. So I take it we don't have any of our gear, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to copy and paste y'all again real quick. Uh, and right, so you would you won't have any of your regular stuff. Although for this first part, you won't really be needing it. I'm just trying to understand what's going on. <laughs> Will proficiency with land vehicles from my soldier background help me at all with this? Oh yeah, yeah, it definitely, okay. it definitely would. Hmm. Excellent. Uh, all right, so here's what we do with this. We are going to start here in the bottom left with the dinosaur race tracker. And uh, I'm just going to kind of move y'all down to a spot. It doesn't really necessarily matter. The uh... Well, actually, how about we do it like this? Everyone go ahead and roll me initiative just first as we're setting up the board, and then we'll go through some of the rules and how it's going to work for the dinosaur race. Uh, I can't see my token to select it. So I yeah, yeah I can't see anything. Oops. I think I got it. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you're now. So we're all in the very far bottom left, and then I'll just put you guys in, in order of... Uh... Ooh, I go first. So as of right now, it'll be Dev first. Oh, I've done snail racing in the witch light, so this is fun. Do we have some players sitting out, or are you still waiting on initiatives to come in? Yeah, it looks like we're still waiting on two more people. Oh, are you waiting on me? Uh, I am like... trying to figure out how to put my initiative on the tracker, and it's not working. Is yeah. Uh, yeah, as far as this one, if you, I just uh, need to uh, wait, see it I in see, chat. I see I how to do that. Okay. I'm just going to roll again, because I think that's the easiest one. Uh, if you're rolling from D&D Beyond, you have to have your token selected when you roll. Yeah, yeah, I figured that out. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Yasuo got a 17. Alright, so I need Lala, Zen, I got you on there too. What, you, what did Lala end up having for initiative? Nine. Okay. So you will not be last, but all right. So that looks right on the board, at least there. Eh? Nice. And we'll just take the turn order off for now. We don't necessarily need it. Um, okay, so we'll just end up going down the line here as it was. Are we competing against each other or so, just the NPCs? Yeah, on second thought, I'm like, maybe I should. Uh... My bad. I'm going to go ahead and keep the order open. I figured that would probably be the best way to still have the visual of that as we go. So J1, 2, and 3 are the jockeys. Um, I think I need to add Leela. The 9. I mean, I can re-roll my initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me get theirs real quick. And then uh, and then we'll go over some rules real quick. So it's, it's kind of a specific thing. Um, and it should be fun as you guys kind of mount up and and hit the starting line you see uh, each other of course and you look over with narrowed eyes as uh, even if it's more for fun or even just more competitive you're like I'm gonna beat you and thinks may the best rider win and then I'm rolling narrow decks for right now
Okay, so as you guys kind of line up and uh, you see your mounts first, uh, there seem to be a smaller domesticated version of an Allosaurus, and uh, they're bred specifically for racing, and so they're all ready to go. You kind of are able to fit the harness and saddle onto them pretty easily, um, and you know maybe give them a little nudge and a pat, and you hop on. Uh, maybe take a second to get kind of adjusted on there, and uh, I, th I think we may all start on position one here. And then an announcer kind of comes up, and he, uh, it's the same same kind of uh, lady from earlier, and she says, "All right, now here are the rules, and everything must be followed." Okay, so on each turn, you can move up one position, and you can take one action per turn. The available actions are as follows: you may dash. If you make a successful animal handling check with your mount, you can urge them to move two spaces instead of one. However, keep in mind that you may only successfully do this twice per the race, or your mount will fall down from exhaustion and die, and that is not allowed. Second action you may take is the jab. A rider may use their pole to jab at any other rider so long as they are in the same position number, i.e. if you are in position 1, you may jab other people in position 1, no one in position 2. Alright, moving forward, you will make a normal attack against the armor class of the rider. On a hit, instead of taking damage, they will make a deck save. If they fail, they will be knocked off their mount, and the next turn they will lose their movement to mount up again. Ha! And for the third action is a good old fashioned taunt. You may only taunt or distract any other rider so long as they are within up to one. Count them one position away from your own. I.e. if you are in position two, you may taunt someone in position one or position three, but not position four or else everyone else will laugh at you. Next and last and probably the most funny is the trip. This action may be used so long as you're in the same position number, i.e. same as the thing from earlier, ha ha ha. But if you use your pole, you may attempt to trip someone's mount. Gosh, that would be hilarious. They'll have to make a strength or a dex check, athletics or acrobatics. If successful, the opposing rider must then make a wisdom save. And if they fail, the mount will stumble and they will lose one position rank, falling behind and probably being laughed at by the entire crowd. Oh, and don't forget about those obstacles. Look, before you, you see all kinds of things laid out on the map. And so at the end of every turn order, you may face a blockade, or maybe a mud pit, or maybe a net, or maybe a barrier, or maybe a trap, or maybe nothing if you're lucky, but I bet none of you will be lucky. Who is ready? Now the crowd goes wild. Yay! Could we uh, get those actions written down in the chat, <laughs> uh, if possible? You know what? I, I probably could. I think I remember all of them, but you know, just in case. <laughs> yeah, they are a little bit. Uh, each one kind of has its own thing too, so it's sure helpful to see it. Uh, you want to throw that screenshot in a handout or something? That'd work too. Yeah. Perfect. And what it boils down to, of course, uh, funny voice aside, I guess, is you can dash, jab, taunt, trip. So you have those four actions you can do. Every turn you can move, of course. And then, uh, yeah, so you can dash to make two, but you can only do it twice, as it says. You can jab, you can taunt, you can trip. And so we'll go by the uh, the order there. Any questions, of course, just ask, you know, and, uh, and we'll just play it by. Uh, yeah, so you guys all level up, and with the fire of, like, what almost seems to be a little pistol, but it's probably some sort of little, like, firecrack wand. It's just, that's a, what is it, the pyrotechnics wand or something? It kind of goes off, and uh, and the race begins. And so... May I? Looks like it's... May dead. I uh, keep my weapons, but only for the defense? Hmm? Or did they just take them away? So I'm this is a this is a nonviolent, other than you know, 
poking and jabbing and tripping each other, it's pretty nonviolent. So if like if someone were to draw a weapon or something like that during the thing, it would be like pretty disgraceful, I would say. Yeah, the concept is it's a mini game with its own set of rules completely separate from anything else we have access to. So everything that we can do in here is strictly within the context of this and only this. We can't bring abilities or weapons or items out from the outside, it sounds like. Uh, all right. <laughs> Pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, so I go rest, first. Rest in peace, my one armor class, I guess. Yep. Okay, I will try to dash. That's animal handling. And we can only take one action on our turn, right? Uh, yeah, so you can take one action and you can move one. Um. Oof. That's not good. I move up one and then I'm done. Now I'm trying to see. You may you may be able to keep your armor. Let me see real quick though. No, no, for that in particular, I need to have two weapons it's, it's fine so I think you can have your armor so your AC will remain the same but you're just not using your weapons or your abilities really I mean I think if you could find a way to use them to help you without like breaking the rules then then yeah you would be that would be acceptable like just you know like guidance or bless or something like that would probably be fine Stop. You know. oh guidance fine yeah but as far as like you know like you know, shocking grasp or something like that. That that'd be totally not cool. Oh my bad, did you? Oh, sorry, I moved you up one to me. Um. So yeah, I think that's how I'm reading it. It just yeah. So no, the spell is more reflective of damage rather than it is like buffs. It, it seems. So with that, uh, Deverall, you'll be first. You can you you can make an action and you can move one. And then of course, if you okay, do the, it's messing around. Okay, I'll see. If you do the dash, then that would take, you could do two, but you'd have to make the animal handling check. Ah, nope. I'm done. Okay. And so by the rules, attempting the dash doesn't count as one of your two, only succeeding at it does. So you can still try two more. Yeah. And so, okay, but next. Okay. Yep. And so we'll go to Jockey 3, who will move one, and then they themselves are going to attempt to dash. And looks like they are going to succeed, so they will move up an extra spot. And then we'll go to Yasua as the race begins. And you're making your first okay. lap around the, the arena. I will move one, and then I will attempt to dash. DC 13 yeah. animal handling. Just hit that. Perfect. Just barely. All right. So you can move up one more. And we'll go to Jockey Down. And wh where can I add my proficiency bonus with the... Um, oh, so... Uh, yeah, the... I would say with... You would have added it then. Okay. In that case, then it would be 15 there. So but in this I'll, place... I'll... Uh, honestly, I would say anytime you make a roll, you could... You could add it for this because you're. This is all doing all right. with you and your mount, so that's just kind of a bonus that you're gonna have for this. All right. So, hey, it's like the the you take that and you hope you'll get to use it, and you never do, and then now you get to. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I finally get to use it. Yeah, no doubt. So what's that? More like a sixteen or something, or a, or a fourteen? Yeah, or a the, that makes it a fifteen. Nice. Okay. Cool. And so we'll go on to uh, J two, who's gonna do the same. Everybody's trying to. Uh, and they're succeeding on the animal handling checks. You can see these guys are like, like gnomes and other like small folk, uh, even some humans and things that are just unnaturally small, and they seem like aerodynamically challenged, or you know, built for this somehow. And uh, they got a knack with the animals and things. So he's kind of yip yips, and they go ahead uh, as if they had this planned. And Squeeble, what you got? Seems like you may be good at this. I've only got a plus two in animal handling. So I move once, I make an attempt, and if I succeed, then that's the end of my turn. If I fail, I can still try one of the other things, right? No, that would be your action. Well, I thought you said if, that the dash only counts as your second action if you succeed. What were so you doing? it says each mount may successfully dash twice. Failed dash attempts do not count toward that. Is that oh, oh, toward that. That's weird. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm going to try the animal handling. Okay, nice. You succeed. 
as as soon as that crack goes off with the pyrotechnics wand, uh, you know, everyone just digs their heels into the Allosaurus, and you hear that as they all just zoom, they shoot off as fast as they can. Uh, some of them slightly faster than others. Uh, so but, you would, you'd mentioned if we had ways to use our things uh, creatively, you might allow them. I have the telekinetic feat. Would that be count as in place of like a dash, jab, taunt, or trip if you allowed it to try and shove somebody? Um, you're just shoving them back a space or something. Yeah, we could do that. I think it'd okay. be more like flavoring the uh, the jab, but maybe your roll or something would be different. Well, mechanically, it'd be more advantageous for me to to not have to roll the jab itself and just use my uh, my telekinetic thing because that's just okay. a a DC on their part rather than me trying to roll an attack roll. Right. Okay. That's totally uh, that's valid to me. So, okay. uh, all right, you got a good dash there, and let's see if this uh, he can. Get the last one. Uh, oop, he may not. Let me see what the mod is. I think mechanically that would be basically the same as a trip. Yeah, yeah I'd go for a trip for sure. Uh, that sounds good to me. We could, whichever, I'd say pick one maybe and then stick with that for the whole thing. So let's see. Uh, I'm sorry. Animal handling is wisdom. So. Oh, he just made it. All right. Zen, not one to be left behind. All right, Zen will uh, stoically try to urge his mount on, trying to uh, conf- uh, portray or exude confidence as he does so. It gives you a yip, and you can tell it's trying its best, and it succeeds as it rushes off to, to join those on the front line. End of all right, this race is already off to a very hot start. Neck and neck. Layla, what you got? I'm going to move, then I'm going to attempt to dash. I do have uh, proficiency in land vehicles, so I get to add my proficiency bonus. Nice. So whatever the hell this is, plus two. Oh. <laughs> Crap. So three. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you rush forward and uh, and you're like, wisp, you know, yelling encouragingly, uh, encouraging to the uh, to your mount, but it seems like distracted by like the roars in the crowd, and you're thinking, you're like, is this a? Did they just now, you know, tame this one? Of course, like, I get the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why aren't you responding to the command? This is what they told me to say. All right, so. so... Because I failed, do I do I could I do like a taunt or something? No, that'll take up your action for this time, but it won't okay. take up one okay. of your two dashes. All right. Uh, last but not least, what you got, Shadow? Me and my mighty steed will try to dash because we are very original. Hey, if anything, uh... just roll high, Woo! guys. It's that easy. Just <laughs> roll high. Yeah. Nice. So you definitely move forward. Uh, Yeah, and it's just funny that everybody did do that because the text here says the green vipers, which is what they are. They're known as, you know, attempt to dash first. You know, (laughs) it's like everybody did that, too. So it's funny. Uh, Anyways, Deverell, what are you going to do now? Okay, can I taunt someone even if they're way over here? So for me, it looks like the order in which you do things is kind of up to you. So you can taunt and then move if that's what you want to do, or you can move and then taunt, so to speak. Or okay, yeah, I I will. You can taunt any rider in your own position or between positions. So you could you could taunt anyone. And I just wanted to point that out too that it was okay. I will taunt number one, the green rider number one. Okay. That's intimidation. Uh, So if you're gonna taunt him, you will try your intimidation against their insight. So let's see. Wow. Oh, oh crap. Okay. Yeah, I definitely beat you. Uh, wait, can I? Oh, wait. May I use. Oh, yeah, I can't see myself. Shoot. Um. Uh, do I. Can I technically part of the inspire someone, or am I not allowed to? You could, yeah. I will partly inspire. Uh. This person, Yusufa. Yasuo, you'll inspire me. As you, yeah, okay. and then I am going to move up, and I'll be done. Thank you. Nice. All right, team players, uh, you join the rest of the ranks. Um, I don't even know what I'm rolling for, honestly, yet, but probably nothing good. 
All right. Uh, he would just move forward, and then he'll. It doesn't matter what I try to do. I rolled so badly. Um, he'll just try to jab one of y'all and totally miss. It doesn't matter which one. Because I rolled a seven. So then we'll go to Yasua. Uh, we'll say he tried to jab. Let's see. Let me just roll because this will be funny. We may have a rivalry. He tries to jab Layla. Uh, oh, wait. No, he can't. You're the one that's th too far behind. All right. Well, he tries to jab Shadow and uh, and misses as he kind of like sneers and, and urges his mount forward. Uh, and Yasua. All right, I'll move forward one and attempt to trip uh, this one. Okay, so you will do uh, your... Sh a s so... It's funny uh, it says make a DC... Oh, it says or that. Okay, my bad. Sorry. So I'm going to make an acrobatics. Oh, wait. Actually, which am I better at? Yep, yeah, acrobatics. Okay. Let me roll that. All right, so I just got to do... with. Do I have to declare if I want to use my bardic inspiration first? Hmm... You can see the result and then, but it would, should probably be before I say something. Before you say something. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm happy with this result, so. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, so you definitely succeed, and in, uh, in, before you take any uh, movement, you quickly jab your, your rider pole out. Um, oh, you know what? I, I did forget to do something, too. Uh, I'm so sorry. We forgot to do the obstacle, so after, your, oh, after, cool. after this, I'll totally do that real quick. Uh, but... Yeah, you jab your, your pole in there so effectively. And, yeah, they, uh, the rider, like, tries to grip on as tight as he can and and uh, and whisper, like, instructions in his in the, the mount's ear, but it's not enough, and the mount just, like, falls and stumbles over. And uh, which dude was it? It was the third one. Okay, so you, did, or, you already did move up. My bad. So, yeah, you move up and, and stick your pole in uh, the other leader to slow him down, and it succeeds. He kind of falls behind uh, as you're in the lead, Yasua. All right. Um, I get, that's everything I can do. Okay. And now, really quick, everybody uh, roll me a d20. My bad. This should happen at the end of, or top, I guess, however you want to look at it. It should be at the end of the round, but my bad. I got okay. so caught up in the race, y'all. <laughs> d and I got to do it too. Inspiration so. on that? Oh uh, sure, I haven't. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh well, well, hold on. Let me say though, is this? I mean, we do whatever you Google. want. I guess if you feel like that'll help you, sure. My hand yeah, might be acting up again. Hold on. Okay. I, th no I think it's a table. Uh, Kelly, can you roll a d20 for me, please? Do you need someone to roll a d20 for you? I can roll one for you if you'd like. Okay. You can see the first roll is my own, and then I'll I'll roll this one now. Okay, thank you for that. All right, so is, is everybody rolled? Uh, I haven't rolled inspiration. I was confused. Do you think it's a bad idea for me to use it here? I won't. I think it's a table, so I don't think it matters oh, necessarily. Okay. And I won't. It could matter, though, but you're not really going to know how until you see the results. So it's just one of those things yeah, where it's yeah. like, I mean, if I see what you roll, I could tell you if it would, but then that would kind of defeat the purpose in a sense, so... I would probably save it, but if you don't want to, then you don't have to, I guess. I, I think generally it's just like the height, like like how, how big your role is, isn't going to okay. be any better or any it, worse. Okay. Um, all right. So moving on from that, I guess. Let's say. Okay, uh, I'm back. Okay, nice, nice. All right. So let's take it from the top. Shadow, you, uh, as you kind of a, approach the line of everybody you encounter a blockade it seems like shabbily made of wood and some debris um go ahead and make me an animal handling check for shadow can we not get that natural 20 i got anyways i'm like oh, let's see it Oh, I mean, snap. the other side of the spectrum, I guess I will use my inspiration, because why not? Okay, sounds good. Watch me get the second one. Yeah, oh, my figured. Goodness. So you're, as you approach the uh, the block in your path, you try to like urge your mount to, to jump over it, but you feel it like tremble in fear and kind of like stop and go around it as everybody else kind of boom, like goes past you. Uh, for now, of course, everyone else still has something coming their way. Uh, as let's take it back up to the top with uh, Squeeble. You are I'm going to encounter a uh, a, bar a low barrier. A wooden beam swings down in front of you. Um, uh, I'm not first. 
I'm sorry? Uh, Deverall was first in the order. You said no, we I'm, I'm just going down the line from the rolls. I had Shadow first and Squeeble, just oh, okay. who happened to roll the d20 first. Okay, so you, what do you need for me? Uh, nothing, I was just... Uh, or one second. So, Squeeble, you you hit the, the wooden beam swinging down. I'll need you to make a, a deck safe. Uh, is this an animal handling or dex or what? Is it? Uh, dex? Just a dex safe. Oh. Hey, all right. Okay, so perfect. Uh, you're able to kind of urge your mount to sidestep it and uh, and definitely duck out of the way, and you're able to stay on your mount and, and keep on careening forward. And so I'm just scrolling back up to the top there with that. So Zen, uh, nothing happens to you as you kind of maybe have a chuckle and, and watch everybody else kind of going through these obstacles. Um and then let's see. Zen would never chuckle. He would he would be witnessing everything with stoic dispassion. Okay. <laughs> uh, same for Layla. Uh, nothing but stoic dispassion as uh, you ride forward with, uh, without any obstacles. Yasua, same for you. Um, you also have stoic dispassion as you ride forward with no <laughs> obstacles. And I'll kind of mix them up as we go, so it's not always predictable uh, for the you know the same roll every time. But of course, I'll keep it the same each time we roll through it. So let's see with uh, you with an eight. That's the same thing from Shadow as uh, side by side Deverall. You encounter this short wall of wood, and you see uh, uh, Shadow's mount kind of dip off from from it, and uh, and you think maybe maybe mine will make it over it. Uh, you'll have to make me an animal handling check. Oh, are you there? Uh, Deverall, sorry if I. Oh, sorry, I'm my, bad. I'm sorry. my bad. I don't know if I said the name. Sorry. Oh, the shadow. My apologies. Ten. Okay, so again, like, uh, they almost seem to be like pack animals as they almost cling together and dip off of the path, and uh, and you and you and Shadow both are kind of like lagged a little bit behind from that. <laughs> okay. All right, and then I think this is the last one there. And uh, actually, we're not going to be as interesting this time as y'all rolled kind of similarly. But uh, it'll be the same like wooden beam that swung down earlier uh, for... Oh, no, because that was the roll. Did everybody have a turn, right? My bad. Sorry, I got confused by the... Yes, I believe so. The dev roll uh, right there. My bad. Sorry. All right, so everybody's good, right? All right, let me see what happens. Three of, us, three of us didn't have anything. Right. Move. Y'all are too quick. Okay, so one of them... The first, for rider one, no obstacles. The second one will be the uh, barrier. So let's see what he can do. Uh, looks like he will. Yeah, okay, I thought so, but he'll succeed, so he's fine. And then the last guy, nothing happens to him, looks like. So they avoided the obstacles. Okay, sorry for the interruption there, and then we'll just continue on as normal. Now J2, uh, he'll see his friend get tripped and he'll take a jump forward and he's going to try to trip Yasua. Mm. And so he will. Make his check. And looks like he failed. So uh, he tries to like jab his pole towards you, but gets a little tangled up and he almost falls off his mount as he kind of has to like reseed himself and, uh, and fails. Squeeble. All right, I'm going to move, and then I'm going to uh, use my telekine uh, telekinesis to try and trip uh, the front green viper. And uh, I'm assuming you'll allow me to use intelligence instead of strength or dex for that? Oh, uh, sure. That's how the yeah. normally would be resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, so after oh, do, we add our, do we add our proficiency bonus on top of it if it's already been involved in it, or only if it's not involved in it already? So what? How's the text? Are we doing combating intelligence? So for telekinesis, the difficulty for my shove attempts is based on the stat that is improved by taking the feat, which in my case is intelligence. So I'm using my intelligence to roll this. You had said somewhere that we add our proficiency bonus to things, and I'm still unclear about when that comes into oh, play. Oh, that was for if you had the uh, vehicle mount. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I have proficiency in um, ground vehicles. So. Okay. Moving okay. on. And so now to clarify, I need to roll against your intelligence with my own. 
Uh, according to the rules, I had to meet or exceed 14, and if I did, they had to meet or exceed 14 to okay. survive. Uh, I did not. <laughs> well, I, I didn't I didn't make 14 anyway, oh, okay, so okay. my oh. attempt failed before they okay, even tried you, to resist it. Yeah, he failed yeah. miserably, so I don't feel too bad. I got a 3. <laughs> I mean, you are the DM. You can allow it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no. Well, rules is written. Rules is written. <laughs> cool. Moving on. Okay, and did you, you, move, you took your move up. Okay, good. So, I did, sir. We got uh, Jockey One. He'll move up, and let's see. Uh, he'll take a different approach, and and he'll just try to uh, take a jab at uh, Squeeble. So it's just going to be a normal attack. Uh, where's my night dice? Mm, 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 mm. This is a fifteen hit. Oh, does it hit Squeeble? Yep, looks like it does. With the with or without my gear. So you would have your armor on still, and so that okay. looks like that will... 16. Yep. yep. That'll miss, uh, and that'll be it for him. As we'll go to Zen. Now, they're trying to trip you guys up a little more and failing. All right. Zen will again stoically attempt to urge his mount forward. You succeed as you take the lead in the race and uh, almost hit the finish line. Perhaps putting a target on your back. I roll the d20 and end my turn. Alrighty. And we'll go to Layla. Uh, move and then attempt to dash. See how I'm so far behind. Alright, so you don't want to be in last, so you leave your two friends behind, urging your mount forward. So, 13? And unfortunately, uh, it just seems to kind of ignore you and just trot forward at the regular old pace. Take my stick and hit him in the head, you <laughs> blasted animal. <laughs> <laughs> and since you're... Prof oh, wait, you're proficient. You get to add that, right? Yeah, that's why I said 13. Oh, so 13. My bad. Sorry, I just looked at the number. Yeah. Sorry. I was hoping for you. 13 no. total. But yeah, so since you're proficient, uh, you, you know that this thing is just not operating in the way it's supposed to. <laughs> All right, Shadow. This one was born in the dumb tree and smacked every branch on the way down. Mm, 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 mm. It can't all be winners. My mount is the best one of them all. As he tries his best. Oh. I'm going to slaughter it, fillet it, and cook it. <laughs> That's okay, little buddy. You go <laughs> when you feel like you want to. It's awesome. Okay, so uh, well, this time uh, I think one of, uh, with Zen, if that D twenty was for yours earlier, we can we can roll with that. Uh, but I'm gonna try to do it a little more organized this time, and uh, we'll just go in the roll twenty order. If Shadow, if you want to roll me your D twenty, thank you. So this time, uh, kind of shaking. That's a one. Oops, where'd my table go? All right, so this time uh, you're urging your mount on telling him he's the best and even if y'all don't win you know this memory will last forever um, no one else hears this of course uh, and then you look up and you're astounded to see a pit of mud forming in front of you and uh, you feel the tremble in, in the little dino underneath you as uh, he needs you to make this animal, ha animal handling check that's for shadow I will, well, but my character sheet is being dumb. What the? F yeah, you're good, man. I was just pointing it out. It plugged me out? What? Oh, yeah. So next uh, would be Layla, if you want to roll the D20. I'll do it from, I'll do it from D and D Beyond. Okay. Oh, we got it two. Should show up. No, oh, snap. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and so you try to to urge your mount away from the mud, uh, but it just like takes that as an indication to go forward faster, and so it starts dashing like you wanted it to the whole time, but it instantly uh, yeah, goes into the mud and kind of like <laughs> sloshes down. And uh, well, well, were spells allowed or no? Can I use predestination to get rid of the mud? Mud? Yeah, you can. Um, unfortunately, it'll still it'll still cause you to slog behind while you're doing so, uh, and you also will not be able to dash on your next turn as you're kind of clearing clearing the muck off, 
and All right, uh, we're just uh, if you if you already rolled, I'll take the roll. But I'm just going in in order from the pictures. If uh, if Layla, if you'll give me that D twenty. Okay, and uh, this time you have a wooden beam swinging down in front of you. And uh, so just make me a dick save if you don't mind. And uh, as you kind of duck under and expertly, of course you'd have that bonus on there too, um, you're you're able to stay on your mount and you like look up to see there's like people positioned at different places and they're like swinging down these little like uh, traps and things to the, like the roars of the crowd. Everybody's loving it and stuff. And, uh, and they even start to like, they're like, Layla, Layla, as you duck underneath that one and, uh, and they love it. They, the action, they love it. Um, and so how about now with, uh, Deverall? You had this 17, so that it will be, uh, nothing happens to you as you keep on sauntering forward. And then how about you, Squeeble? Did, uh, did you, nope, that, so I think I have a roll what? from Zen and, Yasuo when the time comes up, but go ahead, sorry. So what did you need from me? Uh, just the D20, if you don't mind, for an oh. obstacle. Oh, right. All right, so uh, you're able to, like, kind of look around at some of the other people, you know, running into mud pits and things, but you're able to keep on going with no issue. And nice. for Zen, uh, you had that, looks like an eight. 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 And, uh, you see the same little tricksters kind of above you, except for this time they're trying to throw a net down on you. And uh, just trying to mix it up a little bit and use some of these because some of the rolls are coming up the same. But yeah, so make me a athletics or acrobatics check. All right, so you're able to like urge your mount over to the left a little and the net kind of just like crashes down into the ground and uh, you keep on going forward. You hear like a little disappointment in the crowd, but also equal amounts of like, yeah, like it, you know, these newcomers are pretty good. Uh, and let's see, last but not least, we had Yasu up there with the uh, the 19. And uh, so that's going to avoid all obstacles as you, you keep on going forward. And so back to the top of the order, Deverall, what you got? Sorry, I will jab at G. Oh, yeah, they do need a roll. I'm so sorry. Uh, one yeah, is... Thanks for reminding me. Uh, one of them will have to do a deck save. They, they pass, though. They avoid the tricksters, and the other one, nothing happened with them, too. So they're getting pretty lucky on the oh. obstacles. Like they know the yeah. course or something. You will want a disadvantage that taunted. Oh shit, he rolled even better. Fair enough. Okay, uh, I will jab at number one. Uh, so I make an attack gotcha. with it. How do I roll that with it? So yeah, you'll roll a, a normal attack roll. Okay. Wow. And so you are moving up into the third square first. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. And then, yeah, unfortunately, that'll be just shy as uh, as you try to hit, uh, you know, Jockey 3 over here. Then I am done. Uh, but he just kind of, like, dashes a little bit too far out of your reach. And with that, it's actually his turn. And uh, just for laughs, laughs, as he kind of, uh, well, uh, yeah, just for laughs. Who cares? He's in behind anyways. Um, he's going to hope his friends can can take the win, and, and he's going to just, like, try to jab you back, Deverall, out of uh, out of spite. And uh, I think, like, a 21 is going to hit. So you'll need to make a uh, a deck save, DC 13. Oh, who are you asking to roll? Oh, this is Deverall. Sorry. He's returning fire upon you, Dev. Oh, sorry. Deck save. Okay, Gambler. and so he hits you, and uh, and like you feel like it might be a little bruised later, but uh, you're able to kind of like squeeze, uh, squeeze your thighs down on the saddle and and re retain your position. Uh, with that, oh, of course he'll move forward one, and then Yasuo, what you got? All right, I uh, I guess I'm gonna try and dash to get to the finish. Yeah, I ruined the game now. Let me roll animal handling. Uh, I will add 
add my bardic inspiration that I got earlier to this. Okay. So that is 12 plus a d6. So that is 18. Beautiful. And looks like we are going to have a winner on this round as you yes. rush through. But um, I guess we can still we can see who gets second and third just for fun real quick. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah, that's true. You are in a bit of a time crunch. So, OK, we'll move on. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So well, you you finish through the, the line and uh, the crowd goes wild. Uh, they start showering you with praise and some of these strange flowers from the jungle you've never seen. Um, some of you kind of finish at the same time and then a couple are dragging in a little bit behind, uh, but you had a pretty clear winner there as uh, Yasuo is kind of hoisted onto the shoulders of the locals. And after a bit of celebration, you're kind of led down to a little area where you can uh, recover and no one's really hurt, but you and your, you know, your opponents kind of, they come up and each one's like, Hey, y'all did great out there. You might have a future in this. Uh, yeah. Hope to see you Shake again. Shake their hand. Basically say the same thing to everyone. Just like, not over yet. Still got one more thing to win. <laughs> He's like, good game. And gives you a little smack. And uh, and though y'all didn't suffer any major damage, you could take a short rest. Like if that affects, you know, Bardic Inspiration, perhaps. Um, or anything Indeed, like that. thank you. And then uh, your cuts and, you know, little bruises and things are kind of tended to. And uh, before you move on to the next event, though, you're approached by this woman. Uh, she seems to be in about mid-20s with dark hair, green eyes, and, and brown skin. And she comes up and introduces herself. Oh, well, hello. Oh, hello. I'm, I'm Narissa, and I, I can't help but to uh, be impressed by your performance out there. Ooh. I'm impressed by you. <laughs> well, here I am. And, uh, you know, I, I got to have an offer for you. Um, Oh, it, it seems to me like you guys, you're on track to win this. And well, I'll be, you know, the, the gym, it's kind of held by this, this metal piece. And it's, it's pretty important to this cause I'm working on. I assure you it's, it's very noble. And if, if you do I happen to win the next event, I'll offer you 30 gold for the, I don't really need the gym or anything. I just would be interested in the, the metal housing for it. Um, I'll give you 30 gold for it, and you can still keep the gem. I don't, I don't need that or whatever other um, winnings. I can't yeah. make any promises, but, you know. How, how, how much is Zentara being? Um, if you recall earlier, Pockmarked Poe had gave you, or had offered 60 gold to return with the gem. And he said all the uh, other stuff nope, is... sorry. Oh, he said he wants, like, the perfumes and stuff, too, but he's not... He didn't mention the... I guess to be specific here, she's asking for something that he isn't. Oh, so he wants both? the gym and a couple other things, and she's asking for like the metal housing in it. Um, just to be I clear, don't, uh, I don't want to promise anything yet, but yeah, probably. I, I don't see any issue with that. No, I mean, so you know, we can always discuss it over sure. dinner. Of course, I would love to uh, to to come see you in the the winners booth, and I'll escort you up to see. I. Uh, the the merchant prince herself it would be quite an honor um so if, it, if it's a deal uh perhaps we could shake on it 30 gold for the the metal housing and that's that oh uh, give me a hug instead <laughs> you folk uh, you, you're so merry you're always the best it's a pleasure uh, to, to meet a, 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 an elf uh, like yourself and and she kind of like reaches in and gives you like a pretty friendly hug Hmm. Mine's a little bit more than friendly. She's pulled into like a warm embrace where she, oh, uh, well, okay, well. Hmm, you smell good. Oh, you know, I've been in the jungle for a couple weeks, but uh, I guess the musk, you know, it works on some people. But uh, the rest of the party's like, what the hell? <laughs> They're like, shh, shh, let her work, let her work. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sp uh, suspicious of this this woman, so... I'm just going to keep an eye out for any funny business, any sleight of hand. Okay. Now, so she kind of, after it seems a, a almost too long moment, especially for the onlookers, she finally draws back. And she's, oh, okay. Sorry, I lost myself there. Uh, that was quite a warm embrace, but uh, excuse me. She's blushing a little. But uh, yeah, so 
I mean, that's that's it, you know. I'm Narissa, and I'll I'll come see you afterwards. Uh, she gives a little wink. She's like, "Good luck." Um, I'll hold you, you to that. It's the watch part two. All right, and uh, then you guys are ushered to the gladiatorial arena. Okay. It's right a before test combat of- starts, I'm going to do. Oh. I'm going to give Bard inspiration to Shadow, to the Archer, and to the other frontline person. All right, let me make some quick adjustments, and uh, and whoever needs to uh, can yeah. mark that. Yeah, whoever was the, the the other melee person. All righty. So you guys can, as long as you're on the. The bottom side of the arena, you can put yourself in any formation. Like you can see how they've kind of formed themselves on the other side of the map. You can do the same. Just let's leave the middle row empty. So it's kind of like you have your side, they have their side. Just for the beginning, of course. And then, so as you guys are kind of let out into the arena, you have all your gear and everything. Just um, they kind of reiterate, like, you know, no spell damage, no elemental damage is allowed, and uh, you must and, uh, uh, strike to knock out, not to kill. And so the first team who's brought down loses the match. You may use uh, whatever at your disposal, but you have been uh, instructed on the rules. And keep in mind that uh, your opponent here, his. His, uh, let's call them friends there, they've been instructed not to kill. They're trained as well. So, that being said, I'd like to introduce on one side, we have Slicer, the mighty Kenku, and his little Velociraptor Raptor Killers. And on the other side, we have the Blade Fangs. And then there's a, a big roar for both sides, of course as uh, you get ready to face off for combat. And uh, just real quick, we didn't quite cover this earlier, but who took a level off of, uh, like I see Shadow, you're probably level three now, right? Yeah. I took a level 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 two two now. Level two. So we got Deverall's level two, and then who else? Uh, I am. Yasuo, you're level two? Yep. Okay, thank you so much. I might have to make a quick adjustment based off that. Uh, yep, so you are going to bump up just slightly, which I think we all expected that. So let me see what I need to... Uh, Oh, there he is. <laughs> I like hid one of my tokens for myself, even. I'm just realizing, uh, in theory, everyone, I could obstruct the vision of everyone, but something tells me that would be not beneficial to our side as well. That would be perfect. All right, so of course. I- I personally specialize in blind sight. As do I. So maybe we want me to do that. I could cast sure. a fog cloud and it would cover basically the entire arena. Sure. Let's do that. Now give you and the other guy battens. All well. right. Now on your marks. Get ready. Yeah. Roll initiative. Crack out. The pyrotechnics wand fires off again. Okay. Oh, nice. Better. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna partly inspire the two shadow people. The two blind side people, I mean. I see only one person marked it, so I don't know if anyone else did or not. Um, yes, I, I marked that. Yeah, a uh, shadow and the two blind, blind side people. My initiative rolls were like dog doo doo, so I kind of have a a quick uh, idea of how this is about to go. (laughs) Quick murder. 
probably, a quick not murder. <laughs> probably. Okay, before I start attacking, if I hit a final blow, it's to knock out, not to kill. And so I think the only thing to point out with that is that if it's ranged, you cannot do that. Yeah. Okay, so Deverall, you're up. As I the, assume the my goes. one hit will not kill him, so I will do a ranged crossbow. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh boy. <laughs> wow, that's going to be a short um, one. I think this may kill. Oh god. Oh man. Yeah. So 18 damage, right? And I not if it would. So, <laughs> wow, this is going to yeah, be pretty short lived. <laughs> So you you stride forward, looking back at your friends, and say, or not maybe you just kind of hold your ground and you look over and you're like, I'm sure one ranged attack won't kill him, right? And you, you fire it off with deadly precision <laughs> as it fires right through his skull and uh, his beak explodes out. He only had 12 health, and so you just annihilated oh, this Kenku, and uh, he falls down in a a, a, a a crumpled heap onto the ground. Can we I block seven damage of it. Oh, oh. Do I do? oh. oh that oh. that might work. You can do that to other people. I can do it within a thirty foot radius. Okay. Using my reaction. Good God. So you, he does just hey. eleven damage. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that rabbit in my life. <laughs> okay. I was gonna go and heal him, but okay. I am done. So is it your uh is it what is it cut is it your reaction to do that, Deverell? Or not Deverell, but Zen, I'm sorry. It is my reaction to do Okay, so, yeah. oh my god. So, Deverell, you, you kind of say that all nonchalant and then shoot with, like, what is look to be aimed to kill. Everyone else is like, <gasps> and even the crowd kind of falls silent as everyone's like, whoa, like, this went crazy fast. Uh, but luckily, you have a friend in the party that can kind of save the day, and uh, he takes that last. Great. So if he has, I'm done. He's on death's door as he kind of, like, stops, and he's like, and uh, he, like, tries to imitate the roar of the crowd back at you, but it's, like, all, all half horror. Half Maybe horror. just not even bother the blind sight, just don't punch him and then knock him out. All right, Layla, your uh, your choice what to do there, but maybe not. No shoot. more rings. Oh, seeing how, please. seeing how, I'm just going to see. I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna slap him. Okay, so unarmed strike. Yes, unarmed strike. All you gotta do is hit, really, and of course you're doing non-lethal. And so you, he kind of is uh, wobbly as you just trot up there with like a, a flat hand and just try to smack him down. And uh, and he just happens to like lose his footing from his, his lack of strength and like unintentionally ducks underneath the hit. Does he fall down and hit his head and that knocks him out? <laughs> no, he's, he's still holding up. And uh, would that be anything, anything else for you? Hmm. Damn. Well, I can't use uh, two weapon fighting on that. So you knew the dagger and like non non viciously. Yeah, I mean, I I could I could bonus action my 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 dagger. Oh right? yeah, might as well pop in the head and knock. I'm him not out. sure if an unarmed strike would count as a light attack. No, I'm unfortunately no. Yeah. Oh shoot. Oh, That's a melee. So I think also oh, <laughs> not 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 light. All right, I'm gonna cast something right here. Oh, I I think my initiative didn't go in. I got a 16. Yep, I think you're right. It didn't. Okay, my bad. No, it's because I didn't have it selected, so it didn't go in. 16, so that might shake that up a bit, of course. All right, sorry about that, Squeeble, but uh, Yasua, what you got? Um, can I let Squeeble go first? Or would that mean that I'm just, like, giving up my turn? Um, uh, I would say no, because I think, you know, with what he's okay. doing could help you or whatever, and that would be kind of unfair in a way. Okay. Yeah, he's um, a You can hold an action, but then you only get one action. Yeah, no damage sure. and no spell damage. So. Yeah, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up here mm, right right here actually you see that uh that dinosaur across the way like it's bigger than the, the you know and it looks pretty vicious like it's not th nothing to be trifled with or to be ignored. and then 
fog is going to begin spilling out of my horns as I cast fog cloud. Okay. Um, I need to get uh, some, and, uh, some spell markers on here. I'll work. Okay. On the range is a 20 foot sphere. So that should cover basically the entire arena. Okay. If I put uh, it from, there. it's from you. No, it's it's within 120 feet, so I'm centering it on the, um, the the middle. It would be right here. Is that the right size? No, that would be 10 feet. It's a 20 foot radius sphere. Okay. Now is that the right size? Um, no, that's 15 foot radius. Damn, is big. Okay. Now, is that the right size? <laughs> uh, let 30. me see. Yeah, that's still 15 foot radius. Oh, I made it bigger. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, that looks like it's the right size. So where would the, uh, where would it, where would the center be? The center would be, hold on, one, two. Do you want center it to would be like right here. So just pretty much. Right on, light on me. Boom. Um, although, actually, I will... M I think it could be a little bit. Yeah, no, no, I'm happy with that. But, but yeah. Basically covering the entire arena. Yeah, that's pretty much... That's I think that's right. 20 foot from each... From the middle, right? Yeah. Pretty close. That's pretty close. Almost there. All right. Um, cool. Nice no, I meant, to, I meant to hold my action to do that, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, we can ignore it if you were holding an action to do that. I just would have held an action to do that after Squeeble's turn. Okay, so it's there, but we'll keep that in mind that it's not going to be there until after Squeeble goes, and with, if you're cool, we'll go to that. Yep. All right. So uh, I'm not on my turn. Uh, I was here to, to figure out how I was going to use Thunder Wave most efficiently because I could no longer see anything. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's no why I was, I was like, yeah. oh, I should have nice. meant to do that after. So no do match attacks, member. That's, that was some of the do you want to go with the the Maximilian's Earth and Grasp still? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And is, that's on the dinosaur to the left. But it's it spawns within five feet of it, and then I will try and grasp that guy. Yeah. Okay. I, it's I think right. So I think somebody's it. asking though, because doesn't that break the rules? What? No, it's no elemental damage, not magic damage. Oh, oh uh, awesome. no. Well, let's yeah, let's read it, because. I think it might. I don't know why it would differentiate. Maybe it's because if you might have a weapon that does like elemental damage too or something. But yeah. uh, let me just double check uh, to to be a hundred percent. It's the, the other issue is damage. Oh, well, it's yeah, it's it's not damage. listed as an elemental. It says it no elemental damage. or spell damage is allowed. So I think in well, that sense it'd oh. still be a s damage from a spell. So maybe uh, okay. You don't have to Could, do that. Would you allow me to do it without dealing any damage and just restraining? Oh, if it's Does the spell training. allow you to do that? Uh, it says the target must make a saving throw on a failed save. The target takes 2d6 bludgeoning so damage yeah, as so restrained. They, right, so they would still take the damage, I believe. I think them okay. being restrained probably is like a squeeze, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like a control thing. Okay. Or for the spell so, at that level. So what you got? It might change one it up second, a bit there for second, you. One second. <laughs> uh, see what other options I have available to me. It is weird that they split that up, but yeah, I guess it's because if you know some weapons have little extra things they can do, like elemental damage, you can't. It's a uh, you can't do non-lethal with. Gotcha. Can't control that. All right. Uh, will you allow me to give my attack to my pup? Sure. All right. You got All him. Right up. Well, use him. And if you'll allow it, he'll try and do non-lethal. Okay, it's a physical attack, so and he's he's pretty sentient, I would say. So, uh, oh wait, uh, that's gonna be a hit. Advantage. Yeah, it's gonna need its advantage because it's uh, pack tactics. Oh boy. <laughs> and it looks like it fails the strength save. Oh, so the damage is gonna be a little higher too, huh? Yeah. So he takes the eleven. He's still up, and he is uh, prone. prone. Knocked and... prone because he failed the save. All right. Uh, let's see. How much did I move? I was. Here, five. So with the command, uh, you, your friends see uh, 
Worgsley bound forward and uh, and sink his fangs deep into the the dinosaur. They seem to like tussle for a moment as they like have a bit of a wrestling match, uh, which you come out victorious and kind of leap back as the the dinosaur's on his back as well. <laughs> Not in the same way, but yeah, <laughs> he's on his back. Uh, yep, and you right. see some uh, some puncture wounds starting to bleed out and stuff too. And then as soon as you do that, you uh, you're kind of encased with this fog as Yasua uh, lets it forth. Okay, um, I am going to hop out. Okay, we should. This is uh, after oh, whoa, this. Whoa. After I this, it'll be. Uh, it'll be over after this kind of counter, pretty much. So you know, you'll you'll I be considered for yeah, everything. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank it's you. okay. All right, so this guy's prone. Uh, the guy in the middle, he was already down, right? Or is he still up? Barely. So this dude's on death's door. That was that was hilarious. Right, I will. I'll like one one good punch, and he's gonna go out. My the audience exactly probably is very right happy that the guy in the middle. That they uh, can't see. 14. So that's your bonus action. Oh, I saved. All right, man, I'm rolling nice okay. when it counts. I can, the audience. I can use that for prone anyway, so I just sort of moved him five feet away. Okay. So he, towards, he ended up saving uh, him. All right, uh, and then so we'll go to his little friend here, uh, who, you know, not much to do, uh, just kind of stumbles forward blindly until it runs into to Lala, or Layla. I'm sorry, I just read it sometimes. My bad. Uh, fuck. So with the fog, it will be what, like, is it? Uh, it's disadvantage, I believe, if you can't see. Okay. Or it's, so, uh, it's considered um, heavily, obscured. heavily obstructed. Right. Or obscured, yeah. So I know I had looked that up okay. not too long ago, but it's just disadvantage. I That's how I've done it in the past, but that might not be rules as written. Lightly yeah. is disadvantage on wisdom perception checks. Heavily is vision is blocked. Creatures are effectively blinded. Okay. Uh, yeah. Blinded is a blinded creature can't see and automatically fails on ability checks that mm. requires sight. Mm -mm. And attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Gotcha. Okay, so it stumbles through the fog and happens to come across Layla, and uh, you see this this little tiny dinosaur try to uh, lash out at you with its. Uh, looks like it makes two attacks actually. So first it tries to to bite you, and looks like a twelve is probably not going to hit. Uh, no. As it tries to follow up oh, with a, yeah. a little claw action, still it this Whoa, that one came out. Uh, oh, one... about that. Hold up, so, hold on, guy. What's up? So, because we are all blinded, that yep. means that would give advantage. But because they are blinded, they have disadvantage. So it's just a straight roll. So yep. this four yep. cloud doesn't do anything. Yep. Yeah. It. In theory, won't affect much. Oh, it much, cancels any. Those. Okay, I see it. it. However, if you can see your attacker, they don't have advantage on you, so they will have disadvantage. So the both yeah. of you that can see in the in the fog, they do not get advantage against you. So if I'm hearing this correctly, I should roll with disadvantage right now to attack, or should it should just be a straight roll? Who are you attacking? Layla. <laughs> Layla, do you have? Can you see in the fog? No, no. No, I do not have blind sight. I have dark vision. That's the closest thing oh, I can get. Actually, okay, uh, so a straight roll. Yeah, and it would have been a straight roll anyway. It's my bad. Uh, but okay, yeah, it looks like both of those are actually going to hit then. Um, so let's see. Okay. So four piercing from the first one and. Sorry to complicate things. <laughs> no, oh, you're right. No, it's all good. Hey, that makes it more fun. <laughs> so four and then uh, five. So nine total to Layla. As this little thing kind of scrabbles up, and you can see it's kind of getting uh, a little bit of like help from being close to his friend. Uh, feels more confident as he tries to scrabble at you, and we'll go to Shadow. All right, with this new knowledge of questionable game mechanics. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Shadow will yeah, make his way. Over here, and uh, I mean, yeah, he will try to put the Kenko out of his misery with a non lethal chain blade hit. Why not? 
And that's a... I'm gonna use my Bardic Inspiration, I guess. Those were D6 FC up, if I remember correctly. And that turns into a 13 to hit. Against the Kenko. Will it Yep, that's will enough. It and uh, and with the damage there, you uh, you kind of like, it's hard to see, but you, know, you feel the crunch of the beak, uh, but and you just hear like a... As he, uh, he kind of crumples to the ground, but you still hear the occasional like... Little little mutter, I guess, as he's yeah, uh, definitely alive. Yeah, just the blunt side, yeah. And now against the the Velociraptor or whatever is right next to me. And he's prone. I, but I'm but blinded, yeah, I know, so but yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. What's what's that? That's uh, so he what kind of is like thing? rolling around on the floor, and right where he was one second, he's like off a little deeper in the fog, and uh, you you end up missing on that one. All right. I sure do laugh. When my teammates cast Fog Cloud. That is the end of my turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zen. Uh, you're actually just on the edge of the cloud there, so what are you going to do? All right, Zen, walk forward, and he will then see with his blind sight this creature here. Okay. And he will attempt to strike at it with advantage, I believe. Yes. Yep. 24. Oh, yeah. That'll hit. I will make it a psionic strike. For 21. So, well, a lot of that, unfortunately, be for not as, uh, as you totally kill this thing. I said I would knock it out. Yeah, it said non-lethal. But then the, si the force damage on top of that... Mm. So any melee attack can be non-lethal. The force damage, though? Any melee attack in the 5th edition of the game. I'm curious. Would you like me to uh, post the requisite section? Sure. I mean, it's, oh, it goes into this weird territory of, like, if you hit non-lethal with a flame tongue, could the flame still potentially finish them off? You can knock out with a uh, shocking grab. That is from the page one ninety eight. So it's only for it to be a melee handbook. attack. I believe that is rules as intended. That is rules so as could be... literally on page one ninety eight of the player's handbook. So, and then what is your psionic strike considered? Just an ability. It's a class ability. Okay, so I think that by everything there, that should be legal to do so everything's good so yeah, he will be that's knocked that doesn't out. rule out uh, extra damage types okay so yeah, I think it, it, it's not spell damage it's just an extra damage there may be right, other ways right? somewhere else to deal with it but according to that yeah, it's yeah like, it doesn't uh, uh, I don't think for uh, I mean I don't think force would be considered elemental it's not so all right. all right, I will continue moving, having heard this one do something. Remembering where it was, I move forward, I can then see it. I will action surge and strike at that one. Does a 20 hit? It will definitely hit this little bugger. Oh, I did not roll damage. 10 points. Okay, so he's still alive, uh, but you kind of have to swing low, uh, and you feel the, the crunch of these little tiny bones of this creature. Um, it doesn't even know that it's alone yet, really. End of turn. And now it's its turn, I guess. Uh, this poor hapless soul, and yeah, it'll just kind of pick itself up from where it's like crunched against the ground by like the flat of your blade, maybe, and, uh, and try to launch some attacks blindly towards you. Uh, the one that's dead? What? Or once already down. Wow! Oh, why is that so small around there? My bad. I think so this I... one is dead. Yeah, the big one is small, small, and the little one's big. Something's wrong with that. That's My bad. Right. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> That's funny how that is like that. Um, so Deverall had to go, unfortunately. So Layla, you're up. Mm. It would have missed that attack, anyways. Yeah. Um. 
I am going to non-lethal attack with a short sword on the little guy. I take it that hits. <laughs> yep. Poor little dinosaur. Non-lethal as mentioned, and that... Oh my goodness. Good God! That's more than enough. It only had two left, so yeah, it's just a little dink with the maybe the, the butt of your, your blade there, and it uh, kind of just sinks down. Yeah, hit it flat. And no now, edge. Just, just flat. Now it's flat against the, <laughs> the ground, but it's still barely breathing as uh, the combat kind of ends, and... Uh, I'll dissipate the fog cloud with us victorious so the okay. audience can finally see. So they uh, they kept a keen eye to make sure the, the rules were being followed. Uh, but as the, the fog drops and they, they look around and they see that there's no signs of any elemental or spell damage or no one's dead or anything like that, they kind of stride forward and the crowd goes from like a hush to like a... <sighs> as they realize how astounding this victory was and... Uh, kind of same as before you you're kind of ushered off of, of the arena here uh, to the roars of the crowd um, as you realize your your fame in this place just went up a bunch and uh, same as before you're led to like a little underground room there where they kind of patch up your wounds and things and you can take a short rest um, as it were and Narissa kind of appears and she's uh, she seems very proud of you guys. And she, oh my goodness, I, I know you had it in you. Uh, here you go, I'll go ahead and give you this now. And she, she hands off the 30 gold. Well, um, I, I see you're being tended to, but when you're ready, uh, Quianath is waiting for us. I, uh, you guys are going to have quite a ceremony. Okay. Sounds so, like we will. Go on. Did you say something? I just said, sounds like it sounds like we will. Okay. And sorry, there's just a couple of options here in case you want or lost. But after she kind of uh, greets you guys warmly, she uh, she takes you guys up through some upper chambers into the Coliseum, and you come out into a balcony that stands over. Um, you feel the the roar of the crowd and the the oppressive heat of the place kind of dawn on you um, as a beautiful Cholten woman comes up and she says, I am Quayothe. She's uh, accompanied by three male and three female servants and she congratulates the party. You did wonderful. Newcomers to Port Nainzaru and to Cholts. We will begin to sing your praises here and hope that you grace us with another victory soon. And uh, she makes a big old presentation of holding it out to the crowd and then offers you guy the, uh, the oracle's eye. She says, this was a gift from one of my many suitors, but I have no need for it. And I'll admit, it makes me feel a bit uneasy when I look at it. So ho hopefully it'll be better in your possession. Um, she hands off the, the bright orange gem. It sits in a crevice of curled silvery metal. And uh, those, you know, you kind of get the feeling that the, that metal it looks like it would kind of match up with the broken piece of the snake head that you had found in the uh, the previous mission um, just as you see that it kind of seems like pretty pretty obvious um, and you know the ceremony kind of continues for a moment some other competitors are awarded uh, trophies and things and gold's kind of given out and so on and so forth you guys are given the, the 60 gold as well as the perfumes and poultices and things that, that Poe wanted and as uh, the event kind of wraps up, Narissa bades you over. She says, um, well, I, I wish you luck on your, your further ventures here, and I'm sure we'll, we'll cross paths again. Um, I, I gave you the gold as promised, and, well, do you, are you going to hold up your end of the deal? May I have that uh, little bit of metal there? So wait, to be clear, the metal is, is the uh, piece of the artifact is what it looks like? Uh, you guys seem to be able to identify it as so. Uh, but just kind of to reiterate from earlier, you know, you were only requested for the, the Jim's eye, but you could surely uh, talk to her if you want. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, because I don't, 
necessarily trust her with the artifact, I'm, I'm going to say. Um, I'm afraid we're, we're going to have to keep this, but I'm happy to refund you the, the 30 gold. This is part of a dangerously powerful artifact from what we've heard. Well, go ahead and make a persuasion check. Okay. And just since you're the one initiating, uh, go ahead and take the honor. No bonuses! Oh boy! <laughs> I never used my bardic inspiration though, could I use that here? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. We're still on the same adventure. Okay. Don't even uh, need it. Don't even need it. So oh, she's, yeah. she kind of, uh, she says, okay, look, um, I'm assuming y'all are on a job for someone and I think that we may be working for the same people. I'm on a quest to aid an ally of mine. Uh, he is a harper agent that goes by the name of Ren. Um, this metal piece, it actually is part of a, an amulet that they're looking into. I, I, I don't know much more about it other than they call it the Dreamer's Amulet and some, some nefarious folk are, are trying to smuggle it into the city for, I can only seem, or I can only assume some, some evil deeds. Well, uh, I think we we plan to to bring all of the pieces. Uh, uh, we we plan. Well, mm -hmm. let me think about this a little more. Actually, we happen to have another piece here, and I'll I'll pull oh, out the other piece. Good work. You guys are one step ahead of me on this. Now look, if you'll allow uh, me, I'll, I'll take this on to the Harper agent myself. Um, it seems like there are a few more pieces to this that need to be collected, though. Um, it's up to you, of course, and you can make an insight check if you want. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I just I, I, if this is like a dangerous artifact, I don't want to just hand it over to someone. Uh, okay, insight. Ooh. <laughs> That's not looking good. I'll use my, my bardic inspiration on this. Okay, so that it would be 11. So you, you can confirm that, um, that she seems to be pretty earnest. Uh, you can't like 100% validate it, but it's like on the cusp there where you're pretty sure that she's trustworthy. And, and also in addition, she seems very, uh, very strong. Like she's... Uh, just upon appearance, um, she seems like maybe she has a, a bit of more of a past than what she's saying, but it, it seems to have like the the gait and you know strength of, of a monk of some type. Um, and so she says, "It's it's up to you in the end." But I feel like uh, you know we found an ally in each other at least, and um, one way or another, it's going to get back to the same people. Um, if if you would allow me to help you, I, I surely will. Um, or again, I'm sure I'll. We'll probably cross paths again later. Um, Very well. And I'll, I'll hand over both pieces. Um, and so she nods, and of course she, she gave you guys the gold, and she didn't want any of the other rewards. And uh, and uh, I guess just to wrap this one up, she, she kind of thanks you guys again, and she says, uh, you're going to make quite the name for yourselves here in Port Nyanzari with these, with these sorts of actions. Um, I'll be seeing you soon. And she kind of has a, yeah. a little bow. We plan to... We plan to visit the Harpers soon, soon enough, so hopefully we'll see you then. Um, and yeah, I guess that'll kind of segue. She says, well, uh, perhaps I could help you too. Um, I know some of the, the other factions were still in needing of some help. Um, there's a Tabaxi that represents the Emerald Enclave, uh, and she kind of gives you the location for that. And then um, and then what was the last one? I think it was not, it was the Iron, Iron Gauntlet. Yeah, Iron Gauntlet. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Just to be as more s specific, yeah, she tells you that. Uh, in, uh, I think that's a box. He goes by the name of uh, Screaming Wind, and he should be up in Malar's throat. Uh, that's that pretty poor place next to the ravine. Uh, as far as the the Order of the Gauntlet, I, I haven't met that fellow, but I've heard that he he lives in the Market Ward. I'm sure it'd be pretty easy to locate. Um, good luck, you guys. And then she kind of departs off. <laughs> Uh, so as Very far as well. re rewards yeah. for this one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and include Matt in this one too because he was there for pretty much the whole thing. So uh, he'll get his cut. And then I think we actually have another player that's going to jump in now. So let me see if I can 
get them on board in between, and we'll give another little five minute uh, break. I'll try to get them on then. But as far as the the rewards, you got the optional level, you got the ten downtime. Let's see about the golds. Um, so this time it would have been a hundred ten divided by six. If anybody wants to do that for me, real quick. 110 divided by 6. That is 18.333. So, approximately oh, 18 gold each. You said 18? Yeah, 18 and then 0.3 repeating. Alright, and then when you guys return to Poe, uh, he kind of waves his, his harem off and he says, oh, the, the word of uh, your deeds has re reached me before you did even that. I'm most pleased. He kind of has some of the girls gather up the perfumes and things, and he's like, oh, I will put good use to these for sure. Uh, the gold is yours to keep, and uh, I'll take a look at this gym here. Uh, you know, I must admit that I'm in cahoots with some other people here. You, you've probably guessed it, but I'll make sure this gets sent on to our, our Harper lead. Um, you may even deliver it for me myself, but uh, I'd like to take a little closer look at this gym first. Um, give me about an hour or so, and you can always deliver it to him uh, later, if you don't mind. And Thank you very much for your work today. Uh, let's maybe keep that last bit between us. And he slides you a, a potion of healing. Very well. And so that's another potion of healing. There's two now for this adventure so far. So you got the level, the downtime, the gold, the pot of healing. And what would it be without another story award? Uh, this one's a little less exciting, I suppose. But I will, uh, I'll post it. Uh, I'll post the whole, the full thing later. But it's called Thrill of Victory. Ah, uh, it's a, it's a title. Hell yeah, it is. Because uh, by claiming victory in the dinosaur race and in the gladiators arena, you gain a bit of fame from the citizens within the walls. Once per day, you may gain advantage on a single persuasion check when dealing with any residents within the market, merchant, or harbor wards. So, oh. and I'll, I'll get that posted out for you guys specifically in the sessions log uh, later, so you see that. And uh, and yeah, so that's numero two. We. Uh, I guess y'all can kind of start thinking of which one to go to next, maybe discuss it, and then... Let's see All right, I was trying to do my best to pay attention. We got 18 gold, we got Potion of Healing, and the Story Award. Was there anything else? Nope, that's it for now. Okay. And then uh, you have the 10 downtime, of course, and then optional level. Um, we'll come back in about five minutes. I'll see y'all then. All right, see ya. Hey everyone. 
Oh, we're just taking a break. We'll be back in a minute or two. Hey, sorry, uh, Andrew, we were a little break there, but uh, did you import? Yes, I did. I'm all set. I can move it and everything. What's your character's name? Flint Blackwood. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got you set up earlier. My bad. Sorry. We did the hard work earlier. All right. <laughs> yeah, I did the import. It should be pretty smooth. Nice. Okay, thank you so much for that. And... Just to get a little more info from you real quick. Which I think we did kind of skip someone on an intro earlier too. So if we want to do uh, a couple of character intros, we can. Or we can move in. I'm trying to think who, who it was. I know we had someone come in like 10 minutes late maybe or something. And they, it was Zen. Zen? Okay. So, uh, Flint, what level are you? Two. And what's your race and class? Uh, goblin, Blade Singer, Wizard. Alrighty. Cool. Okay, so I guess, uh, let me see if everyone's already there putting those X's. I know uh, we've got three of four. I think we're just missing one then, eh? That squeeble. Oh, yeah, I'm putting the other token real quick. I'm here, I'm listening. I'm just. Oh, no, you're good. I'm just making sure everybody's ready. Uh, okay. Okay. I bought a Deinonychus, and I'm going to get the other token for that. Oh, sick. Cool. All right, so uh, let's see. Who took a level? Shadow, you at level four? Yep. All right. I'm, I'm at three now. So we got Shadow at four. Then you said uh, Yasuo, you're at three? Yep. And how about you, Zen? Did you stay at three or are you at four? Zen staying at three. I might level the four after this one. Okay, great. So let me... Oh. All right. All 
So I think we may be at the full strength party now. Okay, so we are definitely a very strong party now. It looks like everybody's all ready to go. Uh, do you need me to set a token up for you, uh, Squeeble? Oh, uh, yeah, for the Dynamicus. Right. I suppose you can change Squeebles to that if you want. Nice. You probably will have to figure something out if I get dismounted. Where are you getting these images? Uh, so the image of the creature that my main character is, I found that, like, I'm finding most of these online. That picture of that Deinonychus, that's actually the Deinonychus from Ark Survival Evolved. I just throw them into Photoshop, but I do some masking and uh, nice. erasing and stuff to kind of meld them together, massage them together. Yeah, really good. It's not honestly. perfect, but it, it, yeah. Yeah, it looks really good. Okay, so... Uh, I'm just gonna throw the token on the board and, and assign it to you, so just to be a little quick. Okay. okay, you should have control over it. All right. Alrighty, so we'll jump into the next one. You guys can uh, kind of follow up the leads on either uh, the. Iron Gauntlet. I hope that's the name of it because that's what I will keep wanting to call it. My bad. I don't. I, I order think of it, the Gauntlet. Oh, just the Order of the Gauntlet. Yeah. 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 So you got the Order of the Gauntlet and the Emerald Enclave. Well, uh, that lady sent us uh, in the direction of the Emerald Enclave a little stronger. So why don't we go there? Then we go to the Order of the Gauntlet, and then we head to the Harpers. That sound good to everyone? Either, either way to me, I don't care. I'll just follow the crowd. Yeah, it goes whatever the party wants to do. Okay. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, off to the uh, Emerald Enclave. All right, that's a pretty great segue, actually, because you were last kind of hanging out with Poe and uh, dealing with some of that stuff. And let me get to the right spot. This one kind of has me jumping around, of course. Okay, so let me see. Oh, okay, no, my bad. I confused the detail, but uh, same thing in the end. So you're actually not uh, you're not in Poe's area off the bat. He kind of gives you a, a warm goodbye, and uh, and you know you see all these women around him and stuff. You're like, what the heck's up with this guy? He's all disfigured and things. And money talks, I guess. But you uh, you kind of follow the instructions from Nerissa earlier, and you go to the, uh, the place known as Malar's Throat. You reach the furthest outskirts beyond the city walls, and the terrain rises again along the ridge, leading to Malar's Throat. Uh, just to remind you, you're in the sweltering humidity of a, a jungle land. Great, huge ferns rise up around you. The foliage uh, definitely tends to blend in with the city, um, as well as the, the wildlife, and it's uh, just interesting and amazing to see how they've adapted to these creatures and, and trained them or sometimes coerced them to get them to do, uh, as you'll see, kind of uh, all the way from your friend Squeeble riding a new friend, to, um, all the way to giant great T-Rexes and other things that are not so much tamed as they are just used in one way, you know. It's a, it's a precarious balance at times, but they make it work uh, as you see this chaos around you. Uh, but there's also a pretty heavy rain that'll fall off and on pretty consistently and sometimes never-endingly. And uh, it begins to fall pretty hard um, as you realize the storm's coming, you know, and it's not going to recede, really. Uh, you continue along the wet path and try to keep pu pushing through, you know, the curtain of heavy raindrops. Millar's throat reveals itself to you. It's quite astonishing and an, a little bit unsettling as you see a massive ravine. It runs along the entire area. 
and the edge of it are lined with rows of small houses just made of wood and patched stonework all of them seem pretty shoddy and there's these very narrow rope bridges extending to uh, the other side of the ravine with similar homes on the opposite side of the ridge several buildings even cling to the side of the steep wall uh, and you can kind of see how one end like roughly ramps down to the bottom of the ravine but as you kind of soak this all in a cry for help nearby forces you to focus to one of the bridges hanging across the ravine you see a distant figure fighting with two winged humanoids what would you do the rescue of course you run to rescue him and uh or her you don't know and you actually dart forward to get close enough to see uh what could only be screaming wind a young tabaxi woman she's this black spotted yellow fur and uh She's facing off against two Terra folk, which are kind of these humanoid dinosaur mutation monsters. And uh, by the time you guys draw your weapons and begin to try to help her, she's already reached up and slashed one down as it falls to its death in the ravine below. The other one scrambles to uh, fly down and perhaps save or uh, flee away uh, and sails down into the ravine as well. as soon as you move close enough, Screaming Wind actually stops and, and waves to you and walks up and, sa- and points to herself and says, Screaming Wind, you must be visitors. You here to help or to sightsee? Uh, to help, hopefully. Uh, uh, that's what they all say, and I wonder. Less talk, more hunting. You've come to help the Emerald Enclave, I assume. She's kind of looking you up one after another, you know, assessing uh, your strengths and weaknesses and how your adventures. Uh, yes. I, I almost joined, in fact, back in uh, Waterdeep, but... Uh, we are a fine band, and I'm sure they'd still be willing to have you uh, if you change your mind, but... Of course. There has been encounters here on Millar's throat. You see the ridge line. She points off kind of at the other side of, you know, civilization there, as it were. And uh, the jungle gets much, much thicker. And um, she indicates the encroaching foliage. And she's, there's been many, many threats coming from the jungle. And the foliage itself has been overgrown with disease and blights. It's expanding quickly, overtaking even some homes at the far end there. And I must say, there could be some undead about. Strangely, they have been seen making their way into the region here. The Citizens' Brigade is our only defense this far from the city, as it were. And we're having a little bit of trouble keeping the residents here safe. We sent a rescue party into the, the blighted area there, and no one has returned. Would you be brave enough no, to go? No, way home, baby. Sorry, come again? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Uh, don't pay attention, I was talking to my daughter, sorry. Oh, okay, no worries. I, I understand that life. She, uh, she says, well, that's pretty much all I could say. Um, we need someone to go in and, and see where what happened to our, our other uh, Emerald Enclave members, and perhaps... Uh, we have an idea that this may be con- concerned with the death curse. Uh, we re- we're willing to offer 50 gold for anyone who can travel in and, and see, at least bring back info, if not our, our comrades. Of course. Uh, yeah, that seems fair. Okay. I respect your prowess for accepting this. I must warn you, it can be dangerous in there. And she begins to lead you past uh, a couple abandoned shacks that are overrun by dark vines and thorny brush. Uh, The area beyond sprawls, collection of massive trees, foliage beneath a thick canopy. It shuts out pretty much what's left of the daylight there as you guys are making your way through the day. And... The rain just keeps seeping through the the canopy above, though, and and blankets you. You're all drenched uh, as you move forward. Screaming wind kind of leads you to the edge, and she says, Well, I'll stay back here and and defend if any more of those Terra folk decide to to 
fly through. Uh, they're a bit of a nuisance, but they've really only made off with our people a time or two. Of course. Well, we'll be off then. All right, and this this traveling is is not too great. Um, as you go through, it's only more hot and humid with the, the heavy pounding rain, um, and it just makes you so thirsty. And if you're wearing pretty much anything other than light, then you're pretty uncomfortable. We'll just say that. Uh, the ground's pretty damp and covered in brush and twigs, and you keep heading in the direction indicated, but it, it can be hard to go in a straight line. Sometimes you have to stop and twist and go around some obstacles. Speaking of, as you're making your way through the bush, you all of a sudden are accosted by a swarm of deadly diseased insects. And I'll need each one of you to make me a dexterity save. Uh, your companions and familiars too, or? Yeah, I guess if, uh, who, I mean, in your case, you could probably do not your your owl. Yeah, yeah, does, do familiars need to do it? I mean, my, it's a, mine's a poisonous snake. It's pretty much on my body unless yeah, we're in combat. Yeah, uh, if he's kind of, like, tucked away, then no. But, yeah. Oof. Okay, so DC for this one was 13. So if you failed... Um, unless you're somehow immune to disease, which can happen with certain things, for the next hour, you will be affected uh, by dizziness and blurry vision. It gives you disadvantage on all perception and investigation checks. So just keep that in mind. That'll be oh. for uh, for Zen and Squeeble and Yasua. And the Deinonychus. And also the Deinonychus. Can't forget him. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you kind of uh, shrug off these in insects and smack them as you can. And you're like, ugh. Like, you realize not only are they just pests, but they've also been diseased a, a little bit with something from the area. And, uh, you know, some of you kind of have to sh shake the dizziness out of your head or clear the, your vision. You I kind believe of... I have something for this, but I'm not sure. Let me look at my inventory. I'll, I'll let you know later if I find it. Okay, for sure. Yeah, just let us know. And uh, you keep pushing through the uh, the dim light. If you if you don't have dark vision and you're just walking along, you can really only see for about ten feet, uh, as you know the rain's pretty uh, pretty enveloping. And you, as you get closer and closer to the area that screaming wind had indicated, the blighted area it start the smell of it starts to reach you. It's musty and stinks of rotten fruits and plants and things. And uh, you start to see some of these plants pop up. Uh, it looks like kind of in the brush here and there and you, you're you trying to do your best to pick through it and, and avoid it and uh, just everyone go ahead and give me a perception check and keep in mind those uh, those three who just failed the deck save it's going to be a disadvantage yeah I'm going to see if I can find my thing before I make it and, cool. and as far as the water I have a decanter of endless water so if that becomes an issue I think we're okay yeah, is this to see something okay. or hear something? Definitely more comfortable. Is, is it? Is this to hear something? This is to see something. It's not to hear something. Okay. Nope. I uh, I'm not. I don't have uh, Wargsley with me anymore since I'm riding the Deinonychus. I've swapped in the Herringon Spirit Club. That's what I was asking. Okay. Wow. All right. Deinonychus did a little bit better. I'm not finding it, but so it is a uh, perception check. Yep, and so the Squeeble and, and Yasua and Zen should have been rolling with uh, with disadvantage. disadvantage. Yep. Yeah. And Dynon, and I, I rolled both times. Oh, with and disadvantage. Yep. All right. So for this one, the DC was thirteen. I got. 15. Didn't even come close. So <laughs> Layla. Zen, looks like uh, Squeeble himself, and uh, yeah, that's it, right? So three for three, we're doing okay. <laughs> so, all right, Zen, Layla, and uh, and Squeeble. Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and make me a con save. Can I use my inspiration on and try that? Save again. Before I roll the con. 
Fuck my life. Sorry, my baby's getting into something. What was the question? Can I use my inspiration and try my perception save again? Sure. Yeah, you can. I hadn't really been it's keeping up with the inspiration that so much, honestly. Who, so who still has it right now? And the, the people that came in new, you can take DM inspiration. Oh, hey. I know we've used like three of them at least that I've heard. I've used mine. That was Yasuo, right? I had asked about mine during the race and we decided I wasn't going to use it then. I remember that. So Yasuo has used his? That was him, right? That said that? Yeah, yeah, it was. And then who else has? I know there was at least, like, there's someone used one earlier too, I think, right? No one's speaking up? Oh, you are shady. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe it was, uh, might, maybe it was the home left, that. honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was just joking, but, uh, okay, so you're going to use yours. That was Zen. Or who's going to use uh, use one right now? Uh, Squeeble used one and he succeeded. Okay, okay, cool. Just I'm, I was just marking it down now, so I have it. But yeah, so the the two new people consider yourself uh, with some with some DM advantage there too. Thank you. But for the con save, let's see. We had the three. So Layla, unfortunately, yours is uh, you're gonna get a little thorned up, and looks like uh, Zen, you'll be okay. And didn't we have one more? Oh, Squeeble, you had used it for the perception. Okay. All right. Um, so for... Looks like just Layla, you get a little nicked by uh, this... What turns out to be uh, Okaligbo weed. Whatever. If that, if that means anything. Okaligbo. It's one of the native plants here. It's a weed. You could probably smoke it. I don't know. And the only reason I say that is because uh, you will suffer... Six poison damage. Fortunately, that's max. Uh, and you are poisoned for ten minutes, which pretty much just matters for the next encounter. So just keep in mind that you'll be poisoned for that. And uh, it, it's because you're suffering mild hallucinations. Any saving throws are made with disadvantage as well. It lasts for ten minutes. Um, so there you have it. Uh, you're well, the I have antitoxin, but I don't know if that'll necessarily help. I think that would remove the poison condition, yeah, right? Antitoxin? Yeah. Let me look at the details yeah, for that. Yeah, definitely let me know. Uh, antitoxin. Um, Can't get rid of the hallucinations. Advantage on, advantage on saving throws for an hour. That's what it does? It doesn't get rid of it. That's what it says. It gives you advantage on saving throws for an hour? Yeah, it's, I guess. It's really not antitoxin. It's more preventitoxin. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I've gotten one of those or two. I think in there adventure. might be something else that I have that that does get rid of it. I got, I took like a bunch of all the natural stuff. Well, that could potentially still negate her, the uh, the saving throws made with disadvantage if she she did want to drink it. I guess she would still have to do the what is it? Poison gives you disadvantage on attacks too, right? Uh, yeah, attacks and ability checks. Usually, I have my little board out, but I I've, it's still my my box behind me. I was like, oops. But, uh, okay, so however y'all decide well, that, if you want to let her drink that or not, it's up to you. Could help yeah, it's, with... up to, it's up to Layla. It's pretty cheap. Mm, I mean, I'll, I'll drink it. Alright, All right, so... It's, What's the worst that could happen? You start hallucinating, Ooh, and man... Butterflies. This stuff tastes good. You're like, man, most people will kind of cringe when they drink that, but you, like, chug it down, you're like, you have any more? But yeah, so you won't take disadvantage on the saving throws, but you your attacks uh you still would um and you guys have made it through uh to the blighted path and you come across a worn path through the bu brush uh, marked by a rotted corpse of a terra folk and you see two figures trapped in the brambles nearby kind of uh and like attached to a little rock i'll go ahead and move you over uh oops this is the one Sorry. And so, uh, let me just copy and paste, y'all. Then be the easiest way. Mm -hmm. And once again, of course, um, before we actually initiate anything, you can feel free to set yourselves up however you need to. Oh, how did I not notice that I had this? 
I have insect insect repellent salve. <laughs> Dang, that's rather specific. <laughs> 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 You're like, dang, the one chance I could have used that. Yeah. Well, because I just took a bunch of this stuff because it's all like che- this cheap stuff that's in the store. That's all like sort of natural stuff, and I'm a ranger. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, one application protects the wearer against normal insects for 24 hours. That's hilarious because that would have perfectly worked. Um, well, you could have just dodged. <laughs> so. As you come across this, uh, you see an elven woman, and she's kind of stirring lightly, but the the other person there is a tabaxi man, by the look of him, and uh, and he's kind of unconscious at the moment. Uh, you guys are definitely uh, able to approach however you see fit, but as the woman kind of sees you guys a little bit, she just moans like, help me! Can, uh, can anyone actually uh, help her out? Um, you see that now she's just kind of like my best. attached to the rock there with the, the tabaxi. Sorry, I was pulled away. What's What are we looking at? Who's this? What's going on? Uh, you come. It's just kind of a, along the beaten path. You see uh, the corpse of what's more of like a... It actually would be one of those terra folk over here. Um but then off, it's kind of they're kind of chained to the rock here. You see a tabaxi man who's unconscious, and then an elf woman who's chained here. And as you guys would kind of approach, she'd uh, like be like, "Help! Help!" Does it look like the tabaxi man was like attacking her? No, they they would look like they'd be like kind of in the same situation together. She, he's same chained situation. up as well. Right. As you guys get closer, she's like, "Help! I'm I'm from Malar's throat. He came to to help me, but..." The Terra Folk are going to use us for an offering. And then uh, she has just long enough to scream before she's dragged backwards into the brambles here that are starting to overgrow. I mean, use your imagination a bit for the map. As uh, she's like That's sucked into the vines thing. and you can't see her anymore. And you just sit, she's like, ah! Well, I guess I won't target her with a ability. <laughs> so she still seems to be there. You just can't see her right now. You see like a writhing in the bush, kind of. All, All right. right. Well, I guess we'll r- roll initiative and go and attack whatever's attacking her. So do you? Does someone want to like go so, up? Uh, go up are to they, her? Are they chained to the rocks? She was. Like, a, it seemed as if they were chained in some way to the rocks, and then she just got like dragged backwards into these brambles, and she's like, you know, you kind of hear the, and so she like scrambles and stuff. Uh, if one of you wants to move close enough, it's not going to trigger like uh, like a trap necessarily or anything. It just would be... Yeah. So like if we move up there, we'll be able like follow the chains back into the bushes. Right. So Squeeble, you kind of jump toward the, the, the bush there and you're able to like see a hand and you like drag it out and this woman just comes out completely dead. Like she's gone. Um, whatever kind of dragged her in there. You can see these this bush here is blighted. And then of course, uh, yeah, y'all were guessing. <laughs> <That's better dying. laughs> yeah, I just was... I really wanted y'all to... To get close enough so she would die. It's part of the story. But, uh, yeah, of course, that's uh, is going to be an initiative call. Um, All right, so if I want to ride my Dine on and actually do stuff with it in combat, you want it to have its own initiative? Uh, that's how it's written. It, it it could, gets... Yeah, it could follow. If it's written as that, I mean, I know sometimes it says, like, follows yeah. on your turn, and then sometimes it says others. But Well, it's just a, it's just a general mount, and if I want to attack... Then it has to be an uncontrolled mount, and in order for it to do that, it'll have its own initiative as per the rules. But it gets messy, or it's, it's more work for us to track it. I'm fine doing it whichever way you'd like to do it. I just wanted to check out of time. Uh, I guess since it's part of your token, it probably would. I mean, I can add your add it in there too as just the name. I mean, it doesn't matter. What, what, what do you want to do? I'll add. I can add it in. I prefer to have control over it and have it act on my turn, but that's more mechanically advantageous to me. It'll make me more powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the huge difference between controlled yeah. and uncontrolled. It's it's a huge power spike if it goes on your turn and can attack. Yeah. So it's up to you as the DM. Like rules is written, it has its own initiative, and I have to try and manage them on separate initiatives. So you don't really need a token yet, but you might. If I, if I get knocked off, yeah. I updated the to, the image in my character sheet to the image of uh, Squeeble riding the Dynon, but when I pull it out, it doesn't. Uh, it still shows the warg. Okay. 
Yeah, we can always uh, yeah. hash out some of that. I don't stuff know if I can off. roll initiative on this thing and have it be me. Uh, yeah. yeah, you could you could just roll again too, and I can add it on there. However, we need to do. But yeah, so you see these uh, these blights kind of pop up around you. Uh, some of them are a little more spiky. Some of them are a little more uh, twiggy, I guess. You know, Typ- typical blight behavior. Hmm. All right, so the initiative for the Dynon was 11.15, if we're splitting them up. Okay. The thing when I was running around Wargs is Wargs really wasn't doing anything other than being a mount for me, so it was being a controlled mount, but with this one I actually want to attack and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, if, I kind of can see it uh, going either way in some ways, like... Uh, like I, I know in some ways it works where like you could do on your bonus action to give a command, you know, and then that could be the way, like you'd have to sacrifice your bonus command. I think that's command. the way Beastmaster works that way, and I know Warlock works that way. The uh, uh, Pact of the Chain? The one that has the higher powered familiars works that way, where you give up your bonus action in order for them to do something. And I'd be happy to do that if that's the way you want to rule it for this. No, no, we're good. I, I mean, I know they wrote, okay. they're, it's written differently. I was just throwing that out there as I'm going to the... Uh, to the right spot. This thing had me jumping all over the place. Uh, most importantly, I'm trying to see if I need to <laughs> throw anything else out at you guys, because most likely you'll mow through this in a second. Do we want me to cloud up the area? No. <laughs> oh, you weren't you were here <laughs> last <hilarious>. time. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess if I took the moment to use my familiar senses, that'd be fine, because he's got blind sight 10 feet. Yeah. I, I have blind sight, and so does Zen. I'm a loose ending, so you're liable to catch an arrow. That oh, it, sorry yeah. about the delay there, y'all. But let me, uh, don't want it to be too easy for y'all. Would, I don't know if this would help. I have Thecky Root. But no, it just gives you advantage on the save. Like, none of the, these things get rid of the effect. They just are proactive. None of them are really reactive. All right. Oh, and can I get my owl? I realize it's not out. I didn't have it all last adventure either. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we need to get him on the, on the one earlier so he gets copied, but no problem. Let me throw him out there as uh, Layla. It's your turn if you want to go ahead. Maybe some slight hallucinations. Not sure if you're, all these uh, trees are talking to you or if these are blights or what's actually happening. Um. Well, let's see here. I'm going to... Saying I, I don't have advantage, I just... And I... Because I normally would have advantage, so on hit. But seeing how I don't have, so does that just balance out? Seeing if I, I have advantage on hit, but now yeah, I don't have. Yeah, it's a straight roll. It's just a straight roll. Yep. All right. Going for uh, um that one. I assume yeah, it's so, a bad guy. Gotcha. <laughs> I could recommend a suggestion and don't take it, but uh, since this guy is adjacent to your ally, you'd be able to still get sneak attack if that's what you're going for. And um, I also have bonus action disengage, so don't worry about getting out of there after. Oh, that's a bad guy? Yep. Maybe I should zoom in. I just... I. I, I usually don't try to tell people what to do on their turn. I just was you. Were, you sounded like you were trying to figure out a way to get sneak. So I was just trying to point out something. All right, I'm gonna move here so I can get good line of sight. And, and then, then sh- fifteen to hit. That'll hit it. Okay. Kind of looks like bark peeled off the tree and started uh, talking at you and trying to maybe stab you a little bit. Could be the hallucinations, though. Uh, and with that amount of damage, 10 total, uh, looks like that'll be a, a one-hit quitter, if you wanted to describe right. that. Um, 
as I'm sitting there, standing there hallucinating that this thing is a grotesque goblin, and I fire my arrow and smack it as it flies across and just crumbles to nothing. And that it does. It's a good thing you're hallucinating and missed the actual goblin. (laughs) (laughs) I'm hallucinating, hello. And I'm going to... uh, Let's see here. Let's see. I move once you see us. I got 5, 10, 15... Damn, I don't really see any place I can hide. Mm, I, I, yeah, I don't see anywhere. I can't move anywhere. I can go ahead and just... I'm going to move. Same with it. All right. That should be my movement, and I can't hide because there's nothing to hide behind. Almost there, though. Yeah, almost. So that ends my turn. Okay. I could make somewhere for you to hide. Shadow. Hey, that's up what to you. you got, Shadow. <laughs> oh, I that's think an enemy right next to me. Yep, that's a. Uh, it looks to be a twig blight. If your expert adventuring uh, history recalls. Sure. Um, so, uh, well, to hit. And so you end up kind of hitting in between some of the, like, the slivers of the cracks of it, uh, and then it kind of, like, turns its head at you, and a weird creaking sound comes out, um, as it's a bit of a mess there. Mm hmm, figures. All right. Coming back around with and the that's whip. A 22. And you're, uh, cocking that head back the other way with a nice old uh, chain blade whip there. Okay. A little bit of a slash. And so these aren't like uh, super mega killer foes or anything like that. And that's actually enough to kill him with that five. Oh. oh. I know. Okay. I know. Uh, can I wrap my chain around him and just wrap him in half? Of course. Sure. Splinters go flying everywhere and down into uh, the ground below you, um, as it now just looks like a just bark and, and tree matter, not anything that was ever alive. I'll move myself here and end my turn. All right, Squeebel. All right, Squeebel is going to. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna send the owl. How far can they all fly? Uh, fly 60. All right, cool. Then the owl down here. Uh, 45 to... Uh, 45 to take the uh, help action on that one. So somebody will get advantage on a melee attack there. 45, 55. Okay. 60. And then Dino... Or, I am going to hold... Or no, I'm going to... Oh, shoot. Actually, I'll go ahead and do the firebolt on that one. And I will take that help for Oh, my good guy. <laughs> I mean, it's firebolt. Uh, oh, is it multiple bolts? You got a crit. Yeah, it should have rolled crit there, so uh, it's just a low damage. <laughs> Seven. So, uh, which one did you target? Uh, it was this one down here that I had, had okay. the owl help, the and help then, on. So, it'll actually do double damage, too, because you see how vulnerable to fire they are as it just bursts. Uh. Conflagration. Mm. Um, and where yep. it probably wouldn't have died before, but yeah, and with the double the damage, it just, oh. it just goes up in a burst <laughs> of flames, and all right. that's all she yeah, wrote. We get the... Can we get the Dynon put into initiative at 11.15? Yep. Setting at zero right now. Alright. And that'll be the end of my turn. And then I need to add in... I know you're my friend and we 
Uh, it's actually going to be the Tavoxi's turn, and he has an initiative of 18. I'll go ahead and add him on just to keep that consistent. And That's he, fine. he kind of starts to stir uh, and, like, tug at his chains, and he's like, oh, help, help, help me out, and, and I'll help. And uh, and that's all he can really do on his turn. And then Zen, you're up. All right, uh, this guy is completely gone, right? Yep. All right. Well, Zen will will give a casual glance towards uh, Squeeble. He will then walk towards this other one, and he will just have his great sword out and ready in case the other one decides to walk five more feet. And okay. he will end his turn. Alright, I uh, had to put the token assigned to the GM layer, but it's actually the uh, not the spiky-headed ones, but are there any more of the other ones, or do they both get killed? I guess that was it for them, huh? No, oh, well, ignore that. short work of them you made so Yasua you're up alright so he's chained up right yep would uh breaking the chains could I just do that with like a short sword or do I need to like go up and try and pick the lock or whatever how, how does that work it looks like it, it could be kind of uh, whichever one works best for you but let me look at this specific uh it would be, be an easier. athletics check or just even simply just hacking at it. You're kind of your choice. I think I'll just hack at it. So I'll, I'll okay. go up and I will uh, attack with a short sword. Try to roll to hit. Yep. Right. That'll be... Uh... Oh. Uh, it's not great. Natural one. So as you go uh, slicing down, you hear um, who's his name is Ashen Rock. You'll learn, but he kind of uh, Ashen Rock like dodges over and he's like ting, and he's hey, you almost hit me there. Uh, as, uh, yeah, as you sorry. missed the mark a bit. Um, and then I'll notice this one is getting closer, um, and because I am now a Gloom Stalker with Dread Ambusher, I get an extra attack on my first turn. Nice. Gloom Stalker is so fun. So I will um, take out my crossbow, and it's this ornate crossbow with dragon wings on the end, uh, and I will attack with that. Damn, you gotta be kidding me. Two natural ones in a row. Mm. Got some, got a crit coming though. I bet on the other side. Hope as, uh, as the needle blight just kind of, you know, shimmies out of the way. The small little things, after all. And if that's all it right. for you, yeah. we'll go to. You can move still uh, or anything. Yeah, I think at that point, uh, move five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Thirty, uh, thirty-five, forty. I'll move all the way back there because I get ten extra feet on my first turn. Uh, and that'll be my turn. Okay. It'll be the Dina. Dino. All right. Uh, Dino has forty, ten, twenty. Yep, that'll do. I'll move straight to there, and I'll try. Uh, my multi-attack, so it makes three uh, attacks, two with its bite, one with its claw. Does that land? Oh, yeah. All right, so it also needs to make a DC 12 strength throw, otherwise it's not prone, and if it's prone, I get an additional bite attack this round. That's part of the power. All righty. Oops, sorry. Uh, well, hold on, let me see real quick. Uh, okay. What was the save one more time? Uh, DC 12, 12 strength oh. check, so it's easy to make. But. Well, probably not for this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I actually just hit it. Okay, so it's saved. Made it? Yeah, right. it was saved. Right. I do still get uh, two more. Okay. I just get a second bite and a claw. So it was nine, eight, and three 
first two are piercing, the second one is, or the third one is slashing. Okay, so with the with the next one, that should be enough. Uh, the nine and the eight, that'll be enough. So you could kind of save the last attack. Oh, oh, uh, move twenty-five. Forty. All right. And a turn. All right. It's like a dog chasing a stick, uh, crunches it up and loses interest and moves on to the next toy. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Flint. Uh, well, now everything's out of range for that, so I guess I will uh, not leave my familiar, and I will just uh, mind sliver. Uh, blow his mind. Oh, you blew it. Yeah, I figured. Or he, or he blew it, whopping, anyway. Yeah, whopping three psychic damage, and he's at uh, minus 1d4? Yeah, from his next saving throw. And then I will uh, back up behind here and bonus action hide. So is it the, the far one to the over here? Yeah, that one right over there in the oh, corner. So I, was, uh, I could make it there in 30 feet. So the, the blight kind of just stops for a second and like you hear like this grating sound of wood on wood as it is kind of like chipping away as its mind is being attacked. And when it's kind of done, you it like has chipped away about half of itself already. Uh, it's bloodied, if you will. And then it kind of comes back to its senses and uh, kind of assesses the field and I guess just for the sake of a clap back it'll move forward and it raises its arms and little bits and pieces of it just kind of like kind of shoot off uh, we'll just go towards black black wood there was there another one down here that I didn't I, see? I, I take it I'm not hidden very well oh uh, that that one got killed oh I thought it moved and I was like what? yeah I, this one just kind of took its place I guess did it. Um, Sorry, could it, was I not hiding very well? Oh, did you? Oh, well, you did. I got bonus uh, action well, hide. I'm a goblin. My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, that is pretty good. So we'll we'll just throw that attack towards uh, to Squeeb, and uh, I doubt it's gonna hit anyways because it's a nine. <laughs> is, is it me or my mount? Uh, we'll oh, just nine? Have, yeah. we'll nine just throw it at Squeeb. Yeah, he just he goes for the the higher target, I guess. But it, it would be a miss, so it's all good. Uh, and then you got one last lonely one over here who will just kind of run away as far as he can and that should be still within range just in range to try to fire at Zen uh, with the same little needle attack uh, a little better this time with an 18 yep and Looks like this will be piercing damage as these uh, tiny little needles of wood kind of dig into you. We're looking at eight, eight piercing damage total to Zen. And that's it for them. Layla. Uh, here. And I'm gonna fire at him. Down at the, the wee little bottom there. Okay, gotcha. Straight throw. Sucks. So it looks like that'll be a hit. That will be? Yep. All right. Let's see here. I'm surprised you haven't come out. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, oh, well. Oh, I don't, I don't get the sneak attack bonus. So it's just a snide piercing. And so would you have disadvantage, though, from the, the, the hallucinations plaguing you? Okay. I'm sorry, what? So you would be disadvantaged from poison? Oh, so you want me to... I should roll disadvantage then. Yeah, yeah, because you, you had gotten poison from the Oakley Gubo. Okay, weed. my bad. So... Nope, six. even better. So yeah, the uh, the 13, everything is as it is. So good enough. He nays dead. As the, uh, you feel a bit of redemption. You can describe it more if you want. Um, I, I loose my arrow. And it strikes... This hideous creature, and then all I see is a burst of fireflies. They're pretty. It definitely covers up the the chips of wood uh, cascading down and raining upon the soil as this thing meets its grisly demise. And Shadow, how about you? Got one left. 
Yeah, kind of. Eh, I mean, I still have this, I guess. So that Seven. is going to hit? Yeah. And that is going to be enough, too. So we will end combat there as you fire a long way. If you want to add a flourish to that, you sure can. Just straight in the head. It splits it down the middle, and two sides of one twig fall asunder. Um, as a pretty easy combat there, and you guys are able to approach... Um, you know, the, t the tabaxi, uh, he's still kind of struggling with the, the chains there. And you guys can free him if you want without any rolls or anything like that. I like how so far the only attacks I've made have missed. <laughs> At least you guys are just uh, pretty, pretty powerful, though. Probably not yeah. too yeah. much danger. I've basically really... sat out of every combat because <laughs> I've had low initiative and low attack rolls. Yeah, everything that was in range of me was killed. So, But hey, I won the dinosaur race. Right? Yeet. That's true. So yeah, there, was a combat where I didn't do, there was two combats where I didn't do anything, basically, because of initiative. The Tabaxi, uh, he kind of lowers himself down and he's, oh, so thank, thank you for freeing me. I was part of the rescue party to, to help save these these poor folk, and he kind of looks down at the lady. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the rest of my group. I'm, I may be the only survivor. Mm. Yeah, uh, were you the group sent out here to uh, look for the uh, zombies or whatever? Well, yeah, we were checking out this this blighted area and, and trying to see what we could, but we got taken into custody by those Terra folk. Only they seem to start to be affected by uh, we assume the death curse and went, we started to waste away uh, you can see the remains of one over there mm. oh man they were going to sacrifice us to these twisted plants but something happened to them as far as the undead I, I'm not sure about that I didn't really, we didn't come across any of those out here but uh, you know, I'd like to uh, to continue searching for the rest of my my companions that came in here with me. Yes, of course. All right. Yeah, quick. He kind of takes. Quick a... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, quick question: Who who's going around raising terror folk from the unde from the death anyway? Right, like for them to waste away, but uh, they have to uh, get raised. I I don't know if those two things are related necessarily. Um, we just have had, we've always had problems with the terror folk, you know, coming in from the jungle, messing with us. And then just recently, the, the undead, they, they've kind of popped up here and there. But like I said, I haven't really came across any of the undead out here. So it's, it's strange. And then he, he kind of pulls out a couple of potions. Uh, you could, you could ask him a little bit more if you want. I don't think I have any more questions. I mean, do you uh, know which way to go f to find your friends? Well, I think the the. I'm just gonna keep looking around the area and hope hope to find some signs of them. Um, Got anything to get rid of this poison? Nah, unfortunately, I, th I think time is the best one for that. But um, I kind of heard something up ahead. The way I'm I'm afraid to go that way. I'll I'll probably try to take a safer path myself, but. Uh, those, I think those grungs of deeper on might be up to something. Um, I heard some chanting and some things. The Terra folk were whispering about them having some sort of uh, artifact. And, and I don't know, man. Everything out here seems to be trying to sacrifice something to something for something. I don't know. Man, but if, maybe you guys want to check that out on ahead. But for me, I'll, I'll probably head, head back and maybe check a different, more safer area. But look. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't feel good without giving you guys this. And he kind of t drinks a uh, potion of healing himself, but then he passes one on to you guys. That's a, a different shade. It's actually a potion of poison resistance. Chug. That earlier. That's probably quite good. <laughs> and so yeah, so you have that. <laughs> uh, maybe look up the details on that. 
it might work retroactively. See. But anyways, he kind of bades you on and uh, disappears himself, and you see where the path kind of winds on to the south, and it begins to narrow a bit uh, between some sickly-looking trees, of course. Just It's just poison damage, nothing else. Yeah. And then I suppose let's go ahead and... Well, uh, he, we'll, he did say groan, so... We'll kind of have Has it been out. 10 minutes yet? Don't immediately... Uh, attack the grungs i suppose but i'm going to i'm going to move y'all over there they're not hidden or anything because you'll kind of see them from a distance and they don't have to see you right off the bat you'll be kind of close to them on the map but you can you can change that if you want i recall they're extremely isolationist but not exclusively violent diplomacy may be an option maybe got a couple extras there hold on but otherwise, some didn't get everybody on that one. Let's see. <laughs> so we're missing two, eh? We need Layla and who else? What What am I doing? Uh, I'm just copying over to the next map. My bad. I'm sorry, yeah. you aren't there yet. My fault. Let me jump you over. Uh, but I need Layla and one other. I think it might be uh, Zen. Yep. Had a couple that didn't copy over for some reason. Okay. So first things first, let's pretend that you're not exactly quite here to these grungs yet. Um, and just kind of establish a general marching order as you would approach this clearing. Um, and I would say, like, consider this the back of the line, you know, and the, the front of the line would be closer to the pool of water there. And uh, and then we'll just take it from there. I'd have my owl uh, try and stealth and scout up from flying above and scout ahead. Okay. Well, not very stealthy. Yeah, roll stealth as well for me. Okay, and if again, if y'all don't mind, just like forming up as if y'all were like in a yeah. marching order, more so. Uh, just me first. as well. So I would either say oh, like two, uh, two abreast, or one, or one by one. Either way, you can do one down a line or two. At a, probably two makes more sense, but whichever y'all want to do, as y'all kind of this is still you approaching the uh, the map. I figured it would just kind of be a little cleaner to do it here. Okay, and everyone's cool with that. My baby loves my dice. She's yeah. mad. Um, okay, and so before you guys right come hey. into this clearing, um, you have to pass through these this base of this trunk uh, with like hundreds of these what turns out to be poisonous blood sucking vines, and uh, they'll try to I'm... latch on to you guys. And really, just the first two because you're the first ones going through. Um, first, I'm gonna make quickly me a, drink my other antitoxin. Make me a perception check. Because you're not automatically going to walk into some vines, let's be real. But you might if you don't see them. So just the two in front? Just the two in front. Ooh, and so you walk right into the vines, unfortunately. And so go ahead and make me a... Uh, they kind of lash out at you as you get closer. And you feel them try to grab onto you. Go ahead and make me a deck save for both of you two. Okay, so Shadow, you're able to kind of uh, bat them off of you uh, and, you know, kind of take a step back as they continue to lash out and try to get a hold of you and gain purchase. Uh, you look in horror, though, over at Zen, uh, who is a little less lucky, and the barbs of this, uh, this vine is kind of restraining him, and he'll also take some poison damage. Thank you. A total of four. Goodness. Okay. Okay. And, uh, well, I mean, it is what it is, so you can, uh, you can kind of take some time to, you know, handle them, as it were. You have to pass by them, though, but you see them. Um, you realize if you get within 10 feet, they'll, they'll kind of do the same thing. 
um, as you just witnessed, like for the people behind you. Uh, I guess for simplicity's sake, though, too, you have Zen who is a little bit attached, so he'll either need to, you know, get out himself or have someone help him. Um, however, y'all want to do I'll that. I'll use the help action to uh, help. All right. So I'll before try to break myself out. So before before y'all go, I would just ask first. So it's somewhat of a turn order. Um, do any of the four behind you, Yasua, Flint, Layla, um, or Squeeb, do any of y'all four want to take a, an action real quick before the, you know he would so, try to? Uh, so like he's he's restrained by the vines, but there's they're obviously like at their limit. Let's say if um, they were here at the the pool, we'll say they're at the start of the pool. So if you were just right here, you would be within reach of him, but not them. I guess is how that would work. I'm so like, other could I toxin. could I mold earth to just pick five feet of ground out from underneath him so he falls out of the vine's grasp? Choop, down. You could, yeah. Uh, I'll do that. Still thing in the trees. The well, the, okay. So the thing is, is uh, I'm not gonna make you ruin your action. Is he actually is restrained? So he he wouldn't fall. He would just kind of hang still in the grasp of this vine. But someone could get there to help him without going to reach of the vine. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I think as long as you're behind where he is, then you could be out of reach of the vine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he's already got someone helping him, and then I'll let that I'm happen. I'm going to go and um, try and just pull him out. Can I just slash the vine? Uh, you definitely can. I just wanted to see if any of them wanted to try, just kind of to keep a turn order, because then now the turn order would cycle through, and we'd go back to the, the top, as it were. And uh, as you're still restrained... Um, so it says if you're strained at the beginning of a new round you'll take the ad additional poison um, and so you, you wonder why your friends did not oh, during sweet. this turn or was it my action to get restrained yeah and I'm trying to pull him out I think like it, you the action was being restrained at the point of that for the sake of the trap, how, how we're working through. It's not a specific, uh, Maddie, to clear that too, by the way. So, the, so do I, do I get an action to now you, attempt to do yeah, anything? Now it's kind of a oh, new wait. round. So however you want to do it, you, you could try to break free with help. Um, did that look, sounded like how you were trying to do it and you'll take five more poison damage there. So I guess I'm, I'm just trying to parse how you're doing it. So I, I take the damage, I get no opportunity to do anything about it, and then I take the damage again? Right, because the opportunity to do something about it was avoiding it in the first place. And then you had there was a chance, you know, that's why I asked if your friends wanted to come up and, and help, they could have freed you before the new round would have started, uh, but they did not. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, I thought that. I thought the help, like I, someone else said they were helping him. I thought that was like okay, but the like, help. But he had already. No... That's why I had specified okay. those four because he was part of the initial, uh, the initial okay. step forward, I guess, as it were. There. Oh, I was. I thought you said me as one of the four. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, you were. You were. My bad. So yeah. you could have give. I mean, you. I, I'm not sure what you mean. Like you could have given him the help action. No, no, no. I, I was trying to help trying them to get him out. out, but I thought someone else was already doing the pulling. I guess that's why I was so like. So that well, was but... that was Shadow. I thought, but it would, he would still have to take a, the turn around because initially he had said, "I'll help him get free," and then that, and then I was like, "Okay, well, before that, does any of you four want to do anything?" And oh, got it, got it. Yeah, when you said the molders wouldn't work, I said, I, I, I'll, "I'll guess I'll help." But he's already got advantage, so I guess I didn't realize. Like, could I have made the athletics check? I guess is what I'm interested in saying. Oh, maybe I had confused uh, confused two different people there. But yes, if if you wanted to do something and you didn't get the chance to, then for sure, please do. No, I think I just I think I just got confused with with what you meant by help. So I was thinking the help action, uh, which was already being taken. So I didn't realize I could actually just try to pull him out on my own. I guess. Okay, I see uh, the misconception. My bad. It may not matter because I'm a wizard. Uh, that decent. actually uh, is good enough. There we go. By a few too. So okay. So you can reduce that. You know, no damage for the second round or anything as as the the vines get hacked down around, and then um, now so now here's the point where you can proceed. You just have to kind of do something about the the vines. Per se, you have to go through this 
this path in front of you. Um, you know they're there now and what they'll do, and technically you're still within reach, but you're free to move or however you want to do. Where right, are, are the vines to... considered a loose object? Uh, I don't know how loose, but potentially. I just want to telekinetically move it out of the way. Hmm. Okay, so actually, now that you're free, that's the that's the kicker. There is no one's actually attached to it anymore, so you can you can kind of move around it. It looks like um, that was that was what was holding you up necessarily. So as long as you see it, you can uh, you can move around it. So this isn't supposed to last that long. My bad. So the danger has passed. The danger has passed with a little help from your friends. And then now, um, I know it's where. Slightly... Where are we trying to get to? Just across, or are we trying to get to that area in the middle? We're trying to travel to the map that we're currently looking at. We're not at the map that we're looking at. Oh, we're not there yet. Right. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so now you pretty much were. It's just kind of the way they layered this mod out is they'll provide you with maps for some of the things, but then not others. So it just kind of left me to to kind of provide that here and there where it is. And so it's just a quick thing as you're entering the area. So, you know, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to to cram up this whole other map for just a little trap or something. So I was just trying to throw it in there real quick. But... Uh, you know, just a little stab, and you move past it pretty easily. And you uh, you come into this area now. You can kind of, if you want to arrange yourselves a little more loosely or roll stealth or things like that, uh, totally feel free. I got a net 20 on my stealth check. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I got a 21 on mine. Got a good one from Shadow. Great. I got a 26 on mine. Beautiful. Yeah, are we, are we using? Are we re-rolling or using the one we rolled before? If you had rolled already, you can just use that. It's fine. Okay, so we got a couple lower, but everybody else is super high. <clears throat> so has uh, has my time limit passed on my poisoning? Hmm. Let's see. Hold you on said ten time. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it would take about ten minutes. You can be free of the the poisoning. I think it's supposed to be mostly for that last encounter, so you're you'd be pretty good by this point. Um, and you, the path kind of turns to reveal uh, as it slopes upward, a bit more hilly region covered in thick grass, and you see four small humanoids with bright green skin gathering around a small decorated stone block in the center of a small pool of water. They do not notice you, uh, and they just seem to kind of be hanging out around their altar. Um, every once in a while kind of motioning towards uh, the little pieces that are on top of it. It kind of seems a bit like a half moon. Uh, pretty identifiable as a piece of the amulet that's been uh, the artifact that's been, you know, entering the town. Uh, it seems to be pretty metallic with a little black leathery bit decorating the center. I don't suppose anybody speaks grung off, off bait, do you? I don't think you can unless you are a grung yourself. And you can't be a grung in AL. In AL, yeah. And so, you might hear a mutter, some weird kind of throaty language here and there. Uh, but for the most part, they, they're they just kind of hanging out and chilling. Yeah. The only option would be, uh, what is it, understand language or whatever the spell is. Comprehend language. Need, comprehend language, yeah. But I think you need, they need tongues to speak it, so. Yeah. Oops. Oh, yeah, you couldn't speak it, yeah. Uh, so how are we uh, doing this? Well, well we get the drop on them. Yeah, I don't suppose any of us have any way to communicate with them, so diplomacy is kind of out of the way. And it looks I like mean, they're guarding this thing, so I doubt they take kindly. Yeah. Draw well, in the sand. I, I doubt... They'd take kindly to us coming up and taking Bunga, it. bunga, bunga. Draw on sand. Actually, with, with Mold Earth, I can draw on the sand really well. <laughs> so I think our best option is to get the drop on them. Layla yeah. takes the first attack, and then we all follow. Yeah. Mm, that utilize that assassin. Yeah, you can do your thing. All right, so initiative. Oh, yeah. All right, jump out okay. of the bushes. So I mean, they, they, they might be common. Yeah. 
Oh, whoops. Uh, when I rolled the initiative for the Dynon, it updated Squeeble's initiative. Oh my. I had an 18, but I didn't have my token selected. Yeah, I had a 22, but I wasn't selecting my token. Alright, I've updated Squeeable, and then the Dynon is 13.15. Am I, up, am I up first? Um, well, no, what's your dex? We rolled the same. Oh, uh, 16. Sorry about that. I had a little chaos behind me, but did anybody need to be adjusted? I'm sorry, I know y'all had said something. I, I got a 22, but I didn't select my token. So are you not on there at all? Yeah, I'm not on the turn order, but I, it's in the chat, the 22. Okay. Let's get you on there. I got a 18 on my decks. Or however. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you want to go first, it's fine. It makes no difference. I think we're going to be at the top of the order, so. Okay, so I, I adjusted you there. Anybody else? Everybody good? Okay. All right. Take it away. I mean, it kind of makes sense anyway. So um, this would be right. a surprise round because he had a very astounding stealth roll earlier. Yep. All right. So this archer right here, he's he's about to take an arrow. Maybe. Oh, but, I'm sure. I'm sure. oh yeah. An advantage. Please be something decent. Was it this? Oh, okay, you doing this uh, dude in the front here? What? Yeah. Okay. It added both for you, or both of your dice together, but it looks like it should be a dirty twenty. Yeah. Like bazinga. And okay. assassin moment throw you out of crit. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, yeah, because the assassin is auto crit. No yep. one's gone and. So, sure, no. do your worst. I uh, not sure he'll be making out of that one. Yeah. And got a character that's a uh, assassin, gloom stalker, one level of uh, twilight sneak cleric. Attack double. Sneak attack doesn't double, does it? It does. Okay. Yeah. No, I need okay. dice. All right. So. There we go. Let's see. 9 plus 7 plus 12. 28. Thank you. Okay, and so that is the insta kill on the Grung. Doesn't even know the what's coming. The HP Grung <laughs> goes. <laughs> Blood splatters into the small pool uh, as he is most definitely okay. dead. Uh, bonus action I want to hide right where I'm at. Okay. Not very well. <laughs> and then Flint, what you got? Uh, I really don't want to waste my blade song on this crap, but uh, I am. I guess I'll just kind of. Uh, I guess I'll <laughs> screw it. Uh, I'll use a bonus action to blade song so I can move forty feet. Um, two, three, four. So I'll move up to this one, and uh, uh, my snake here will give me the help action. And uh, I will booming blade him. Nice. Oh, I didn't roll the initiative. That doesn't matter. Do I need to? You already rolled initiative. Uh, and I made with advantage. Um, oh, for thirteen. Um, let me. Or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, unless it's gonna be a crit. So I guess here, here's d twenty. Nope, doesn't matter. All right, so um, uh, that's the thunder damage. It needs to roll the other one. Okay. Because the 13 would hit him, for sure. Uh, 
so that's nine um, slashing, and then uh, he's got the booming blade effect on him, and uh, I am going to step back for my last five feet of movement since he's surprised. Okay, so yeah, he kind of like turns back after the slash and uh, is like, Aah! and uh, if you can only understand him, but I will go to Yasua. All right, I will from where I am. Uh, attack with my crossbow. Let's hope it's not a natural one. <laughs> right. 14 to hit. Uh, and you're going for this uh, this feller here, of course. Uh, no, sorry. Um, I am go- going to shoot at this one. Uh, I can't ping uh, this one. Okay. Yep. That is unless gonna... actually is this this pillar would that provide it cover? No. Nah, not, nah, not really from the angle you're at now. It's okay. Okay. Heavy crossbow. Hey, do I just? All right. Hey, Let's see that damage. So that, hey. that hits. So I I pull back the string, and you see this shimmering on top like of the bag. Like mommy, like, you ain't going again without me. Here. <laughs> That's exactly it's what she's saying because she's arrow of the air up here. <laughs> Mommy, you ain't leaving this house without me. Do we need to mute somebody? <laughs> I think it's fine. Sorry about that. Uh, this shivering bolt, the shimmering bolt of air, that's just quivering, and uh, then it will release. Let's see how much damage it does. What the heck? Oh, I see what I did wrong. That's not supposed to happen. Okay, ignore, I think. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> I think it's just the first two numbers. No, it's it's not. It rolled like a bunch of d6s because they're all included in there. Let me roll separately. It's 1d10 plus 3 plus 1d6 thunder damage. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. It's gonna be all she wrote, I bet. You type it in. That is fifteen points of damage total. And that will be enough. If you want to describe that any further, he's definitely dead. It's- aim and it goes in and you see because there's no actual bolt it's just air and it sort of dissipates and then the head just explodes as the thunder damage damages it from the inside um and then i will run up here and uh do my extra attack with my short sword and that gets an extra d8 on top of that for being a gloom stalker might not hit uh nine uh, that one will be just shy as he kind of uh, sees what you did to his companion and, and nervously springs out of the way uh all right and that'll be my turn okay you kind of feel the water lapping at your heels a little uh not too much more than that as uh, zen you're good to go then we'll move to here We'll dash to there, and uh, I guess we'll action surge and swipe at this guy. Fifteen? That will be enough. We'll make it a psionic strike. All right. For 17 points. End of turn. Any further description on his death? So you've essentially wiped out the smaller of the grungs. No, nope, it's a disadvantage because poison. I I wasn't told I was poisoned. I was told that I was at penalties to uh, perception. Yeah. Perception. I I made my con save when there was that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think everybody's good now. The the poison would have probably worn off now from uh, from Layla. So I, I think everybody's okay on that. Uh, all right. 
So uh, it's still in turn from Zen, even though that one's dispatched. We'll go to Shadow. Got one foe there. Or did you have to dash? I'll take it as a yes. What was the question? I mean, sh sure. We do a little. So shadow. That's that's a seventeen to hit. Okay, so whenever you uh, come within ten feet of the altar. Uh, you kind of oh. get a, out of the narrow side eye. You see a better view of the kind of piece of the amulet sitting there. And um, go ahead and make me a wisdom save. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. so you kind of feel this, uh, just this leeching on not only your morale, but even kind of uh, your control a bit. Uh, but you're able to kind of shirk it off. No worries. Uh, and and then you make your attack still with the... That's good. Anyways, uh, let's make it uh, lightning damage, because why not? And that's 13 lightning. Okay, so 13 total to this foo over here. And he is pretty close to death as um, he kind of turns and his eyes keep flitting back towards the altar and... Uh, course he's kind of clicking and croaking all kinds of things uh, and that'll be it for you you got anything else um i mean action surge and uh, let's kill him that's a natural one never mind and so, so you uh, feel your your foot kind of sink in the mud underneath from the pool and you kind of lose your uh your attack on that one yeah that's a 17 that's better Okay, that'll definitely hit him. So, uh, so only the five. Okay, so chromatic orb was my main action. Then uh -huh. I action searched to crack my whip, and because I cracked my whip, I, I was now able to use my bonus action to attack with the other weapon. Gotcha. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. With the uh, with the feet you have, and so with that yeah. five more damage, that will be enough to dispose of him. He falls yeah. down into the water. Um, and you almost see like a peaceful look on his face as uh, he's kind of relinquished from the same tug that was pulling on you. Um, and since it's your turn, more or less, and you have already passed the uh, the check to, to grip you, if you want to, you can you can move up to the uh, the piece and, and take it without it kind of trying to get you again. I'm getting it. And um, go ahead and give me an Arcana or Nature check real quick since you kind of picking that up. Arcana or Nature. Uh, both are the same for me. 22? Oh, very good. Uh, you're able to tell that this was the source of the blight in the area. Uh, you don't know anything about the undead necessarily, but it seems pretty clear that this was causing the plants and certain things like that to get a bit out of control. Um, so just to move on, I know we're kind of approaching time. We'll uh, we'll hit the outro mission pretty quick, and and uh, and uh, and you know that'd be it for those of you that can hang on for that last one. Uh, but for now, um, you guys can kind of pick over the grungs in the area, and you'll find that uh, that you know with your knowledge of the different pieces that you've collected, it's pretty obvious that you could kind of attach what you've just gained. Um, and you also find 20 gold on the grungs, as well as uh, another a ring worth some gold. And you find a, a scroll case containing a, a letter written in grunk. And since, I mean, if some of you had a way to read writing, like there's a couple ways, uh, if you can't understand the language, you could certainly do so. Um, but if not, you can return back to, uh, to Screaming Wind. And she seems pretty happy to see you. And she says, I can tell that the intrusive growth is already to beginning to die out. Here's the gold as promised, and she hands that to you. Uh, she sees she sees the amulet piece, and she thinks, "Ah, we should destroy that." Uh, but perhaps my other contacts may be in need of that. They have been mentioning this thing. There's even been one that has come with uh, the the last piece, and we can put all these together. I I think you should probably go see Soggy Ren in the market roar. 
sorry, Market Ward. Um, if you show her the letter, she'd take it for a second. Oh, I think I may be able to understand this. Give me a second. Mm, seems to be describing empowering the gift of the mother patron, afterward to be delivered to a prince. Um, not sure what else there is. Some scribblings here, maybe some other things. Uh, whatever you may make of that. And then uh, she kind of points out where uh, where Soggy Ren's place would be in the final mission for today. And so for this last one, you'll gain another level at your, just, you know, if you want it. Uh, you get the 10 downtime, of course. And then for gold... How much was the ring worth as well? It was worth another 20. So it looks like 90 total between the group after she gives you that. Uh, and there's... Someone wants to divide that by six, so 15, 15 gold total on this one, and this time you got the potion of poison resistance. Didn't end up getting used. Maybe an antitoxin got used, but no worse. Yep. And looks like that'll be it. Do we have anyone that's going to level up at all? Uh, I plan to. I'm going to get to level four and then hopefully level five at the end of the night. Yeah, I think I'm going to just uh, dip for now. Okay, no problem, uh, man. I'll, I'll, I'll take the level. All right, guys. Uh, I guess uh, whoever's going to stay and whenever you're ready, just give me that X in the chat, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of wrap this one up. Those of you who go, um, I'll be posting everything in the search session logs and stuff. All right. Thank you. It was a great time as always. See you All next right. time. See you, man. All right. I'm going to get up and stretch for a second, and then I'll sit back down, and we can start up. Um, for Zen, uh, let's see, let's see how intensive this last one is. I think it may be pushing it a little bit. If we want to, uh, I could, it's kind of up to you guys. I mean, I want to do it justice enough, but also the time is there. So it's kind of like, <coughs> excuse me, but we could make it happen in 37 minutes, guaranteed, or 30 minutes after everybody comes back. But we'll probably kind of have to breeze through it a bit. So that's really up to you guys. Or we could, you know, we could be done by an hour from now. Or we could be done in 30 minutes. It's it's up to whatever you guys want me to do. I, I'm free for another hour and a half. So this is my first. Actually, I've ran one of these, like, the very first time I ever ran anything for AL. I ran one of these. Um, but... Yeah, it's been a long time since then, uh, since I ran one of these, like, mini mission ones. And so, you know, I'll kind of evaluate the pacing today and stuff and kind of take that into consideration because I'm going to be running the Tier 2 version of this. Uh, it's like the, the Part 2, basically. Instead of a city on the edge, it's like a city off the edge. <laughs> I can't remember the exact name, but uh, but it's all Tier 2. So all these characters that are, could be Tier 2 by the end of this uh, will fit perfectly in that next one uh, coming up. That'll be in two weeks from today.
So we got Yasuo is coming in hot at level four, and then Zen and uh, Flint. Are y'all gonna go up a level? Yeah, so I'll be at three, so you can crank up difficulty if need be. Oops, I messed up my Discord earlier. So Flint, you'll be at level three. Yeah. Gotcha. And then we'll see you with Zen in a moment. Sorry, what was your question? Oh, are you uh, are you going to be level four now? Yeah, I, I put it in the chat. I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. I was on a different page. Uh, level four. Okay. <clears throat> okay, cool. Appreciate y'all guys hanging with me on this, and I guess we'll go ahead and uh, get started on that last one. So, at long last, uh, you get the call. Um, and, and just so you know, I like to be transparent. I don't want y'all to, to feel like anybody's missing out on anything, really. Uh, but because of time, we did skip out on the one one adventure. But the way these work, some of you probably already know, but they really don't give you a whole lot on, like, magic items. or They don't really give you any, Yeah. you know. So you might miss out on, like, a scroll or a potion or something. But, I mean, it's okay. I hope you don't, uh, you know. It's not like you're really missing out on anything crucial with by missing that one little mission or anything. Mm-hmm. So that being said, we'll bump over to the last one where uh, you travel to the market ward to meet with uh, Soggy Rin, the faction contact for the Harpers. Sorry, I had a preliminary yell at the sun. That usually seems to work. But <laughs> the Red Bazaar dominates the area east of the bridge between the Grand Coliseum and the Hall of Gold. Oh, you, you recognize that place from earlier. Uh, broad rows of colorful of merchants stands span across the area many selling various meats produce trade goods not far to the south you arrive at uh, the, the place indicated it's called kaya's house of repose one of the more prominent inns for travelers looking for a bit more opulence as well as the last rumored location of soggy wren um, not only do you find soggy wren but one of you in particular let me go ahead and uh, clear the clear the board there for later and then we'll bounce back to the main map just for some regularity. And then uh, Squeeble, are you going to be on the, the Dynon still? Yep. Okay, so we'll just shift your other one down. We'll shift him down. Gotcha, yeah, okay, the image for my owl familiar. Oh, yeah, I could probably get that thrown on there right now real quick if you want. Uh, we lost Dev, too. Okay. Yeah, let me do that real quick uh, while we're just before we really launch in and get you. He's coming in. Boop. There you are. And let me give him. Uh, let me give him to you. Okay, you should have control of them and all. And then I'll try yep. to make sure that it gets copied and pasted over when the time comes. And let's move forward. Um, so, anyways, that you are pleased to see, probably. Uh, maybe Lala in particular, you see uh, Nerissa there as well. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Squeeb. Let me, uh... Boop. Uh, actually, do you guys have enough people with, that are staying? Oh, yeah. Alright, yeah, I'm, I'm at the back out, actually. My kid needs to uh, go to bed, so... Alright, <laughs> later. Oh, no problem at all. I understand. Thanks for playing. I'll get you tagged on the session, Lux. Alright, thank you. Bye. Later. Okay. So you see Ren, he seems to be in a, a bit of a stupor as 
you know, he's clearly been drinking for a, a while. Uh, Nerissa, the monk from earlier, is kind of sitting with a bit of a distasteful look on her face, but not, it seems like she's pretty used to it with him. And uh, he kind of calls you over. Uh, well, come on. You can't discuss business without uh, with an empty glass. <laughs> Fill it up, Buttercup. Oh, the first round's on me! And he kind of got motions over, and they pour out some glasses, and uh, you guys are welcome to sit down with him and, and have a drink. And so he kind of uh, he kind of struggles through his slurs, uh, but you know he's he's willing to talk with you about uh, the different things. And so okay, so uh, we got these these cursed trinkets you finally got them all together with the, the help of Nerissa here um, and she kind of nods as she was the one who recovered the, the last and final piece um, well uh, thanks for uh, coming to find me here um, you know everyone comes to, to uh, excuse me to take part in my uh, party tour <laughs> and uh, this is where it usually kicks off as it were but, well it looks like we probably need to get those pieces all together and you know, I, I appreciate you guys for doing this. We gotta stop the enemy. They're being a bunch of killjoys. <laughs> what, what exactly is this artifact, and what does it do? Oh, well, let me see it there. And he kind of, he'll take it if you allow him, and he kind of fits it all together, and it pieces up. Oh, man, it gives me the <laughs> wickedest feeling, and not in a good way, but this here's the Dreamer's Amulet. And, well, there's some, some people that have been trying to somehow get this cursed uh, thingamo what's it into Port Nine's Aru uh, if it weren't for you folks uh, they probably would have been successful but <clears throat> excuse me looks like uh, these would have found their way into more dangerous hands uh, there are plenty of people hidden amongst us as well as like, coming from the jungle always uh, and you know that's that's the final thing we need to do here is discover the source behind the attempt to bring this relic here I'm, I'm thinking, like most things lately, it's probably linked to this death curse. It's sucking all the fun out of this city. And Narissa here has been helping me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sure if uh, he like takes a big old slog off his drink, I'm sure if you want, she could probably uh, come with you too and help help you out here. Uh, she kind of nods and she says, "Yes, I, I don't mind helping with this." Well, um, if you can bring this amulet to my contact in the Utepka Society. I could give you a hundred gold. I think that's pretty fair. Um, if, you, if you discover the source and purpose behind this amulet's dark magic, we may have more work for you. I have a contact named Diamsar. He can be found working by the the bathhouse. Uh, he's probably right. the first one to, to see. Alright, let's head to the bathhouse. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys for for helping out the different factions here and in Port Nine Zaru. Uh, it's a wonderful land we have here, and I hope you you like it. It's not always so dramatic, but um, whenever you see my friend Diamsar, you need to raise your left hand and poise your fingers up to kind of represent the horns of a triceratops. He should respond Got with it. the same. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. If you do that, he'll know you're an ally. And oh, uh, whenever you're ready. You can go and uh, and head up there, but uh, the Atepka Society, they'll be mighty grateful. Um, they're also known as the, the Triceratops Society. They balance the power of preserving that natural order here. Um, they pretty instrumental in wresting the control of the city away from, from Om nearly a decade ago. That's a, a land across the ocean as well. You, you may have heard of it, but now we're free and and now they work to keep us safe from all kinds of threats such as pirates and things so it's been mighty nice for you to help us of course and all right kind of, we'll be off them well hold on hold on let's do a quick one oh. and he uh, gets you a little <laughs> shot poured out and he's all right whoever wants one and throws it back you can see this is like a tradition for him narissa even kind of like hesitantly takes a little sip and she's like okay um so would you like me to accompany you uh, sure, if if you'd like. Of course, it'd be it'd be my honor to to fight alongside you this day. Oh, she's coming with us. And then she asks, uh, "May I may I carry the the amulet there? Um, I could I could keep a hold of it if you don't mind, and keep it out of the way." Uh, 
I have a bit of a, an affinity for dreams. So I think uh, it'll be best suited with me. But if you think it would be better, happy no, to no, hand it's, it over. It's fair. It's, I was just offering, and I respect that, too. I'm, I know it's very safe in your hands, but w- let's go. Um, of course. So she kind of leads you a short little distance across town, and you come to uh, the bathhouse, and you see Di, I'm sorry. He's pretty nondescript, just middle-aged guy. Um, doesn't really see you, I, see you coming up immediately, of course. I hold my hand up and do the, uh, the poised fingers. And so when you do, he kind of pauses for a brief moment, and then he uh, returns the hand gesture and uh, waves you to approach. All right. Uh, go ahead and make me an insight check as as you guys come along. Anyone can do it if you want. Pretty good from Squeeble. He's like, who needs a modifier? <laughs> Nice. So, very good in general. Uh, this was a pretty tough check to hit, though, to be honest. So, is are we missing one, or is that everybody? No, we're just down to four now. Okay. Uh, yep, so with, uh, with Squeeble and Yasua, you two in particular, you seem, it seems as if Diamstar's hand gesture may have been a little hasty in, in return, as if it was, like, a bit unexpected. But after a moment, right, well, go on. I was say we approach. <laughs> okay, so he says, "Oh, uh, uh, hello, hello. Um, do you have the the, the piece?" Mm, of course, right here. Ah. Well, in that case, and he's kind of casting his eyes. You should accompany me to one of the Yatepka Society's safe houses. All right. Let's be quick. And he kind of marches off quickly to uh, an old stone building with faded murals and a worn sign that reads, The Northside Market Textile House. Uh, seems like a money laundering building if you've ever seen one. No. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he kind of leads you to, uh, to the front door. And uh, he's like, come, come quickly inside. And uh, he opens and with a lock and kind of disappears inside. All right, we go inside. Or at least I do. How's everybody else feeling about this? Now wherever the party goes, I'll Let's go. do it. I'm a little cautious. Let me get you guys tokens over here as you uh, enter this first part of a kind of warehouse-like building. Um... And so it's uh, just for this to make sense in a way, um, you can kind of see the first half of this building and and right past your view right here, there's a man uh, standing up there uh, and a man over here. You get kind of a clearer look at uh, Diamsar now that you're, you know, just out of the the hubbub of the the city and you can see how he's kind of dressed in some some dark robes and things like that. And it seems as if these two people are, are pretty similarly dressed. Um, and again, you'll see them in a moment, but just for now, they're kind of like on either side of the this balcony up here. And then Diamsar himself kind of walks to the, the far side of the room from you're at now. So it's just a square, um, and you'll see it in a second. But he's he's on the opposite side of the room, and, uh, and he kind of turns towards you. And um, he kind of displays the hand signal to you again to try to, uh, you know reassure right, you time. in a way uh and he repeats yeah. it to the the zealots up in the same way uh and they kind of uh do it as well mm-hmm. i return the hand symbol single yeah signal and then he kind of uh, motions you to to come forward uh the the item we we should place it over here for safekeeping um come Hmm. All right. Zen tries to move into the darkness. Okay. And uh, as you do, go ahead and make me a perception check, uh, Zen. And is anybody else going with them? So is, is this guy that we're talking to on the upper level or into uh, he's the on the dark floor room? level as you? And I'll I'll reveal it in like just a second. Right. I will also make a perception check as I follow. Okay. 
Not everybody has to, but anybody who wants to can. <laughs> nope. All right. I'm going to hang back and kind of like be guarded, standoffish and guardish. Sorry about that. I will see something, though, probably. Okay. So, Yasu, I'm just going to move you over a little bit as uh, you were the one holding the amulet anyways, right? Mm-hmm. So you and, uh, you and Zin, he wants to accompany you as well. You motion, uh, he kind of has, there's a big crate off to the side, and he's kind of pointing like, uh, uh, we should put the amulet there for now and then speak further. And so uh, the other two kind of looks like, uh, was it just you two? The squeeble, you wanted, you wanted to get in there too? Uh oh, I, I would be down here. Do I need to be? No, no, if, no. If you're if you prefer to stay back, then uh, then you're good. It's definitely no worries. Um, yep. So we'll go with the two there. It looks like we'll uh, have, I believe, successes from both of you. Let's see, Zen twenty two, Yasuo twenty two. That's pretty perfect. Um, as you start to approach the area he showed. Uh, Yasuo, you may even like begin to pull the the amulet out and hold it aloft. You uh you all of, all of a sudden see like a ripple in the floor there, and you realize that he was trying to bait you towards um a trap there. It kind of becomes all too clear that there's a pit where that red square is. It's actually it was an illusion that the tile was there, but when it actually wasn't, and you almost stepped right into it before you realize that it's not there. Um, what is this? Let's go. As uh, as he sees you kind of dodge his thing, um, he, you see him kind of make a motion and poof, out of the the box this uh, this snake kind of comes out. And then I think I may need to switch it out real quick. Mm. Uh no. Although I feel like I probably should. Although wait, let's see. Uh, I gotta adjust our APL too, honestly, real quick because we had that quick shift. So we had a level four. We well, considering that there's only four of us, the highest we could be is uh, average. So it looks like uh, that is what you guys are going to be, too, is average. But then again, we've been breezing through combats where people don't even get to do anything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I know. But we did just lose a third of our players. True. Um, so, yeah, I've been playing it by... Uh, by the APL given, so I'll just keep doing that. And so it'll be average. Uh, we'll play it like that. So what you see is what you get. Uh, these folks, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and roll initiative. If you would have fell in the trap, that that could have uh, that could have surprised you or maybe even hurt you a little. But you guys are you, you guys are too smart. You for said that. it's it's illusion magic. It appeared to be so, but you guys were able to detect the ripple. Alright, I've adjusted Squeebles back to his initiative, and then I got 17.15 for the Dynon. You said 13.15? 17.15. Okay, my bad. 17.15. Oop, yeah, it is. Does the equipment that the two avatars are are or the the sorry the the three enemies it looks like are wearing is that reflected in what they actually have or is that separate? Are they just avatars? Uh, they're mostly just kind of ones that I find that are semi appropriate. They would be more dressed kind of like the the fellow in the front, um, but one of them does have they have their weapons are like scimitars and crossbows. I could tell you that, so it's it's pretty close. Okay. Just wondering if which ones had range and which ones maybe didn't. Yeah, so off the bat, it seems like they kind of both be capable of, of either one. Um, but not this one? Or all three? Uh, these two are kind of their own thing, and then the guy, the leader, is kind of his own separate thing, too. Um, That's what I thought. Yep. And let me see, Nerissa is actually there, too. I have a token for her. Let me get it from the other... 
thinking of putting down a fog cloud. Because we're right here, and then they're off to the side. And then they could deal with them while we take the middle one before fanning out. Me and you, Zen. Maybe even push them in the hole. There's more. What's going on? What's this? No, that's our that's our ally. Oh. My bad, I was muted. But uh, yep, it's uh, Nerissa, and looks like she's pretty dang good at initiative. I think these guys are rolling pretty good on initiative. What's the lighting like in this room? Uh, so it'd be pretty bright, pretty well lit here. No, no worries just, with that. No, I'm just wondering because I'm be I'm better in the dark. I'm just wondering yeah. if uh, it's like a chandelier. It, or um, like torches, or if it's like daylight coming through windows. If you don't know, it's fine. It's I would just say bright uh, light. it would probably with the warehouse. I would say windows. Windows, okay. Yeah. All right, one uh, one second, my bit. Uh, Let me get that as one last guy's real quick, and then I'll be good to go. Everyone else is on there? Just checking real quick. Yep. yep. Alright. So let's go with, uh, looks like Nerissa will go first. As uh, she kind of curses and she says, I should have known you were a traitor, Diamsar. And uh, and yeah, with that, she's she ain't going to waste no time. She'll, let's see. Mm, even as a monk, I don't know if she'll be able to make it though. Oh, wait. Dang, so close. This is her full movement. Boom. She runs up there. And she'll ready an attack if uh if this this foo comes within range. She's gonna she's gonna pop him. Um and she kinda curses at him. And then we'll go to Zin. You got a pit in front of you, keep that in mind. And then there's a snake coming out of the box and then probably about ten, maybe fifteen feet up above on the balcony, you can see the uh you know, kind of an archer up there. All right, there's this snake thing. Yep. Yeah, it looks like a giant poisonous snake off of uh, just the first glance. You know, your trips in the jungle, are, you know, you're getting pretty well versed. All right, and he looks like he wants to do, like, he has malice of forethought. Bad snake. He looks like he's about to take a bite out of your leg. All right, well, yeah, we're going to deal with that, that guy first. And Zen will walk over and uh, attempt to uh, remove his head from his body like uh, like you do with the poisonous you know what I haven't used it yet I'll go ahead and use my uh, DM uh, what's it called inspiration okay nice oh good call 15 final answer ba boom uh, looks like right. he's, he's a pretty dexterous, wriggly little snake, but not that dextre dexterous, as that's a hit. We'll go ahead and make it a psionic strike for 20. Ah, oh, man. Oh, man. I was looking to see if he had some special ability to save him, and he just doesn't. Uh, I think he chopped his head off in one little boom. <laughs> All right. So that was five feet of movement, and then I will... Keep moving and then end my turn. Okay, so the head kind of flies off into the pit below as uh, you run to the foot of the stairs and uh, ready your next victim, Yasua. A question: sure. Is, Would it be a bonus action or an action to apply poison to a crossbow bolt? Uh, that'd be an action, I believe. Action, unless you have the poisoner feat, which makes it a bonus. Yeah. Do not have that. Uh, 
I'm not going to bother with that then. In that case, I did take the crossbow expert feat though, so that means that I can use all of my attacks with my crossbow. So I will be doing that. So I'll just, uh, where do I want to move? I think I move right here, now that the snake's been dealt with, and I will fire off two crossbow attacks. First attack is a, not looking great. Oh, a little better. 16 to hit, uh, this, this main guy. I'm going for the main dude. Yes. Mm, this poor folk, uh, yeah, that's going to hit. I fear for him. 16, all right. Oh, I keep forgetting I can't do that. Okay, that's, d d ignore that roll. Um, the, the one that's about to come up. <laughs> oh, right, because you had all the, the tons of things. Yeah, well, the, the way that the item is made, it, like, it doesn't know that it can do a bunch of different types of damage. It thinks that it does all of the damage. Gotcha, yeah, because you select, like, what dragon type. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, okay, okay, let me, let me just roll that manually. I have so it still. You could just use the first roll and then flavor the the damage as whatever you want. No, but it doesn't. The, oh, the first it's the wrong roll, dice. it's the wrong dice. Yeah. Oh, the rest of them are the wrong dice. Yeah. But the first one's the right dice. It's the one d ten. Is it the one d ten? Okay. I think so. I don't know if the acid damage is right. Is mm, no, it rolls. It's six plus a one d zero. Okay, that's weird. I think. Is yeah. It? No. It's, okay. My it's, bad. It's definitely that one's definitely not right. I'm just gonna roll it. <laughs> I'm gonna one have that D item eventually too, so I gotta figure that out. Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm just I think I'm just gonna make a custom macro for it. Nice. Uh, one D ten plus five plus one D six. All right, so that's seventeen points of damage. Uh, plus because it's my my first attack, I get an extra one D eight uh, of the same type. Hmm. Let me roll that. So it's uh, 24 points of damage, mix of piercing and um, thunder. And then one more attack. So okay, so save it for, for a second. As this guy's blown back up against the wall and uh, and like there's just like a big old hole size in his chest now as um, <laughs> oh. you totally killed him. Yeah, he kind of falls down. Uh, he kind of he has the stat block of an acolyte, which could probably do a couple things, but <laughs> can't take a hit yeah. like that. Yeah, as he's uh, he kind of like oh, uh, the yuan ti will be victorious, <laughs> and like gurgles to uh, his death and falls. That's what you get for betraying us. All right. Uh, in that case, I will aim my second attack at this guy. Okay. So let's see if that hits. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll be a eighteen to hit. Yep. We roll that, and that's fifteen points of damn. So you got you a twofer on this one, because uh, he's not gonna be able to withstand that either. He just he see his body kind of topple off from the balcony and like to the to the ground. He's also did. Yeah, so I just I as I as I skid forward and it stops seeing that I've been betrayed, just and they both <laughs> just drop. And you're like, and that is how you deal with that. Uh you got one foe left. He sees uh Zen kinda coming up from the stairs. He just saw Yasua unleash uh un unholy hell. And so he will run back. Um, you see him kind of heading back towards perhaps uh, this door here or maybe even this door over here, but that's about as far as he can get as uh, as he'll level his his crossbow down at Yasua and he'll be like, he'll be like this is this is for my friends um, oh, oh, that's poor sad sad misguided folk because uh, that's damn. trying to see I don't think it's gonna matter but just out of curiosity that'll be a 12 total 
to hit you. Oh, hold on, no, my AC is 15. And, uh, yep, so that's all he can do there with that. And then, uh, I just move my head and it whizzes past my ear. You're a little bit far away from him there, Dinon. But perhaps yep. you can get your, uh, your mount closer, or your, your rider. Closing the gap. All right. Another exciting encounter for me. <laughs> End of turn. All right. And Lala. So one thing you notice as you're up at the top, though, is how like the the wood, even though you're up on a higher level, it kind of meets grass right there. And through the doorway, you can kind of see how it's a, a bit of a hill there that kind of slopes down um, into like a bowl-shaped area past the doorway. But the earth kind of rises all the way up in the bowl to meet the, the doorway where you're at there. Um, and with that, Layla. Taking a shot at the only one left standing. He's cowering in fear. Who are you people? This isn't the Atemka society I knew. Your demise. I completely miss. And so he kind of ducks under the uh, the, the arrow and he's like, uh, quit, quit toying with me. And uh, we'll come back around to, uh, you're still, well, you might be close enough, though, to, to just hop off and, yeah. I'm not a married character anyways. I seem to wait for the turn. Uh, okay, well, you're up. Uh, take the help. Move back. And then, uh... Oh, shoot, he's up there, right. Um, what do this one. He's going to be that, sick. Yeah, that hit him. Glugin, flugin. He hit him with the old Guggen, flugin ray. So the uh, 13 <laughs> damage. That is, he had exactly 13 hit points, so that's pretty good. As uh, he just like, his stomach starts to swell up and he like vomits over the side of the thing and then, oh, I'm just going to go crazy on this one. His stomach explodes and gore and vile and as he got ray of sickness to death. Or you, can, you can flavor it more if you want. That's fine. <laughs> his body expands like it's decomposing at an alarming rate until he's like, Aah! and just uh, splats some gore down, rains down below. Not on Yasua, but kind of in front of you there. Um, Narissa kind of turns and she says, Ah, oh, well, we made pretty short work of that. Um, I see how you guys took first place earlier in both of those events. You're terrifyingly powerful. But look, I don't think those are the only ones here. And what did he, did he mention something about the Yuan T? I've heard of those snake bastards in the the jungles, always causing us problems. Perhaps we should uh, go further with a a, a bit of uh, concern. And uh, if you if you gotta go, there's in. Uh, yep, I gotta you. do a uh, Cub Scout committee meeting. Thanks. Okay, it's good to see you, man. See you on the next one. All right, so. That will definitely influence the uh, the AP hell again. That might be a little. Everyone's at level four though, right? So. Mm. Did any of the uh, the guys have anything on them? Um, the the guys themselves didn't really, but as you look over Diamsar there, you see uh, a potion of healing and a dagger with a jewel encrusted snake headed hilt that could be sold for fifteen gold. So a couple little little pieces there. And, uh, and Nerissa kind of moves up forward and she says, well, there's this little room here. I'm not sure what could be in there. And then uh, th there's this doorway here that goes on beyond. What what do you guys think? Where should we go? Mm. Um, uh, I'll use my mage hand to try and open this door. All right, it explodes. No, it opens up, and uh, as you look in, <laughs> you're like, what is up with this mod? Uh, it's, it seems to be a bit of a storage room there. Um, it's extremely dirty, smells of blood and rotting flesh. Uh, there's three cages, as you can see, um, in this chamber, and two of them are occupied. One is with a tabaxi and another an elf. Both are alive, but suffering from some type of sickness, bearing dark, thick veins and scaled patches all over their bodies. Um, how about we get an investigation check? So 
So any three of you guys is fine. You can do it. Yeah, I'm rolling it. When I have roll 20 open, my D&D Beyond dice get really laggy. So, uh, based off your time in Port Nianzaru over the pretty eventful day or so, maybe maybe two or three days total, but you uh, you could recognize that these people were most definitely uh, locals from the area. Um, it seems like the cages could be pretty easily unlocked with a with a bit of effort. And the elf is unconscious, but the Tabaxi female is is awake. And as you guys approach, she's please let us go. Uh, we've been poisoned by these snake creatures the pain is unbearable the, the yes of course of serpents get yourselves to a healer um, i'll so, let them go if i can go ahead and um, if you want to make a deck save on one and if someone else wants to make a, a dex uh does it, save or check this is weird it's a dex check i'm sorry uh, if you want to do a dex check, and then if somebody else wants to do a, a dex check, they can too. Uh, perhaps Just like thieves' tools, or oh, that would most certainly help if you had those. How, how do you roll thieves' tools? I think you would just add your proficiency it's, twice. It's a yeah, it's dex plus um, proficiency. I'd roll a dex and then add the two. Oh, well, since yeah. this is a regular, a five. my bad. Yeah. It's a regular check, so yeah, you would, it wouldn't be. It would just be your regular dex plus the proficiency. So yep. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I fail. So you kind of like hammer at one of the cages, but you can't quite get it. Um, Yasua, you you just kind of struggle too, but you're able to to extricate the the male elf. And again, he's kind of unconscious, but you can you kind of lay him out. And uh, and the Tabaxi, she says, "My name is Shaded Moon. I can watch over him if you can only free me." And uh, you can take another stab at it, either one of you. Or Layla, if you... Uh, oh, Layla came in to help. All right, so that's enough. Uh, Lay- Layla kind of comes over um, to Squeeble, and she's like, you know, she's like, oh, no, let me show you. Uh, maybe a little more like this. And, and she's able to bust it open. Um, let the rogue do her job. If you want to make me an Arcana check, any three of you. It's kind of a high one, but it'll, it's a fun... De- oh, never mind. It's a low one compared to Squeeb. He, he, <laughs> he got the Arcana on lock. Uh, you can roll two if you want, Yasuo, to see if you'd know it inherently. Other, oh, and it looks like you would, because it's a DC 18. So you might have to fill Layla in, but you two automatically can conclude that these two are being turned into Yuan T. Um, oh, jeez. It, it looks like uh. the Yuan T are probably turning them into mindless servants, and uh, only a lesser restoration or remove curse could properly cure them. Get yourselves to a healer. Okay, well, yep. make it as far as we can, and I gotta tell you, the ones that did this to us are, are behind the warehouse in that that area. They need to be be stopped. I hope Good you to can know. Find a cure for us. All right. And so they kind of uh, kind of shamble off. She's support, you know. She kind of wakes her friend up, and they're slowly moving on. They'll be okay by themselves, but. Um, Narissa, she's kind of like, you You may need me for the battle ahead, so I, I probably shouldn't worry about es- escorting them. Or, or What do you think? Um, we'll, we'll find out. I vote she stays. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to stay. Um, I, I don't want to leave. We'll make alone. sure that they got to a healer later. Right now, we need to make sure that this threat is eradicated. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to send my owl in the scout real quick. Uh, you sure can. Do you want to... Uh... Do it with some stuff. Layla, Layla, try to get the drop on them. I'll open the door for you and you fire your bow. I'm not doing great on my stealth checks. 22 stealth. So the, oh, the so you're sending your owl in first? Actually, will you let me cast something before I send it in? Sure. Yeah, yeah no, you guys are pretty free to do, do what you want. All right. I'm gonna cast Dragon's Breath on my owl. Oh, <laughs> nice! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so let's see. We had uh, we had four player or three players at level four now, right? So our APL is four, but it's under still. So yep. you guys are still average. Uh, three. Oh yeah. Uh, no, Zen left. Three. Okay. 
So it is as it stands. Just checking before we go in there. Um, so with a 13, let me double check. That's going to be pushing it. I know that. Oh. Okay, so uh, let me see. I, I sometimes I get a little confused on this. If you're rolling and if it meets, if their passive perception meets your stealth, then they they would see you, right? Meets it, beats it. Yep. Okay, I thought. Yeah, yeah, it meets yeah, it beats. Sometimes I get confused on which one's the one that's trying to beat beat off to it, but uh, but looks like we're good on that. So, moving forward, uh, get my revealer tool ready, but. So I'll reveal the area, but unfortunately, um, the owl kind of creaks through the door. Um, you, it kind of comes through and can relay to you what it sees. But unfortunately, um, these these kind of like half human, half snake hybrids, uh, they don't really see anything. But you hear this this Yuan Ti woman at the the altar here kind of cry out like, "Look, that's no normal owl!" I I think it's about to blast me with fire. No, I'm just playing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a fire breathing owl. There's something Nobody special about that owl. owl. I'm not sure what it is, but uh <laughs> But so not that'll kind of ruin any uh, about this owl. That'll kind of ruin any surprise and unless you guys act quickly, they may gain a little bit of a surprise on you. So we'll probably just play it straight if you uh, if you want to dart in now. However, uh, just right quick as uh, before you go in, you'll gain one more kind of uh, bonus as it were for peeking in. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perception check from uh, Squeeble, please. Oh, I uh, well, actually make it from the eagle or from the owl. I'm sorry. It would make more sense if it was from the owl. Okay. I rolled it, but Ow. you can ignore my roll. Oh, no worries. I've got terrible rolls. Okay, so uh, uh, it doesn't really notice anything other than the uh, the people in there, and it definitely reports that back to you with a hurry. And you can move them back in or however you want to do that, or you guys can uh, roll well, some initiative. Well, it's about to fire, and... so. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll probably – let me remove that from earlier. And sorry if uh messed with anyone. Let me get – I'll get the dine on back on there. And if y'all want to roll initiative, and then um, I guess we'll play it from there, because they know you're there by the owl. Um, so Our Dynon is 6.15. All right. And Squeeble is 15.14. Cool. Yeah, if I ever run this one again in the future, um, of course, pacing, I'll look out for that. But the other thing is I'll have to beef up like pretty much all of these encounters unless you're starting with like super fresh characters. So yeah. one of the tricks you can do uh, on any any character in a module, you can take them at their uh, HP that is listed, you can roll their HP, or you can just decide their HP as long as it's within their their window of possibilities for HP. So if, you're, if your uh, characters are just slaughtering everything, just decide they're all max HP. That's a very quick way yeah. to spike it up, or you can roll their HP for them and hope they get better than average. Right. I always try to roll to keep it kind of variable in a way, but but that's a pretty smart tip there to just, just give them yeah. a little bit more. Uh, you can also have uh, creatures hidden or off screen and not use them unless you need to to make the combat encounter more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I know I can always multiply and divide, but... Um... Yeah, yeah, I well, usually well, try to I'm go by. Saying, just because there's a token on the board doesn't mean you have to use it. You can pretend it wasn't there. Oh yeah, yeah. I usually have them hidden, um, especially when they want me to change them up like that too. I'll have mm -hmm. the the ones for later strength kind of hidden off to the side. But yeah, or they can come bursting through a doorway or window or crashing through the ceiling or come up from the ground or whatever it is. You know. All right, and then, sadly, she did not roll as good. So she's still a little startled that y'all were there, but maybe not just literally surprised. Okay. Layla. So you can kind of push open the door and um, use it for, like, uh, I mean kind of one of those things where like whatever you if you open the door to use half cover 
then they would kind of get that too, you know, because you're trying to shoot through the crack instead of shooting through the full range. So it's up to you. So first, Layla, as you kind of open the door there, go ahead and give me a perception check just real quick. And uh, you really just, you're so focused on the, uh, the thrum of battle uh, pounding in your ears that you step forward into a, a whole bunch of plants. And um, if you know anything about these, uh, these plants as of late, they usually come with a little string attached. And as you step into it, uh, these spores are kind of uh, released into the area. And you'll need to make me a constitution safe. Fourteen. Oh, it looks like that is man. I was thinking it would be so funny, but no, that's uh, that's good enough. Um, that you 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 feel this all too familiar poisoning feeling, uh, but you're able to kind of just like shirk it off and uh, and you know do what you're intending to do. Um, She's built for tolerance. I, I did drink that potion of poison resistance. Oh, okay. Well, it would yeah. affect you anyway. So then you're good. That's that lasts eight hours. Nice. So I just marked that on your sheet that you used it, and then um, so you you feel the spores, and you would able you would have been able to shirk it off anyways. But the the poison is much stronger, or not the poison, but the <laughs> the potion is much stronger in your veins. Um, it looks like as long as you you know um, your friends would would witness this spore kind of come up, and uh, as long as you see it, you could step over it. It looks like if you end your turn in it, then you're probably gonna have to deal with that again. Um, as you can see, there's some kind of other bits and patches of it um, placed around the area, too. And then go ahead, Layla. What else you got? I'm going to fire at the... Uh the lady and just for a uh, record it are surprised what no it was just a regular yeah i think it's just straight combat yep the owl kind of gave y'all away a little bit but did reveal the area so so one for one there that's gonna be a hit 16. nice so would you get the sneak attack? No, it's just straight 10 piercing. Okay, sweet. Uh, so she kind of, you hear like hiss and kind of cry out. Ah, thank you for returning our gift. Uh, you will be dealt with shortly. Um, that She seems pretty, pretty hurt by the blow though, uh, despite her taunt. And anything else for you, Layla? If not, we'll go to Squeeble. Can I use my Misty Step? Is it a bonus? It's Misty Step is a bonus action. Then Yeah, you could. Yeah, you can use your bonus action. Okay, so let's see. see I got those 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 30 in the Missy step to Okay Alright, Squeeble, what you got? Squeeble's got an owl that can breathe fire and he's going to have that owl fly in there and cook these plants Okay, so pretty officially done Okay um, And I can see here so I'm going to cast Maximilian's Earth and Grass there. This is a dirt and stuff, right? Yeah, everything else this is just here? grass and dirt. You, it ends up right. being kind of a bowl shape as it uh, as it dips down into the center where the the altar is. And so you got a strength save for the Yuan T B. Uh, looks like, let me see what her strength is, but unless it's a minus, uh, I think she'll save as I roll oh. 14. Oh, my wife just took my phone, which has my stat block on it. Sorry. <laughs> Family life. Oh, they, they pull in from me every every chance they can. Is it just like a standard young to you? Yeah, so strength zero, so it looks like it'll save. 
Okay. Just want to make sure it was like a minus for some reason. So nothing happened. Oh, but it sticks, around, it sticks around there. Right. So it'll. Uh, you can put a little drawing you if you want. All right. Oh, I sure. got it now. Okay. Any. Uh, so that was you. That was your owl. Anything else? Uh, nope. All right. So the broodling. Oh, owl will well, move back inside. Okay, so this broodling will come over here and ready an attack for anybody that, you know, pokes his head out of the door. Looks like this one has just enough movement to do pretty much the same. So they both kind of like scrabble over to the doorway and like pr the next person who stands in, in range of them, they're, they'll strike out at. Uh, this, this foe will come up to Layla. And he, you can see where he's like been through this painful transformation uh, into uh, into more of a snake than man. But it's kind of given him some some sharp teeth and claws, and he plans to use those uh, against you. Looks like one each. Uh, first for the bite. Looks like a nine will not hit you. So he tries to follow it up with the vicious claw attack for a fourteen to hit. Let me see. Nope. Sixteen over. Nope. And so he kind of just like hacks and spits and hisses in your face as uh, Yasuwa comes to your aid in one way or another. Um, hmm. I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. I think best way to get in is to teleport. So I'm going to use my face step and move right here and then face step right there. Um, and so that is a DC 10, um, w uh, wisdom save, or they are frightened of me, this one. That one, they're frightened. All right. And then I will point blank, because I can do that with crossbow expert, I will point blank shoot two crossbow bolts into them. <laughs> Actually... No, I'm not going to, because they're frightened of me. I'm actually going to shoot one into this one and another into that one. Okay, so she is frightened, and then you're going to turn around and fire some bolts. Mm-hmm. So, first attack will be against this one. It's an 11 to hit. That will hit him as you see they're not wearing too much uh, armor mm -hmm. anymore as their flesh is being turned to scales and things. Right. And then. And. Let me just check. All right, 14 points of damage. So he seems to barely be uh, clinging to life as he, he seems very confused too as he looks at the door and looks back at you and he's like, ah, you know, he was so ready to, to lash out yeah. at the next person. And then I will do against that one. One more. Oh, actually, sorry. Wait, no, that's the first attack. So that also that deals an additional one d eight. Can't forget those yes. range abilities. Okay, second attack is a seventeen to hit, but I need to roll the one d eight first. Okay, so he only had one health left, so he is going to be dead. Okay, okay. So this one dies, and then this one is a seventeen to hit. If it's the same, that hits. Oh, no, so that last 17 would have been the one that killed him. Well, no, no, no. The, the 17 to hit... I think it, he's saying it only had one hit point left, and if you land another hit, it's dead. Right. I know, but it, it gets an additional D8 to the damage of the first one. Which I didn't include in the roll. Oh, so you're saying it should have been a 22, not 14? Well, it, it should... I haven't rolled the D8, but if it's only one hit oh. point... Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Okay, so yeah, that 17 to hit him will land. Uh, really and then this one just deals the so. 
And then that's 15. <laughs> okay, so that'll be enough to dispatch him as uh, his scales kind of flat out, fly off his body and, and little shards and pieces, and uh, his eyes grow dim as he oh, never got oh. to make that attack he wanted to do. You guys are good to enter now, free of attacks. <laughs> and uh, that's your cue, uh, Dinon. So the nothing to worry about. We're rushing forward to the Yuan T woman. All right, will that land? A 19 will hit him. Hit her. All right, uh, let's get the strength check. I'm sure she'll make it, but we should check anyways. Uh, no, she fails. Oh, okay, so she's prone. Man, she's just getting beat down on. Going then I'll get a, another bite. With advantage. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Just tearing it into her. So the the thirteen and then the six for the claw, or the thirteen and the thirteen, right? So oh right. Uh yeah. Uh, Eleven, thirteen, thirteen. So eighteen more damage after that, right? Uh yep. Sheesh. Uh, so she's she like she's trembling and it's starting to bleed profusely and uh, still has a pretty haughty look to her face as. Um, you know, she's refuses to feel like she's gonna die, and as she kind of like picks herself back up, she can do nothing but run. Really, um, I guess I could throw an attack over here towards you, but she will. Uh, she speaks a command word. Um, it sounds like a hissing, like undecipherable mess, and with like a snap, the the amulet comes um, just right out of your possession, Yasua, into her hands. Um, and uh, at that point, uh, I did skip her earlier, but the only thing she would have done is Narissa would have came up and she holds her brace, bracer aloft. And uh, you'll see that it has the symbol of Ubtal, the, the patron of uh, Cholt, the patron deity. And she holds it forth and uh, it, it basically will give everybody saving throws against, uh, or advantage on saving throws against this uh, Yuan T's spell casting ability. So she has her, mm. her use here. And I mean, she's really only gonna get one, one shot here probably. Uh, as you can see, she's she's pretty close to death. Um, I'm like, what could she do? Let's see, anything at all. I guess in a last ditch attempt, she's gonna try to cast a spell. Let me see exactly. Uh, she wouldn't target Yasuo, of course. So she just. Uh, before she's going to try to... F uh, so she has to... S with being frightened, she has to spend her movement to get away. Or she just can't move towards you. Is it... Yeah, if she... So if she wants to move, she can't move towards me. But she doesn't have to. Okay. Uh, Alright, um, so she'll... And then additionally, she has disadvantage on attacks against me. Alright. So she looks over, um, and her eyes kind of go wide in fear at you, Yasua. And she's like, what are you? And then turns over to... Uh, to uh, to squeeble riding on his dinosaur. It's still disadvantage because the person she's afraid of is in sight. Yes. Okay. Well, it's uh, she's just gonna cast Crown of Madness on uh, on Squeeble. So if you can, go ahead and make me a Wisdom save. Also, just some flavor. When I teleported in, the Hi. rest of you outside uh, would have seen me fall over like a narcoleptic, and then essentially fall through the floor and appear there nice hey actually I, I got to do something uh so she she tries oh, wait, to just I, cause some advantage on this save is that what that was i don't think you would from if the it's bracers? a save it, hmm? from what you said the bracers gave us advantage on saves against oh yourself. yeah yeah i'm so sorry yeah the bracer would give you advantage that's okay. correct yeah it's 12 and enough? so meets it beats it yeah it's 12 meets it right. so man she almost had something there but nope <laughs> as like you almost see this like magical crown of thorns appear above your head and then you just like your uh, your owl comes swooping through and uh, distorts the illusion to nothing and with the a final cry of defeat the yuan -T, uh, throws her hands up and knows that uh, her time is quite short lately I was, like, it was me i would have cast it on the owl with that dragon's breath 
Hey, that's true. <laughs> that would have been really funny if we had to deal <laughs> with the funny. owl. Now, Layla, you got I mean, this broodling, one here. broodlings in your face, but uh, you're probably feeling pretty confident. Not head hurts. For Layla? Yeah, she uh, she's Lay- Layla drops her 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 bow and brandishes her blades. And let's try swing is going to swing first with her short sword. And he's going to slither out of the way with the nine. Uh, and come swing around with the dagger. The 11 will hit him. So it should be without the modifier, though, for the damage, right? So just, uh... So just one damage. From the looks of it, right? So it's a little more insult than uh, than injury, but you kind of just prick under one of his scales and, like, flip it off, and he's like, hey, I'm ugly now! Uh, do you have anything else? That was uh, that was probably your bonus though to use the dagger, so maybe not. Yeah, that that was my uh, that was my bonus action. Well, I have dual weapon fighting, so. Oh, so I would have done the full five then. Okay. Nice. Uh, and it's yeah, I'm just gonna hold my ground with this guy. Okay, so he seems a little uh, bit perturbed by your attack, uh, but holding his ground, uh, Nerissa comes out and she sees that you're kind of cornered, so she'll run up and uh, tries to give a ninjutsu kick. Looks like she's going to land with the first one, and if she needs to, she may come back for the second. Let's see if that'll hit. Oh, actually, no, oh, no, it will. Yeah, so she just comes up and gives a, a one-two pop um, with her fists of fury. And looks like that'll be maybe enough. Nope, probably not. So she ends up doing five bludgeoning damage as she uh, she comes to your aid uh, and helps a little bit there. Watch out! Watch out! And she's like, "Uptow will protect us." And then uh, Squeeble, you're up. All right, uh, Squeeble's gonna have the hand try and grasp her again. So she'll do another. Uh, is it Dex? Uh, strength, strength DC 14. Uh, 13, so I failed this time. Alright. So, uh, she will be restrained. Uh, you take the 2d6, which is the first one. Uh, yeah, so with the 7, percent. that's actually enough to, uh, you kind of feel, uh, you can, you can describe it further if you want, but you feel like your hand just clenched as tight as it possibly can and her bones start to grind <laughs> to dust and you hear one last ah, ah, as the uh, all you you know your hand may unclench and there's just like a mangled form of her body and the the amulet kind of like tinkles out between uh the fingers undamaged and she kind of hits the ground there um yeah she's all right. she was not able to survive that one anything uh, else yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Uh, I was gonna go there, <laughs> and uh, Dragon's Breath. Okay, so it's a Dex save. Oh, yep, DC fourteen. Ooh, let's see what the Dex is. An AOE though, isn't it? It's a cone. Yeah, <clears throat> but if you're going this this direction, if you're going close enough, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little frog in my throat. But let's see, uh, just to make sure with this. Oh, he, he didn't. He's at a 13. Poor. poor he did fool. not save? Nope, he did that's not save. So, and that's it. He's cooked. Uh, yeah, they don't have anything to save him from fire. So uh, <laughs> your uh, your owl kind of floats over looking cute as hell. And then all of a sudden opens a tiny beak and <laughs> just unholy, unhellish uh, <laughs> flames. Just cook this thing, and uh, he falls over completely dead. And honestly, another a uh, little tougher now that there wasn't as many people. But yeah, another combination uh, or another com- encounter, very cleanly walked through. Honestly, I think it's just a combination of uh, really good rolls, really bad rolls for me, 
and uh, your teamwork and the what you know the different strengths that you're bringing and things are are very yep. uh, effective as you can see. We all have well built characters, from what I can tell. Indeed. Yep. And so you uh, you kill them as they deserved, and uh, you kind of pick over. Uh, the, the Yuan T and you can see she has 25 gold uh, kind of left there maybe some of it a little bit crushed uh, somehow the potion of animal friendship survived the uh, the crushing as as well as another potion of poison <laughs> uh, so you're able to uh, to pull those out from the the wreckage of her form and let me make a mark for those for the session logs you got animal friendship potion and potion of poison. Keep in, mind that's, huh. keep in mind that's not poison resistant, so I, I guess that's a different thing. Potion of poison. Hmm. It is. Okay. No, uh, push, potion of poison is something else. That's what I'm saying. I was just saying, keep that's in mind that, that. Yeah, right. Just keep in mind. You yeah. also find a, a little coiled silver snake bracelet worth probably about 10 gold if you want to sell that later. And uh, there's nothing left to do, really, but Nerissa kind of says, well, we should probably report back to... Uh, to the house of repose and, and let Ren know how this went. What about the amulet that got destroyed in the crushing? No, it still seems to be uh, pretty fair. And since you were the one holding it earlier, you could definitely take it back up if you want. All right, pick it back up. I assume they'll want it. Don't want to just leave something like this hanging around. Agreed. And so you find yourself back in the house of repose, except for this time, instead of just Ren and uh, Nerissa, you also have the, the two folks from earlier that were uh, poisoned, and um, you have them there. They're kind of recovering. You see that Alistair, the, the one man you didn't get to meet earlier, actually, he's kind of a, an obese, balding man. Um, he's with the Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, he, you kind of hear him, oh, wow, well, these must be the heroes themselves. Didn't take it upon themselves to visit me, but I'm, I'm sure they have their reasons. <laughs> Let me get some healers for these and their affliction. And uh, he kind of calls off for that. Um, yeah, you see every single representative of the factions here, and they all are looking very uh, pleased with your, your performance there. Um, Ren kind of comes up, and he's, despite his drunken appearance, you know, he's a lot more capable even when intoxicated. He's kind of the leader of the group, and comes up and he's wow wow hey, you guys did good um, here's the 100 100 gold i promised and well if you'll you'll let me take that amulet we'll make sure it gets uh, studied and then destroyed as appropriate of course yeah and i, I gotta know or i gotta let you know this this is cultural significance to the, the city here and you know that you're gonna be held as heroes for, for saving the day and uh, he kind of takes a step back, and Nerissa comes up, and she uh, she hugs L Layla quickly and says, Thank you uh, for your work. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to admit that I may have had a slight deceit along the way. My name is not Nerissa. I am Masika, a warrior of Mesro, and an enemy of those who corrupt the souls of the dead against the living. I also have been investigating this death curse, and of course I am, would work with uh, the factions to, to get to the same means. Our work here is far from finished. I'm sure we'll come across each other's paths again. And then uh, she kind of bids you a farewell, maybe with a little kiss on the cheek to Layla. Aww. So each of the, the faction uh, contacts praise you guys, and, um, you know, it's always role play. but if any of you want to join an, uh, a faction, this would be a, a pretty good chance to do so. They, um, they're all, you know, they would love to have you in. And Squeeble has no time for such nonsense. Yeah, you know, it's not for every character, but... <laughs> and so I work that, alone. That, that pretty much wraps us up, guys. Uh, we'll be back for the second one in a couple weeks, as I said. You can check that on the Warhorn, and, of course, for this last one, you'll get the level, the ten more downtime, uh, if you'll probably get tagged like three or four times probably as I uh, as I post the session yeah. log so just excuse that and then right. as, as far as the gold at the end it looks like y'all had did everything so it should be 375 and this time it's just divided amongst uh, four because we'll go ahead and we'll just consider Zen for, for playing the last bit there he hung in with us for quite a while So was that three seventy five? I said divided by four. Anyone who want to do that? Ninety three point seven five. So we'll just do seven. 
93. Okay, 93 gold each. Perfect. So you got the level, the 10 downtime, 93 gold. Uh, you got the potion of healing, potion of animal friendship, potion of poison. Lots of potions of healings you'll have for your your characters today, and you have one more story ward. I'll uh, I'll put that the I'll put the full context in the session log, but it's called Trusting Triceratops. <laughs> nice. And it says through your actions you've garnered the respect of the Itepka Society, though their numbers are few. You are now aware of how they secretly identify themselves to each other. During any of the rare social interactions you may have with the member of the Itepka, their starting attitude will automatically be friendly. So. Uh, you know, if I see you guys returning over this season, I'm sure this stuff will be very useful. Um, and it doesn't look like there actually is a, a concrete magic item for this adventure, unfortunately. But you got a lot of potions and a couple cool uh, rewards. You even got a little dinosaur friend that if you got to spend the 20 downtime, but he'd be your ride or die. Uh, I think it's 10 downtime. I have to double check. Oh, yeah. I'll post, I'll post the specifics. Uh, but, yeah, looks like that about wraps it up. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for running, man. Thank you, guys. Right. It was a good learning experience for sure on this one. <laughs> that was a lot. I appreciate <laughs> right, you. Man. See you all another time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.